Hello once again, everyone, and welcome to Start Event Wisconsin for the Booyah Cup. It's finale time here for both the men and women in our 32 and 16 person brackets. Coming through last night's on-site qualifiers was Julie Wieger for the women and Lucas Pritzel for the men. They should definitely be some quality competitors in the field today. We're looking forward to the action. Let's bring you some highlights from last year's action, both from the women and men, before we kick off our coverage here with both Sean Green and Ryan Mooningham on the mic. Thanks for joining us, folks. We appreciate it. So Paula Murphy, 170. Big oh, triple. Another one of those. Got another one of those. Bullseye for the big fish. She reels it in. Wow. Well, leg number two. Olivia going first. And she starts off with a big nine mark. And gives the finger point as well. Oh, yeah. All right. Paula Murphy. Big seven mark there on the 17s. Look at these averages. Yeah. Sean. Six, two, Gross. five, five, seven, five. We were seeing this in the men's match earlier. Yep. Already had a mark on, the, on those, so that's why I said that. Hi. Howdy. So we've got uh, Paula going to go for the 17s before moving around. Wow. 16s. Oh. Well, the nail is in the proverbial coffin here for leg number two. But Olivia trying to knock that baby right on out. Wow, big first start there. She's gonna stay right there for one more on the 16. Gets it done. Yeah, it goes ahead and closes it out. Paula Murphy looking for a 2 nil lead. All right, she oh. leaves 136. Okay. But Olivia Terry can put up some pressure on this 136. Gonna do that. Gonna do that with a hat trick. Paula shakes her head in approval back there. Oh, man. Another bull. How good would this be? How good would this be? That's a double, double. Double, double 18. Now the dart here for Paula Murphy. Booyah Cup. Women's. Champion, Paula Murphy. Wow, oh wow, folks. She manages to do it. <laughs> Paula Murphy is crowned your Booyah Cup champion. Or there's other ways to go about it. Like two trip 19s for double 18. Double 18 for the 150. Danny Baggish breaks the throw, takes a 3 to 2 lead. darts all right is he gonna stay perfect well pretty much look at that an 8.33 to a 7.0 baggish is not out of this he's no. been all over the 16s here wow and look at that gutsy play Look at that gutsy play. And he's going to hit this. You know oh he's going to hit this. my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> it's going to be hard to 
get your drilling down and we're not even playing in the match. Wow. Wow. Nine mark there again for Leonard Gates. Back in control of the leg. Yep. He continues to just rattle off trip 16s. I wonder what his percentage on this trip 16 is in this match. Probably missed two or three Con triples. Colin Rassane over 2K viewers. There you go. Winter Gates, 5.90. 4 to 3. This is the leg that is interesting, right? Break a throw needs to happen. Oh man, there was my opportunity. Instead, Gates is going to get the throw first. And it's cricket. We're at 1.2 on Facebook. And how about a 9? Just get us started here for Winter Gates. That is officially 2,000 viewers. Hey yo. That is amazing. Thank you all so much for tuning into this Booyah Cup finale. The only person upset is Jeremy Byrne, and now has to give away a hundred dollar gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Six point six, six point eight, and Leonard Gates two bowls away from back to back titles. And all Danny can do is kind of laugh at this because this is nuts. He's throwing a 6.55. <laughs> Gives a flex as well. <laughs> Gates laughs. Here we go. Two needed for the title. One more. Oh my goodness, folks. That is an appetizing match. Leonard Gates is crowned your champion. Congrats to him. Back-to-back -back titles. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the main event, the 2024 Booyah Cup Finale. Live here in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. I am Sean Green, the handsome one on the right. Joined by Ryan Mooneyham, the meat of our sandwich. And Will Stewart is on the outside uh, looking <laughs> dapper with his dapper man Dan hairstyle. Uh, and we are live streaming this beautiful tournament, the Booyah Cup Finale. Well, the biggest thing that we're going to see right now, right out of the gate, is our number one seed, Mr. Bob McCoy taking on Sugar Shane Johnson. Guys, this is the first one to get six legs. Best of 11 stuff. You don't see this very often, this long a format, anywhere in the United States. This is an exciting, exciting matches to be thrown your way. Absolutely. For soft tip format, this is exactly. the, uh, for tournament, long form tournament, this is definitely, uh, stands on its own. The formatting for this will be 501, open in, double out, split bull. Uh, so there's a true double out aspect of it. Basically, uh, exact steel tip rules for 501, um, which as two pure, as three pure steel tip players uh, sitting in this booth, uh, we love that uh, and love it to death. And we know that the players, it challenges the players a little bit more, and we're excited about that aspect as well. Then they're playing cricket and uh, alternating start. You said it earlier. It is a race to six, best of 11 on the winner's side. Uh, it drops down to a race to, five, race to five, best of nine on the loser side. Uh, but the format was extended a little bit. And our number one seed is known, but not known known in well, Bob McCoy. Well, and, you know, so let's, give, let's give kudos back to Mom McCoy. Last, you know, year and a half, he's been traveling on the scene. He's been featured on USA Darks Productions and several other events, made the trips out to Vegas mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, has been always a, a great player, just didn't have the, didn't take the time to get out to the different cities and different venues yep. to be featured. 
Now, he is the number one seed for a reason. Yes, he is. Um, he, won, he, he got the Order of Merit for the qualifier points. He also was the L-Style shootout champion. Yep. So he backed up the number one seed with, with a win last night. Uh, and in that format, right, you're playing count up, you're throwing 24 darts, and it's you and nothing else around you except for cameras and the knowledge that uh, you don't get any of those darts back. And oh, it's just it's a different type of pressure, and for Bob to be able to handle it, that says a lot. We've seen that on several top end players that didn't score as well. Um, it was simply eight rounds, three darts at the board, just score. And some of them turned in some fantastic numbers. Some of them, unfortunately, did not. Well, let's talk dollars, okay? Uh, first place in the 2024 Men's Booyah Cup finale, $7,500. $5,625 cash money. Second place, $2,500. Third place, $1,300. Top four, or fourth place is $950. Uh, and it goes all the way down. They get $300 each just for playing in this bad boy. So that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, this is why he held qualifiers. Yep. This wasn't an open event. This is an invitational. You're invited based on either winning the qualifier or by your positioning on the order of merit. Absolutely. Uh, and last plus why you're seeing last pace is play paid excuse me now three hundred dollars it's you know you came to the to mill to the to wisconsin area you know what you 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 qualified in the top thirty two here's at least your payday if you just have a rough day on the board well there you go you see they're uh tapping in and it looks like jeremy byrne is going to be updating that board over there a little bit um but we're getting started here it's going to be sugar shane johnson going first sugar shane from Osseo, Wisconsin. So Wisconsinite in his home state, trying to take down Bob McCoy, who hails from Waterman, Illinois. And if there's nothing more I love about Bob, is that he has a city name that I can pronounce and know that it's right. Exactly. Some of those other names we've had to ask quite a few questions. Well, at least we should have. Or we, yeah, we butchered them, but eh, we tried. But I am, uh, I got a taco in me, uh, so I am happy and excited to be here now. I was hungry earlier, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, but now I am ready to go. And so is, so are these players. Starting off a little bit slow out the gate. Yeah, I think we're going to start just a sl slight slow the first couple legs. Let the nerves set in. Let the, let the format set in. Let the, the rhythm set in. Um, that's one great thing about long format is you can be down two legs and still come out on top with a, you know, fairly good. Um, if it's race to two, you may never got settled where you could have been the, the overall winner. Well, this is a little bit shocking early on uh, from Bob and, and Shane. As uh, their 01 average, it's based on this exact format. Uh, Bob is throwing a 36.25 uh, points per dart. Uh, Sugar Shane, a 33.16. Uh, huge advantage here to Bob, and that's overall. He is better than most of the field in 01, and his cricket is really good, but he definitely has more of an advantage in 01, and you're seeing it right here. Oh, need the last one to leave a finish. So Sugar Shane, 265. We know the route that we would go on 265 as steel tip players. Uh, is Sugar going to do the same thing? Oh, look at how sweet he, he is. He does that. Didn't get the first one, so he moves back up to trip 20. And uh, he decided to punt this leg right to Bob. It's a bold move, Cotton, to do on first down, but alternating start means that breaks of throw matter so much more. And well, Bob needs at least one to win this match. I will say the breaks of throw through this entire uh, tournament will be the 0-1s, will be the siders. Because you, you can start second in cricket and come back late. But if you're starting, if you are breaking throw in 501, you're gaining the advantage. Uh, for those of you wondering still about the uh, sweatshirt scenario going on with Sugar Shane Johnson, uh, he did say that he does have three of the exact same colors of those sweatshirts. So he is using that as his excuse. Um, he also says he has five other colors, but we have yet to see any of those. So we'll just play that by ear as a... As, uh, as we just pay attention to Sugar Shane's life, like it's a uh, reality show. Now, speaking of reality, Bob McCoy, 135 turn, leaves himself 32 on the return. Sh Sugar Shane's got to take the 174 or 134. 
That was an interesting way to look at it with those with that round, the one, three, four going that way. But I don't hate it. I would rather go treble eighteen top stops, but Bob McCoy for a break of throw in leg number one. And his first leg ever in the Booyah Cup is a winning leg. Up one nothing as the number one seed over Sugar Chain Johnson. And let's throw everybody, that's a break of throw, and it's the 0 one break. And now we go into cricket. Two legs back to back at cricket. Uh, and then it'll be two legs of 0 one. Two legs of cricket. And it will rotate like that because the goal is that it's alternating start. You don't want the same person starting every type of leg. Here's one interesting fact. It's all going to be about the cork. You win the cork, you have the start in the in the if it's a five five tie yep. in the deciding leg. That is absolutely correct. Bob McCoy though steals the throw right away in leg number one with that break, and uh, Bob doing what Bob does. Boom goes the dynamite for Bob McCoy. The first chance of the Booyah Cup to throw a nine, and we have a nine. I love to hear that call, guys. Boom goes the dynamite. We, we, we want to put as many up on that stream, which means you're going to see nine mark after nine mark after nine mark. Allegedly. And there's the first of many, hopefully. And for you guys, hopefully it's not too many, and you guys get annoyed by that by the end of it. But let's be honest, we're already annoyed with it. Bob setting up. Goes to the 17s. What a start from Bob McCoy. Seven mark to follow the nine. Sugar Shane is uh, having to... Settle in off of some haymakers early on from Bob McCoy. Uh, sure, Long Shane format. facing a nine, then faces a seven. Only manages three on the 18s. Definitely Bob McCoy opening leg uh, break, now in control of this leg number two cricket. If you think about this, these players in the CSE Challenger Series will play a race to nine uh, once a week, right? Uh, that's only three legs different yeah. of, of this format. And it's all cricket. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the 0-1 legs will will definitely be a difference maker overall. What Does that mean that the last leg is cricket, correct? Right. And the one thing that, that you got to think about this is you're alternating two, two legs in one game, two legs in another, two legs in one game. So you're changing your mental strategies mid-stride. Well, if Bob just keeps hitting everything, he's not going to have to have a strategy right now. His strategy is just keep hitting triples. And Sugar just getting set up for the next leg. He's going to be down 2 nothing early on. which is, It's only one break of throw, though. That's the only good news. And that and the other good news is that it's a best of 11. So he's got a little bit of time. Yeah, like I said, that race to two, this could be over with right now. Sugar Shane could be in the loser's bracket. Sugar Shane's not out of it. He's only down 2-0. Absolutely. Bob's got to win six, or Sugar Shane's got to win six. 2 nothing. Bob McCoy, the number one seed, showing early on why he is the number one seed in this Booyah Cup. And it's not just because he played in the most qualifiers. He has done extremely well in a lot of those qualifiers. Well, that is correct. And Sugar Chain, a almost devastating start to this Booyah Cup, and specifically this leg. Bob McCoy right attacking that 20. Stay in there. Six will work. Six punishes the two. The six, the six on the 20 makes Sugar Shane have to have at least seven on the 19s to get back out in front on, on points. And it's not going to happen. Nope. Starting off slow, and unfortunately, uh, you just can't afford to do that. No, no. You can't. It, you can't let have Bob have this much room. you got to push back. All right, so Sugar Shane's got to play uh, well above a 7.0 for the rest of this leg if he wants to win it. And he's kind of put himself in that hole. Puts five back on the 18s, yep. but it's still driver's seat for the real McCoy, Bob McCoy. Absolutely. First time meeting Bob earlier uh, before we started. Just introduced myself and... Uh, it's always amazing how kind and nice uh, the players are, how respectful they are, and how uh, much they say nice things about us for no reason. 
Well, you got to remember, Sean, you are the man behind the mic. Sean Green. Yes, I am a man, a man behind the mic right now. <laughs> Fun the fact, man. you are too. The man, Sean Green. Well, it's better than Rogaine as the other hey, potential look. dark nickname. <laughs> of course, I'm, in my local dark community, my dark nickname is Where's Megan? Uh, that, because uh, We discussed that yeah, earlier. Yeah, my wife... Uh, is definitely the favorite green amongst all of our <laughs> friends and family. Hey, the green's here. Have I seen Megan? Yep. Is Megan here? Where's Megan? Yeah, she's here. What about hi? That'd be nice. Smart move yep. from Mr. Sugar Shane. Gains the 17. Put some points up, closes the 20. Pushes Bob to think about closing the 17 or open a new house. And Sugar doing exactly what he needs to do. Throwing sevens at the bare minimum at this point. But Bob's continuing to do what he needs to do as well. Went to the 17 on dart three. That would have been a dagger if he would have hit it. And get a little camera, a little wink there. Yeah, and here's the thing. Trip 16, trip 16, took a look at the 17. Yep. But he's also set it up for a one-shot close. He and can afford to let a dart go for a one-shot close. Now, Sugar Shane didn't push him over. Unfortunately, Sugar Shane's really close to being three legs down and two breaks a throw down in this race to six. Six. Format, first match of the Booyah Cup finale, live in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. But a big turn, Mr. Bob McCoy, 17 goodbye, trip 16 closed, trip 15 closed. Yep, Sugar Shane had to do that there. Uh, tried to take out the 16s and 15s while the double bowl was hit, just to put a little pressure on Bob. Now he is under zero pressure. Yeah, if he, if he misses the bull, it would take either two 15s or two 16s to add a bullseye. But he's got two straight houses. Hmm, he just gave Sugar Shane winning darts and not very difficult winning darts. Double bull needed on first dart. Not gonna just go. kidding. He hit the black, but not the right black. Gets the point lead. Gives a frustration look to the left. You see the Women's Booyah Cup finale stream is starting to get revved up over on the other side. Chrissy Grimble, defending champion. No, just kidding, that's Paul Murphy times two, or times one. Um, as Bob McCoy, the real McCoy, is really good and is up 3-0 on Sugar Shane Johnson. If this continues to go this way, Sugar Shane has had a bad week on live streams that we've commentated on. And I feel like it's my fault. J.C. Martinez uh, defeated him on Monday of the CSC Challenger Series live stream, 9-3. to three, And it was a just decimation. It looked like Will Stewart playing against me with me playing the role of Sugar Chain Johnson. For anyone that was confused by that. I was confused. Bob McCoy has a start on leg four. Not a, not a very strong open. Leaves the door open for Sugar Shane. He's going to have to start breaking to get back in this match. All right, let's look over what's going on outside of these boards as the uh, stat lines are updated every single mat or every single leg. Mason Sasser, 15 years old, down 5-0 on Mark McGrain, who has done nothing but impress me every, ever since I have seen him start to play. Rick Henze, Tyler Henze going on currently. That's the father-son uh, dad right now. Is, uh, is spanking his son a little bit. Three to one lead for Rick over Tyler. You got Brett Hollanday, Mike Carter waiting to play. Mike Maloney up 3-0 on Chris Watson. Dwayne Johansson, three to two lead on Matt Jenkins. Leonard Gates up four to one on Ryan Gervais, so good thing I mentioned that as a possible update. Uh, upset. Jesse Johnson up 2-0 on Jason Watt. JC Martinez down two to zero on Dustin Holt. Spellman is laying into David Fadham, 5-0 currently. Cody Brunello, 3-3 on Elliott Milk. Joey Mann has already moved on on Bob Anderson, 6-0. Danny Baggish defeats John Pilgrim, 6-1. Luke Pritzel, our qualifier last night, up 3-2 on Corey Beck. Demery Lawrence up 3-1 on his cousin, Darian Akobe. And 4-0 lead for Kevin Luke over Garrett Rakowski. That's uh, an interesting... Stat line there on that last match that 
in the pre-show, we said there was not much in between those players at all. No, that one is um, is, is surprising me. Um, this one is actually su is not surprising me to some degree because I know how good Bob is, but um, Sugar Shane has not had anything above that four something average um, to really push Bob. So he could change it right here with the break of throw. He needs it, and he ha will have that exact opportunity to do so. He's given that to himself, and Bob's also gifted it a little bit, only throwing a 22.67 well off, like 14 points per dart off of his pace that he typically throws. Just to give you an update, um, Bob McCoy, Sugar Shane, up, of course, 3-0. to zero. The winner will play Mark McGrain. There you go, 6-0 victory over the, the teenager, Mason Sasser. 36, and Sugar Shane's on the board and gets one of those breaks back. It's a good... That was a good moment for him to break right there, and now a chance to make it 3-2 to two as he will go first in this next game of 01. Open in, double out, split bowl as we see the Women's Booyah Cup getting started over here. Chrissy Grimmel taking on Casey Bates. They will have the that one coming your way after the conclusion of this match, assuming timing-wise that works out. Sugar, count them on up. One, two, three. And uh, the ladies' Booyah Cup. Talking about real quick all the money that's on the line today for the men. Well, how about them ladies? $4,000 to first place, $3,000 in cash. $1,150 second place, $750 to third, $600 to fourth. And uh, if you get last place, $250 each. 16 of the best female players playing in this one. Aw, oh, sugar, sugar. Looking at the camera and takes a little deep breath, like, thank God I finally showed up. One, two, three, open, 140 to back. Bob McCoy back on with 85 of his start turn. Needs to add to it right here. And it's just one, two, five. All right, Sugar Shane in the driver's seat of the leg. Bob McCoy still in the driver's seat of the match. But that's the beautiful thing about alternate starts. The beautiful thing about this format is, my, 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 how the turntables can turn yeah, quickly. I, we could be a 4-4 tie, and then one player could just rattle off two straight and just put a thumping out. Or we could go the distance and come down to the final dart. That's what this long format will produce. Yeah, it's a DJ format. Mm -hmm. Turntables. Turntables. I just made that up. Do you like it? I like it. Right, of course. Cool. I tell you, oh, there we go. Double 12. Oh. And he gave up. What a quitter. No, I but with Bob back on 206, he will be back with 12. The only problem with that number is that you don't want to go inside on the single six because then it gets a little bit shaky from there. Bob can only put pressure on them, which he probably will. Stay there. Go to the 18s. Nonsense. He wanted to leave the Lenny Gates. The Lenny Gates. Double 13. Speaking of doubles, two sixes. For a three to two lead. And he gets it done. It is three to two. Bob McCoy still up on Sugar Shane Johnson. Bob McCoy will go first with a chance to separate back out by two legs here. But uh, Sugar Shane wins back to back legs after being down three to zero. And he has also climbed back one of those breaks of throw back. Now we move back to the cricket format for the next two legs. Each will have a start. Bob has been deadly on those 20s in cricket. He's 2-0 and oh in the cricket legs so far. But he's 1-2 in the old one legs. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I think a lot of times we're here going to see the separation. We could do a lot of splitting on cricket, and it's going to be the old one, old one matches. Sugar Jane, a big seven mark on the 19s. Booyah Cup finale, main event of this tournament weekend. These players have been qu qualifying for this for months to get to this moment. Alex Bellman defeats David Fadham 6-0. As an update, Danny Baggis, we already said that one. Stop talking, Sean. Perfect. Sugar Shane, back-to-back -back sevens. I was going to say, good, perfect darts. Sugar Shane, seven mark, seven mark. Pushing Bob back into the 20s. You'll but need at least two trips in there. High ground will benefit Bob. 
And my goodness, does those 20s benefit Bob every time he has them. Look, you look to stay there. Mm. Moves to the 18. A bit aggressive there, but well, it pays you know, off. And I, Shane's had back-to-back -back sevens. I can see where that aggression came. Yep. He didn't. He wanted to throw the haymaker. It hit. Oh, no. And a two mark. Uh, man, it, can that trip 18 change the course of this leg? No, the two mark did. But he closed that 18 and pushed Shane into the into two mark on 17. Could that be the turning point of this leg? It could, but Shane's two mark was worse. <laughs> I get that. I get that. No, I get that. I get that. <laughs> Going to look to fill this one up. Not going to do so. Talk about wiry. I feel like every time Shane walks to the line, he stares into our eyes. Or to the chat's eyes. That's probably what it is. All right, Bob. He's he's never been out of control in a cricket leg. He's always had the 20s to score on um, and, and work with, and he has been masterful at being able to utilize that until this exact moment when I started to speak highly about it. You must have heard you. I don't know. Why do they always have to time their bad rounds when I'm I don't know. To we're, we're, like, we're like working them up, and then they say, okay, they've got to go for it. Single 17. Turntables. Well, that is a flip of the game that fast. But Bob's still honestly in control. Seven mark is very doable for a player of this caliber. He just needs one to get control before we go to the Bulls. Not going to do it on the first start. Got to have that trip 15 to fall. It's not going to. <sighs> Tough turn right there for Mr. Bob McCoy. This is Shane's moment to tie this thing up. And how the how the tables have turned. Did you just make up that statement? No. I'm sure Where'd somebody, you hear it before? I'm pretty sure it's been all over the world a few times. Probably. But when you work with for the Sean Green, the, the, Sh the uh, Mr. Sean oh Green, you got to get you got to have some good sayings every once in a while. Well, Bob kind of gave away this leg. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, have, I agree seat. with you. I agree with you. He took that haymaker, took out the 18s, had that rough run on the 20s, and let Shane back back in it. Now, now Shane's throwing the leg. Yeah, and Shane's walked through the door that Bob's been given an opportunity to to walk through, mm -hmm. but. A five five seven is nothing to sneeze at, that's for sure. Oh no. Just think about it. Sugar opened up with two seven marks. Back to back. McCoy changed the tables, but then Shane came right back. I'm gonna stay there. No reason to move. He has three darts for a reason, and only two wedges that are needed if he gets another if he gets a look at that. Shane. Uh oh. He can't win this leg right here, and uh, that means Bob's going to have an opportunity. To, depending on this dart, it might be a big opportunity. It is a, oh. it is a winning opportunity. That is huge. Uh, Sugar make... Shane just, I mean, just kick the door down and let Bob is going to let Bob walk right through it. And goodbye, 15s. And goodbye, leg. Bob McCoy says, thanks, Sugar. You're Boy, so that sweet. that was a roller coaster of a leg. It is four to – two now and that leg turned four different times exactly Crazy. and uh for those of you keeping track at home yeah four a time all right sugar shane kicking himself after letting that leg go but he's got to still stay focused it's still he's still got time we're not at the john part moment yet two and two Two legs away for Bob McCoy. He's two legs behind. On our other on our other stream, uh, Christy Grimble and Casey Bates are both one to one right now. Kind of give you an update what's going on on the other side. As you see, Casey back there getting ready to throw. I don't know if you saw that, but he let a dynamite stick and boom goes the dynamite for Big Bob McCoy. Sugar Shane follows it up with a seven. It's a good answer. Back to the 19s. He'll want to stay heavy on him. I usually follow a nine mark with something like a one mark, so that last start there was huge. Yeah. Sugar Shane 
Now go back to the 20s, being super aggressive here. Nice seven mark done. turn. Back to back sevens again out of Sugar Shane Johnson. I just pulled an old man move, my bad, everybody. We call those Orion behind your back. Oh, I know, but it's the old man. Well, only one of us a grandfather. And we're 15 years the senior. Well, you look good for your age. Seven mark again from Sugar Shane Johnson. That's three in a row. I don't know if that math maths with the 625 that he's throwing, but you're probably right. Look at this from Bob. Set off some more dynamite, Bob. That's his second of the leg. And Sugar Shane still doing enough, though, to stay in control. That's where sevens win legs, and uh, eights definitely help win legs. Eight mark there from Sugar Shane Johnson. Monster eight right back. Six, six, playing a six, five. And this is what this format and this level of talent is going to bring you all day long. I Listen, you and I are the luckiest people in darts because we were going to watch this anyway. But now we get to watch it and... Uh, Talk about it, and people have to listen, or they can hit the mute button. Well, 532 people right now, kind of like what we're, what we're saying. And that's only on Facebook. Overall, approaching that 1,000 mark. So hit that like button, hit that share button. Booyah Cup fa finale going on currently. And there's nothing else on TV. It's a Saturday. You got nothing else to do. Mm -mm. Settle in, grab some popcorn. You only need the edge of your seat, so uh, you can get rid of the back half. And uh, let's tune in for some great darts this week. Or today. It's going to feel like a week when this is over with, though. We've been talking about that standard of five. It's, it's not going to win legs. We are seeing right here sixes battling it out. 6.14, 6.0. Sugar saying ahead mainly because he has high ground and he went first. Uh, and that's the benefit of having the start in this. Bob's hit two nine marks in this leg. Shane's hit zero, and Shane's still in control because of all those sevens. He'll stay on that 16. Got rid of it, only manages three, but it pushes Bob into the 15s. Where he will need to stay there the entire time to get the point lead back. Sugar Shane, barring some crazy thing happening like happened last leg, it should be four to three. Ooh. I said barring anything crazy happening. Didn't get the 15s to close, only managed 20 points. Now a nine mark gets Bob control. Trouble 20, trouble 20, that's 90 points scored. That's the point lead, and then trouble 20 would give him control going into the bowls. Do we get to sit that away? Oh, now he's got to stay. Ideally. Mm. Hits the two instead. Yeah, I didn't like that second dart through that third dart on the light side. Comes underneath. Good smart darts from Sugar Shane Johnson. Bob McCoy, quite a few bowls behind and the 20s. So Shane in complete control to make this 4-3. to three. It's just a hold of throw for Sugar Shane. He still has to break Bob one more time, or once, in order to uh, get back control. And you're seeing like, just the roller coaster of this format mm -hmm. overall. It's just, just wonderful. Dwayne Johansson getting it done in his first round match. Against Matt Jenkins, six to two. Leonard Gates defeats Ryan Jervis, six to three. Alex or Elliot Milk over Cody Brunello, and then Joey Mann over Bob Anderson, six zero win for Joey Mann, six three. Elliot Milk over Cody Brunello. Demery up five to one over his cousin, and Kevin Luke defeats Garrett Kowski, six to two. Big so, win for Gar for Mr. Kevin Luke. They are rolling at this point, and. 
we have yet to see a last leg decider out of any of those matches. Sugar Shane, a 5.03, enough to get it done. And it is a 4 to 3 scoreline. Best of 11, race to 6. Bob is two legs away, and he will get the start in this one. And we're back to 501 for a couple legs. This is an important hole to throw uh, for Bob McCoy to set up for his opportunity to win the legs or to win the match. And this is a huge break opportunity here for Shane. I mean, down four to three. If he breaks here, ties it up four to four, your classic two out of three. And Shane has been better in the 0-1 games versus the cricket legs uh, for Bob. Bob is up four to one, three to one in cricket legs uh, versus Sugar two and one up on Bob in the 0-1 legs. Evens it out, smart last start. Now it just has to be even from this point forward. Four, five, nine. Jeff, we'll put the uh, links to the brackets in the chat for you uh, so you guys can all see and get the updates that everyone else is. They're using the real-time format. Rick Henze up 5-1 to one right now on Tyler. Mike Carter, Brett Hollanday getting going now. Mike Maloney up 5-1 to one on Chris Watson. Jesse Johnson, three. Jason Watt, two. Dustin Holt, five to two lead over La Maquina, Juan Martinez. You're seeing that. Uh, a lot of the big names rolling through their first round matchups. And do you think that we uh, have disrespected the previous two time champion of this by not even mentioning him really on the pre show? And that's Leonard Gates. Sure. We always we always forget about about certain players, and he's one that you should never forget about. He's the greatest senior player to ever play the game. He's the only one with all the major championships. Yeah, I uh, I think we were hope we were we were bringing the hype of the Maloney Baggies match last night into the to the bracket preview show. Probably, and I'm sure that that's okay for Leonard. He's fine, just kind of okay. Don't talk about me. I'm okay with that. Chrissy Grimble up three to one on Casey Bates over on the other board. Which Bullseye. And Sugar Shane takes it out on the pole, and we have a tie ball game as he breaks Bob McCoy's throw. That was a huge throw. Huge throw. Four to four now. They are back on throw. And uh Sugar Shane will get the start in this leg. This is down and, to your uh, classic two out of three now. Did Sugar just power move that, take it out, and then just walk away from the board without restarting the next leg? <laughs> It's a bold move, Cotton. Four to four score line. Uh, Ginger, give us an update on the finals of the men's and women's, or men's and, or women's and pro doubles. Gates and Baggish won the men, and Liz and Abby did win the women. As Sugar Shane starts off with a 180 here in this leg. He's starting to feel it. And Sugar Shane down four to two. He was down three nothing. Down three to nothing. Down four to two. Now ties it up four four. Now opens up 180 in leg number nine. Let's see if he can just keep carrying that momentum. I think the adrenaline got him a little bit right there. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Because that first start was way higher than he probably wanted it to be. Overshot that one. Chrissy wins another one and now takes a 4-1 to one lead. As we run you through the ladies' side updates, Chrissy Grimmel up 4-1 to one on Casey Bates. Paula Murphy up 2-0 on Vanessa Talks. Liz Tynum 1-0 on Taylor Thaxton. Abby Spot 2-1 to one on Carolyn Noguchi. Jessica Melton, Julie Weger tied at 1 apiece. Lisa Yee, Olivia Terry, two apiece. Caitlin Myers up 2-0 on Hunter Smith. And Shea Cole up 2-1 on Meredith McGee. So there's some recent updates for you. Mark McGrain is waiting on the winner of this match, currently on our stream. Rick Henze does defeat the kid, Tyler Henze. Uh, he is waiting the winner of Brett Hollanday, Mike Carter. Mike Maloney, Dwayne Johansson going on. 
will be on board 29. So they're getting rolling on the uh, Dustin Holt Alex Spellman going on. Woo! Elliot Milk, Joey Mann. There's some good matchups. Thagus Pritzel. They're in the same area, so that'll be an interesting one. Demi Lawrence, Kevin Luke. Another good one there at the bottom of the bracket. Sugar Shane in the driver's seat of this leg. Bob McCoy can put a lot of pressure on the 1-2-2, though, and he's going to do that. That's a time for a 180 to leave 24 for Bob McCoy. He's asking Sugar a question. Sugar's got to take this 1-2-2. Two, two. 18's this first. Massive break of throw. Got to stay. Double seven. No! Oh. And Bob McCoy to break the throw right back. That moved the entire board. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. That is, I mean, that had to be so right there on the wire that that's frustrating. Double 12. And Bob McCoy settles in, hits it. Just like that, turn the tables right back in his favor. He will, he will start the next leg. He will be throwing for the match in the next leg. That's the fourth or fifth break of throw. Yeah, it's Bob's turn to go first. Sugar just got broken there. Deep I feel breath. like, yeah, I feel like in this format, sometimes it's going to be difficult for them to remember, like, what just happened in the last leg? Who just started that? Uh, just because of what's going on. And what a start from Bob McCoy. Boom goes the dynamite. Big nine mark on the 20s. Has that high ground. We've seen him use that high ground as advantage. Shane's got a battle back on 19s. He gives him back five. Advantage, Mr. McCoy. Well, I was wrong on that statement. That's my bad. Sorry about that, guys. Pritzel is a Wisconsinite. But isn't he living in Florida now? Huh? He played at King Seat, right? Who am I thinking of? Brandon Pritz. Oh, my goodness. Well, Sugar Shane, boom goes a dynamite. We're just going to move on. That's right. I knew that. Bob just shot at the 20s when they were closed. He just realized that when he shot it. Like before it hit the board, he mm -hmm. shook his head. Got to read your scoreboard. And that might be, uh, yeah, that's an interesting mistake. Definitely the biggest one that we've had in the last, you know, minute or so of anyone speaking or anything. Like saying that Luke Pritzel was from the same area. My bad. No, I definitely did not mean that, Carolyn. Uh, but thank you so much for trying to have my back there. Um, it goes a long way. Everyone else is going to hate you, but it goes a long way for me. Big stuff right here coming out of McCoy. Oh, just misses on the 17. Got to play aggressive late. I think that's the right shot, even though he could have went back to 18 for more points. And aggression coming from Sugar Shane, trying to get rid of the 18. We're down to the deciding three legs, deciding two legs. McCoy gets this. He moves on. Sugar Shane needs this leg to go to the decider. And he'll throw for the match if he does that. Seventeen. Gets it. Decoy retakes control with a big eight. Some would call it crazy in this moment. And it looks like Chrissy Grimmel is does complete the work on Casey Bates. Five to one victory. She will be the first one to move on in the women's. We got more action coming up shortly right after this leg. Like maybe another leg. Well, I was going <laughs> to do a field update, but I, I'm, I didn't say it properly. I know, that's great. Ah. Uh. Kevin, you're absolutely right. And you know what? I, I know this fact. It's just I got confused with Brandon Pritz. 
It's really it's their fault for having similar last names. But if you want to blame me, I guess you can. <laughs> Bob McCoy. Oh, oh one Bob, of the just on the outside. 392 plays 301. Two houses to one. Advantage, Mr. McCoy. Yeah, Sugar Shane needs uh, to be special. Needs to be special from here. And in case anyone's wondering what I mean by that, I mean nine marks. Seven's just not enough right now. I like how Bob is starting to like resettle, go back into his pace. The game did get pretty quick there for quite a while. He did his main job there, which is to get rid of Shane's number. But this is still anyone's ball game, really. It's only a 25-point lead, too, so take him out, Sugar. Oh, 18 didn't go. 18 needed to go on that turn. Yep. If he hits both of those numbers, it's anyone's ball game right now because Bob has the bailout plan. Now, last time, though, in this moment, he did not utilize a bailout plan. He went bullseye miss, and then he stayed on the bull. If he does that again, that could be a huge mistake. Nope, he's going to play the smart round. Make sure he's got plenty to work with. Push Shane out of this leg. And that is a monster nine mark. Uh, that's not the coffin shot that you have coined, but uh, it might as well be. That definitely uh, set the stage for this leg. But sure Five Shane points. didn't go away. 150 points or 125 Five points turn. My goodness. 5-5-6 Five, five, six plays 5-2-2. Five, two, five, two, two. Great averages. And Bob, one bowl away. And he defeats Sugar Shane Johnson 6-4. to four. Sugar Shane got it to even at four apiece, and then Bob rattled off the last two. Bob McCoy, your one seed, moves on in this bracket. He will take on Mark McGrain in the next round. What only a match, great match. The only match we have left in the round one is Mike Carter's up 3-1 to one over Brett Holliday. Uh, your ladies update right now, Paula Murphy's up 4-0 to zero on uh, Vanessa Talks. Man, you see that second-round matchup, Chrissy Grimmel, Paula Murphy. Oh, it'll be huge. Gross how good um, that's going to be. Taylor Thaxton down 2-0 to zero to Liz Tynan. Abby Spot 3-2 to two over Carolyn Noguchi. 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 Um, G. Luiger's up 2-1 to one over Jessica Milton. Olivia Terry, Lisa Yee, 3-3 three to three right now. Caitlin Myers, 2-1 to one over Hunter Smith currently. And here's another one that I talked about. Shaco, 3, Meredith McGee, 2. All right. Well, while we're waiting for those matches to finish up so that we can get some matches back on our streaming board, we're going to take a short break. Sean Green, Ryan Mooneyham, Will Stewart bringing you live coverage of the Booyah Cup finale. We'll be right back after this. Breaking soft tip news, Windmill has announced a string of American player signings, including PDC superstar Jules Van Dongen. You've known about Leonard Gates, of course. However, we also saw Mike Maloney, Rick Henze, and Garrett Rakowski, who are prominent soft tip players. Not to say they've never won anything on the steel tip side, but they are renowned for their soft tip accomplishments and dominance in the U.S. And for you folks overseas unfamiliar with these guys, just go on over to our YouTube page, at USA Darts, type in their names in the search bar. We have dozens of great matches matches featuring all five of the new Windmouse sponsored players, you will not be disappointed. It is astonishing to see three sponsorships that are soft tip leaning by a major darts brand with over 50 years of experience in the industry, not to mention the Blade 6 being the board sponsor for the PDC. So if that doesn't answer the question, why do people play soft tip? I don't know what else can. We totally understand how the UK folks might not get it and just don't realize how popular soft tip is globally, but trust us, we at USA Darts Production literally make half of our living streaming soft tip events and the other half streaming steel tip. You don't like or respect the soft tip side, but at least be aware. Soft tip is obviously beloved by enough people who truly enjoy participating. And now players are getting signed by Windmow. I can't wait to see what's next.
way they're scoring. There may be nothing in it. One man misses. Does the other man get? Yes! Double 12! The new FitPoint Plus CC Conversion Points. The CC in the name stands for Carbon Composite, which is a material that is very durable yet very lightweight, close to the soft tip plastic points you're used to throwing. They come in two available lengths to choose from, the shorter 25mm and the longer 30mm. They feature barbed tips that help to prevent bounce outs. Something to be said about these is they're very aggressive at first, versus being made smooth and wearing out to virtually nothing. So you can speed up the smoothing process by taking sandpaper to the barbed section. Here's a quick comparison of a brand new set versus a set used in a few games. When these were brand new, we noticed they pulled up fibers from the dartboard, so we recommend throwing at unpopular members. The left side of the board, definitely not the bullseye, treble, or doubles. They include a FitPoint Plus tool to loosen and tighten them. Couple that with a set of O-rings and you're darn near guaranteed a secure fit. That concludes our review. This product is available on our website, adzdarts.com. Remember, we're your partner in darts, and thanks for watching. L-Style Lip Point Premium 30s. So first, the improved patent non-loosening threading. Amazing. You don't have to worry about them coming loose. You're in the middle of a match. Last thing you want to do is fumble around with your darts, trying to tighten down the points to the barrel, and another thing added on to the chaos. Basically, the next thing after that would be the material, the hardened technology that they use for these points, and how thick they are. Basically, less bendable and stays to form pretty true. I haven't seen a single one break yet, including like the Lip Point Premium shorts that I did a review on before. Also very strong, same material. Definitely, definitely recommend that one. Um, other than that, I mean, big thing for some people that they don't think about is it helps give more surface area for grip. You know, some people like to rest their finger on the point of the barrel and gives them a little extra surface area to cover with that longer point. Um, tighter grouping, which can help when entering into the board. Gives you more space to lay into the bed of the target. And uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, steel tip players, this is your favorite go-to item now, I would say, moving forward. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Booyah Cup finale live here in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Green, joined by Ryan Mooneyham, and we got ourselves, uh, well, a quite a, ta a talented affair here on our streaming board. State of Florida, uh, Chrissy Grimmel, Paula Murphy. Did you know that Lucas Pritzel is not from there? We figured that one out, didn't we? I was today we? years old. Today years old. Um... The chat and everyone in the chat, literally, I think every single person watching along with us, let me know that. Uh, and I appreciate that, all you Wisconsinites. I used to be your your favorite, and now you hate me. Ryan Mooneyham, this one is uh, a really, really good battle. 4.30 cricket average for Chrissy Grimmel to a 3.74 for Paul Murphy. The 01 favors Chrissy as well, a 35.32 to a 31.21. However, Paul Murphy's defending champion. 
You yes. never count out the defending no. champion. No, I mean, you, you got Chrissy Grimmel. We know what she can do. We've got Paula Murphy. We know what she can do. This is going to be that timed opportunity. They're both experienced. They're both savvy veterans. It's going to be the time. It's going to be the time. And I, I, I would pick Chrissy Grimmel by, based on numbers, but I like Paula Murphy. So you're saying you're picking with your heart and not your head in this one. That's correct. All right. Well, I mean, uh, we, I'm going to take Chrissy. Uh, Chrissy is the word. She's the Kraken, and we're going to have smooth slower down. The only reason I'm picking Chrissy is because uh, she's starting leg number one. And while Paul is going to win this one based on what's happening right now, uh, Chrissy's going to break the throw at some point and have the advantage if this goes the distance, which it has every inkling to possibly do. Um, the averages mean nothing right now between Paula Murphy and Chrissy Grimmel. And I want to make that perfectly clear that those those numbers are are a fugazi at this point. Either player can out can best either player. These also these two have also traded more paint on yep. in the singles atmosphere than probably m most of the people in this room. They've traded more paint than NASCAR drivers. Exactly. I mean, it, you just they they see each other all the time. Numbers mean nothing when it comes to grit and will and and the will, and they want to win. Chrissy has her little rock to her uh, her game, and that was something that Abby Spot noticed earlier, that she's a leaner, and so that raised Aki affected her a little bit more. Uh, Chrissy likes to walk that third dart in. Um, she's got to be a little bit conscious of that, though, because if she does so, she might uh, trip over the Aki, and a bust there doesn't really matter. I mean, Paula would have liked to hit the triple 11 there and take it out, but she will be return with 56. Very doable in two darts. This is master out for those that may think that she would have went 16 for tops. It was six for the full bull. Yep. Chrissy got stuck there. And Paula goes, what was that? Going for the 17 to set up a, a two bull finish, and she just jerked it. She, well, she double hitched. I don't know if you noticed that. She was already going forward too quickly. And that might have been exactly what I was talking about with the Aki. I mean, yeah. Whereas Paula Murphy plays on a raised Aki um, all day, every day, and steals it. There you go. Paula Murphy, leg number one. Again, break a throw. one nothing lead. Best of five here. Or race to five. Best of nine on this lady side. It is, you mentioned early, open in, master out, full bull in the lady side. Uh, and then they will play, of course, cricket. Uh, just some updates from the ladies' field. Abby Spot has bested Carolyn. Five to two, Lisa Yi five to three over Olivia. Kayla Myers up four to one right now on Hunter Smith, and Liz Tynan up three to two on Taylor Thaxton. Shea Cole four to two up on Meredith McGee. Excellent, excellent matches going on right now on the field. We have an excellent match right in front of us. If anyone watching along does not know who Paul Murphy is, uh, her honey pot is the 19s. That's why she started there. Um, although she did not. Take advantage of it, and Chrissy Grimmel was like, I can start on the 19s, too. Six marks them to take away uh, Paula's scoring number right away. Not phased by that six mark. Here comes Paula. Manages a tri trip 20. I really thought maybe she might just, just come down and close that 19, but she wanted that 60 points. Yeah, and... I think that she needed the 60 points there. Yeah, I agree. But I've seen her eyes drop, and I know that was to read the Looking scoreboard. Up. Last start did not have any fall through from Chrissy Grimmel. 3-5 playing a 3-0, and they're almost laughing at each other with their start here. That is a perfect dead center trip 20, and she follows that up with another one. Paula Murphy, 7 marks it. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff out of Paula Murphy. The Kraken's got to go to the 18s. In a tournament that has 16 players, and there's only one of those 16 players have won this tournament before, that's an advantage. Mm -hmm. Back to that 20. It adds more pressure. 
According to her eyes, she's not going anywhere. Nope, and she does not go anywhere. She can play that high ground all day long. Danny Bags already up 1-0 on Lucas Pritzel. And in the second leg, he's throwing a 7.25 average right now on Lucas. So Danny about to get a 2-0 lead. Speaking about shooting is there's another monster seven out of Paula Murphy, herself currently carrying a 5.4 in this leg. You know, it's not bad. Um, I've never achieved that, that number personally, but uh, I'm sure it's fun. Yeah, I'm still waiting to achieve that level. Danny up 2-0 now. That has been confirmed. He threw a 6-8-6 six, six in that last leg. Uh, Donald asking, will the one more mat work on carpet? Uh, thick carpet, I probably wouldn't recommend that. I think it'll slide. Yeah. Seven from Chrissy. Now throwing above a five herself. Against the throw, but Paula with high ground. And she's going to utilize that high ground. Yes, she is. That last start. Unlucky. Dikembe Mutumboed out of the five. I was going to say, unlucky. That was a no, 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 no. Chrissy, an advantage here. Not the round she was looking for. Last start seemed a little bit too soon. Back to that trip 20. She's not taking her eyes off that prize. Gets a four. Uh, Scotty, I'm going to respond for Will so he doesn't have to grab a microphone and respond uh, directly. Um, his internet has not had any issues whatsoever. The streaming has been uh, crisp and clear on our end. So um, try YouTube maybe. Um, or just check the internet that is in your area that you are currently watching on. Or your cellular coverage. Remember that trip 20, Paula Murphy continues on. Gets Big darts. two. She's been trying to get a little bit of a gap so she can take a look at that 18 and 16. And if you have Cricket Mobile, then why are you been assuming it's our problem? <laughs> and unfortunately, I will be here the rest of the weekend, everybody. Sean Green stops the mic. Seven mark out of Grandma pushes. Miss smooth back in the trip 20. Oh, Florida? That's that's definitely just a Florida thing. Everybody knows that. Speaking of Floridian, here comes Paula Murphy. All right, Chrissy. Stepping up here. Needs a lot of 18s. They've been playing this uh, back and forth cat and mouse game. Who's going to hit? Who's going to miss? And then and they've been doing similar stuff. If one hits, the other one hits. If one misses, the other one misses. Paula took a stab at the 18s there, and I like that move. Just to do something a little bit different. And then she tried to stab the 6. From the field on our lady side, Shea Cole 5 moves on over Meredith McGee, who manages 2. Caitlin Myers is up 4-2 to two on Hunter Smith. Julie Weger has added another leg. She is now one away from uh, taking out Jessica Melton with a 4-2 to two lead. Liz Tynan, 4-2 to two currently over Taylor Thaxton. Danny Baggish is uh, putting on a show here on the other board. Throws a 6.56 in that last leg. He's up 3-0 on Lucas Pritzel. Continuing on from the field. Uh, and this is on the winner's side. Kevin Luke 2. Demery Lawrence, zero. 
If you read that score line, I'm going to be so upset. I'm not going to read that <laughs> score line because I don't want anybody upset. <laughs> Joy Man 3, Elliot Milk 2, Dustin Holt 2, Alex Spellman 2, Leonard Gates 1, Jesse Johnson 1. Here's one for you. Mike Maloney 4, Dwayne Johansson 0. Wow. And then um, a recent stream was with Bob McCoy. He's up 2-0 to zero over yesterday's Filthy Assassin Qualify winner, Mark McGrain. And Mike Carter uh, moved on. He will play Rick Hensey in the second round, so they're getting they're going to get that match. Yeah, going I'm not reporting early. anything there. They haven't gone underway yet. Yep. All right, Chrissy. Now, chance to cement the driver's seat here. That first dart helps a lot. Second dart helps even more. Bullseye. Ah, I was looking to see if we were going to go for the win there. Could have been fun, but that's all right. Paula, not getting on that first start to connect. Gets her second one. And just gets two more. Yep. So Chrissy Grimmel, free reign to tie this bad boy up and break right back. And leg number two. She does that with only one dart. 488. And that was a lot of rounds for these ladies to 14 rounds. 488 to a 4.00. The WCF <laughs> champion showing us why. In fact, the WCS champions are right now playing both of them in the streaming board area. Chrissy did all the heavy work, and then Danny just was a bit of a, a help. Well, boom goes the dynamite there for Chrissy Grimmel. Starting it off perfect. Nine to open for Grimmel. Murphy backs up five. Grimmel in the driver's seat in this leg. Yep, goes back up to points. Unable to hit anything, and that is exactly how I follow a nine mark. Typically. It's always nice to know that the professionals are still people, too. You can see both of them putting a lot of emphasis on every single dart right now because every single dart is so important. When you're playing this talent, you can't really make too many mistakes. No. That's, that miss, that slight miss, or that wire out, it's costly so quick in this event. All right, Paula Murphy finds the last dart. Reminder, guys, the 2024 Dark Horse Classic and Booyah Cup finale weekend. This is the main event, the Booyah Cup. Brought to you by Booyah Darts. Jeremy Byrne has been the man with the plan of this event, and three years in, it's getting bigger and better. You saw highlights at the very beginning of our stream today from last year. And you can see already the difference in the setup from last year to, diff to this year and just how much, um, honestly, better it looks. Oh, this is this is a, a fantastic uh, venue. It's well set up. It's laid out. There's plenty of room. Uh, yeah, Giant parking lot. Giant parking lot. Beautiful stage area. It, it's just it's incredible. And if you want something fancier, right next door there's probably a wedding going on. In the same building, so. Maybe we might just go get us a bottle of champagne. What do you think? Well, we're Pop not really top. dressed for the part of that. Uh, they would probably guess slacks. that. They, well, me too. Uh, they'd probably guess based on the shirts that we didn't yeah. belong. I, I, I get you on that. Scrolling down. Uh, Shea Cole did defeat Meredith McGee 5-2. to two. She is waiting on the winner of Caitlin Myers, Hunter Smith, that currently stands at 4-3, Caitlin Myers. And that Caitlin Myers, Hunter Smith is the last first-round match of the ladies' bracket. 
Pollard takes out the 20s. That is aggressive. She's staying aggressive, too. Only a one-point lead. She grabs the 20s, not the 18s. On her move to the 17s, she pulls to the inside. She needed to add 17 more, or 15 more, 51 more points to her lead. Grimble's got the advantage. Doesn't say just needs yep. to. And back up to point. Chrissy Grimble just making that look easy. One to one score line. Paula Murphy going right at the 15s. Oh, that's a hanger. Just outside. One hole out, as we all. We all commonly have to say yep. I resisted by one hole out. Just a wire width away from being perfect. Chrissy it. makes that final adjustment there, and it pays off. 62-point lead. Means Paula needs at least two troubles on the 15 before she can look anywhere, and she's probably not going to do that anyway. But she might. There's those eyes. Yep. Where they're going? Up and just misses it. Two wires away from being in complete control of the leg. And that's exactly what she's saying. <laughs> and she's telling her, I was right there. I was right there. Well, David Fagan, pinchback, turning in with us, uh, says, uh, are they soft chip darts? Haven't actually seen these before. So first time for everything. Welcome to our show. And a lot of talented dart players, and yep. Giant soft tip dart tournament. $4,000 to the woman who wins this Booyah Cup finale on the women's side. Last year champion Paula Murphy trying to repeat. Uh, favorite based on averages and overall uh Probably favors Chrissy Grimmel. Yep. The Kraken. And the Kraken is trying to crack in a nine. And she does so. That's a nine dart or nine mark for Chrissy Grimmel. I just tried to do something different and it never works. Boom goes a dynamite. I'll just stick to what I know. We love to do that for Chrissy. And look at how unfazed Paula Murphy is at the nine. She's like, you throw a nine, I throw a six. I got the lead. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. But thank you. winning darts in the hands here of Chrissy Grimmel. <laughs> ah, there we go. There we go. You can see that as soon as they approach the line, they're very serious. Uh, but they are friends as well. Does she sweep the 15, Sean? Yeah, she should. That would have put pres more pressure on Paula than I think uh, hitting the bull there. Because now what Paula has is options. And the last thing you want to do is give your opponent options. Missed on the bull. Right to the 15s. Outside again. Not happy. Well, is that <laughs> she is is that the uh the turning the last turning point in this leg? She'll need three darts. Single bull, two fifteens. To give us a two one score line. Two fifteens. And only hits one. Oh, boy. What do you do if you're Paula? Win. Go for the win. Fat 15 gives her three. Gets her the look on the bull, or she go all 15s? All 15s, I think, is fine. But I, I'd rather just take the darts at it. it. Yeah, it's an outside chance, and it's probably a sillier shot than staying on the 15s the whole way, but it created three you're bullseyes. Against the th you're, it's for a break of throw. You know you need to be more aggressive in that moment. And, uh, well, Chrissy's not going to be able to do it. So, so we are Murphy. actually 3-3 three to three now yep. because of that four mark on the 15s yep. on the bull. How the tides have changed. And I'm surprised Chrissy got rid of the 15 first. No, it was a fly-off. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. That was a heck of a fly-off then. She caught it in the corner. So it wasn't baby. Wow, Ooh. that's a big drop on the last start from Paula. Well, can Chrissy hit three? We know she can. Will she hit three here? Big swig on the old drink. And she's talking to the 
to the support system back there before she shoots these darts. Looking just unfazed. Needs two more. Gets him in one. There you go. Chrissy Grimmel Boy, that's holds the throw at the end of the day. That was going one way for so long. And at the end of the day, two to one lead, two on the trot for Chrissy Grimmel. As we look around, Danny Baggish, Lucas Pritzel, 5-0, Danny Baggish. And it's looking more and more likely that uh, Luke is about to throw his last three darts right here uh, for that match. We'll move back to the 0-1. Remember, it's alternating start. They've completed their cricket match. Now they're going back in the 0-1. Paula Murphy right out of the gate, 150. 501 open in master out. So that means you can finish on a bullseye, a triple, or a double. And the full bowl means that every part of the bullseye, including the 25 segment, is worth 50 points in this format. So if you're joining us from overseas, that is why it is, it, it's a much bigger segment to shoot at the bowls for a 10 point difference mm -hmm. than it is the 20s. The reward outweighs the risk going for the bowls. All right. Paula goes hat trick low ton. Grimmel opens up low ton. She needs hat trick to tire right here. I mean, it's surprising when they miss a bowl. It That's is, how good it, these, it's, it's these surprising. players are. You, you expect everything to be perfect every time on that bullseye. Speaking of perfect, there's double. And gets another one. Low tons and hat tricks is the name of the game for these two. One, three, two, place two, eight, four. Pressure on Grimble to get it close. Another one of those will put some pressure on. Unable to do so. And pulls her out of the out, out contingencies. Yep. It was also uh, not the right miss, which Fort is just luck. unlucky on that. Bullseye, bullseye, double 16. Double 16 for the 132. Gets oh. it done. A 41.75. 12 Bam. darter Bam. for Paula Murphy. 2-2 two -two score line. And now Chrissy goes first in 01. As we get updates in the men's side, you see that uh, the other streaming board is empty. That's because Danny Baggish... Six nilled Luke Pritzel. We have Bob McCoy right now, three to two over Mark McGrain. Now remember these are on the winner's side only. Yep. Rick Kinsey sitting two zero up on Mike Carter. Uh we reported uh, Mike Maloney six, Dwayne Johansson zero. So Maloney has moved on into the next round of the winners. Oh, look at that matchup that's coming. Leonard Gates ha is up four to one over Jesse Johnson. Dustin Holt, three. Alex Spellman, four. Ooh, Very interesting tight match battle. going on. Speaking of another battle right here, Elliot Milk, four. Joey Mann, four. We've already reported the 6-0 win for Danny Baggish. And the last one, currently on the winner's side, Demi Lawrence, one. Kevin Luke, four. There you go. And I believe I just saw what popped up there. Um, if you scroll up a little bit again, it looks like we might be heading towards a Mike Maloney, Leonard Gates, showdown on our stream as the streaming boards are 39 and 40 if I'm not mistaken uh, Zach asking where can I watch the Spellman Holt match um, zero places most yeah, likely it's live only yep live here but they are if you're in the room then they're on board 25 Unfortunately, we don't have that portion like we do on Dark Connect for a field yeah. match. Where we can see like them count down Just or whatever. Just count down or whatever. Even, no video, but at least we can see the score lines. But we are using the Bull Shooter uh, software. Uh, it does update leg by leg, but you have to be real desperate to just stare at that. Like we are. As exactly. we are just staring at that. Big hat trick again from Paula Murphy. And... 
She's trying to best her 12 darter in the last leg, but Chrissy Grimmel, 147, cannot go now. And man, do I like the bull on the first dart and not the triple 19. However, you have to hit it either way. The order doesn't matter there. Sean, what's your preferred method on 85? 45 or 57? It's 45, just because I like tops. And I don't like double seven. Gotcha. And so I try to avoid that as at all costs. 32 for another break of throw. And Ooh. not going to get it done there. Chris right Grimble. on the inside. Three clear at tops. You expect this to go every time. And Zach, no problem at all, bud. You can always ask questions, guys, and I will always be sarcastic and not serious in my answers. I promise everybody. I am never bothered by anything. That's just not how I roll, or else I would not do this job. Mine is all pretend. 3-2 Chrissy. I mean, if you guys thought I was serious, then you guys would also think that I really dislike Ryan Mooningham and Will Stewart, and I love them both. Hold on. Did you get that recorded? <laughs> That's my new ringtone. That's the second time. No one has their phone on ring. So we don't need ringtones anymore, gentlemen. And oh, that's the I second time that. someone has mentioned a ringtone to me today. <laughs> of, like, adding my voice as a ringtone. Thanks. You're going to have it on vibrate anyway. What's well, the point I of that? Well, it doesn't matter. I just said no, it's there. <laughs> then I could walk around the room and show it off. Even though it would never happen. But seriously, we have that recorded, right? I'll go back yes. and cut that out. Is, we are live right now. Okay, back to the match. Paula Murphy, two. Chrissy Grimmel, three. Back in the cricket matches. I really like that comment. We are getting treated to the ladies' final early. I love that. Could be. Very well could be. But, yeah, Chrissy had a disappointing result last year in the Booyah Cup. Which, to be fair, is very unlike Chrissy to do. So, well, just like of, that. I was going to say, speaking of unlike, I don't usually see Chrissy miss 0-3 oh, on a 20 segment. Paula will smartly get rid of it. She'll crash that 19 for more points. This is exactly where Paula wants to be. She loves those 19s. Well, she, she closes she high her. ground, now yep. creates her own high yep. ground. We've talked about that a lot. That high ground, especially when you get in the lower segments, if you can keep that 19 and you're pushing against a 48 uh, for a triple 16 or a 45 for a triple 15, that 57, then it's very deadly. Goes a long way. All right, here's Paula. Hammer the 19s again. She is not afraid to po post up a bunch of points. That's a good point. Uh, Chrissy, big seven mark on the 17s. They're both just staying low, and they have their low number, 19s and 17s, to just... Uh, Point up as much as possible, and this might turn into a little bit of a point battle. Paula needs to stay there. She needs more points. And that is very blocked. But knowing her, she typically finds a way through, and that's actually one of the most impressive parts of her game because it looks so blocked. Gains one point. Grimmel can close the 19. She's got the 17s. She's only down one point. It's, it's closer than what, what marks go. Look at this. Big nine from Chrissy Grimmel. And she has left the building. She did her job. She is a pacer. Uh, and I don't mean the Indiana variety. Uh, she, she likes to uh, pace back and forth. She's a big thinker. She's a strategist. Oh, that's a tough last start. The flight low into the fours. This could very quickly become a 4-2 to two score line with this advantage here for Chrissy. And another break of throw. Back to that 17 to add points. Once Stay that there. 18, goodbye. Yep. I'm surprised you went double there, knowing, not knowing that, or knowing that she could point on the 18s with a triple. 
uh, you know, like she said, like she goes back and she comes back. She's a thinker. She's a strategist. She's playing chess right now in cricket. I would love to see how many steps she gets in the dark tournament compared to like an average day. Seven mark from Paula. Not enough right now, especially with it on 15s. The lowest number to to point on. Chris is just going to try and get rid of that first after she goes at the 17s. Back to that 15s? Yep. That last start was miles off the treble. We have still yet to see a last leg decider here in the Booyah Cup so far. And we've played over 16 matches. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. I guess it's there's a better chance of not having last leg deciders with the uh, alternate start. Loser start, you always have that way to mm -hmm. battle right back into mm -hmm. it. Speaking of battling back into it, going to the 16s, trying her best. Well, Ryan, her best is not good enough right now. I, I'm just kidding. Her best is always good enough, but Chrissy is, is uh, better enough. Right now, Chrissy's playing Chrissy Grimble darts. Bringing the heat, add, adding the points. We take for granted averages like a 4.75 from Chrissy Grimmel. Needs another one of those for the point lead. Gets it. So you're saying there's a chance. Back to the 17s, Grimmel. She showed showed that's her favorite point dart. Stayed there, which is respect for Paula. And Paula unable to grab the first treble. And I always say the two hardest numbers to adjust after you miss the first start are the 16s and 15s. Just because that is all weight. Mm -hmm. And you see it right there. Only one mark scored for Paula Murphy. So Chrissy, arms are wide open for you to hug out another leg and make it 4-2. to two. And not quite shutting the door. Guys, let us know in the chat where you're tuning in from. Live here at the 2024 Dark Horse Classic and Booyah Cup finale. Sean Green joined by Ryan Mooneyham. Will Stewart's doing all the camera work and the difficult things in the background. All we have to do is not make mistakes. And wow, have we been bad at our job so far. Horrible. Bob McCoy, 6-3 to three, victory over Mark McGrain. And Chrissy Grimmel. Nearing the conclusion of this one, just needs to get rid of the 16. And and when you're pa playing against Paul Murphy, sometimes crazy stuff happens. Right to the bull. Needs to pile them in there. Keep peppering the bull. And you can see all of the – man, that's so clear. The holes in the dartboard are about as clear as you can get there. Chrissy, three bulls needed. Falls into the 17. That's a bonus. Allows her to just kind of go at the bulls again and does so. And Chris. Chris. It's 4-2. to two. Chrissy Grimmel lost the first two legs. No, she didn't. It was 1-1. One to one. Uh, She was down 2-1 to one and now has made it 4-2. to two. And she gets the high ground, which is fine for Paula, who would start on the 19s anyway. From the field at Leonard Gates, six, Jesse Johnson, two. So now we have a Leonard Gates, Mike Maloney showdown coming up. On our stream will be where that one will be located. Another. Alex Bellman gets it done against Dustin Holt. And we do have a last leg decider going on on board 35, 5-5 five, five scoreline, Elliot Milk, Joey Mann. Any Remember. more updates? Remember, if they, if they go to last leg decider, it comes down to who won that opening bowl. Yep. You win the opening bull, you start leg one, and you start the last leg decider. 
Yeah, we did experience just a little bit of dirty air there for a second, folks. Sorry about that. Rick Henzie up 5-0 on Mike Carter. Woo. Rick's playing. Another very talented player that has been overlooked in this uh, tournament so far. Dameron Lawrence won. Kevin Luke has bested in the six. Six to one. Kevin Luke has now booked a match against Danny Baggish. Elliot Milk is 6-5 now winner over Joey Mann. So he took the last leg decider. Now he it will be an Alex Spellman Elliot Milk match out on the field. That's another big match up there. Bob McCoy, Rick Henzie is going to be another. I mean, top eight on the winner side is uh, just full of the most talented individuals. Speaking of talent, Chrissy Grimmel out in control, pushing, pushing, pushing this cricket leg out from underneath Paula. And Paula, unfortunately, is throwing a 2-6-7 and a must-win leg here. Nine's going to raise that average, though. She does that. But the Floridian still down three points and a whole lot of wedges. And Chrissy does not do very much at all there. Throwing a 4.20. 4.25 for Paula. And all she can do is stay on the 16s and close the 19s there on the last start. She's pulled herself kind of back into this a little bit. And again, a little chatty. It's not a good thing when Chrissy Grimmel starts talking to you while you play because that means that she's having a good time. Uh, you know, when happens when she is very a good quiet time. when she is uh, being pushed and when yeah. she's. We know what happens when she's having a good time. Yep. It's six mark, five mark, six yep. mark, seven, nine. Rocking the whole time while she does it and walking that third dart in, giving her fist bump to the left. And Paula unable to do anything with those three darts. Goes nine and then zero. And I've Chris never connected more to Paula Murphy than right there with a nine mark. Chrissy Gremmel punishing the 20. Two on the 16. Reminder, guys. Coming up next, Mike Maloney, Leonard Cates. Not a bad one. Top eight right now on the winner's side. Bob McCoy, Rick Kinsey, Mike Maloney versus Leonard Cates. Alex Spellman versus Elliot Milk. Danny Baggis versus Kevin Luke. Top My eight goodness. on the winner's side. <laughs> My goodness is the term. There's not been very much of a single upset so far. Like, if you pick the best eight, not the best eight, but, like, what everyone would look at for top eight of, like, rolling through, um, that's, that's about it. And Paula is still just, she's throwing a 3.75, and it just feels like they're struggling so much harder than that. Mm -hmm. If I throw a 3.75, I'm so excited. Speaking of excitement, Gremmel, happy, cheerful, throwing. One more. Speaking of the walk and the turn, there it is. 4.11 to a 3.75. Chrissy Gremmel moves on with the defeat of Paula Murphy. Paula is going to go to the loser side where she'll have some work to do. But uh, the Kraken. Cracks in that one. 5-2 to two victory. She'll take on the winner of Abby Spot, Liz Tynan. So it just does not get easier from this point on. Lisa Yee up 3-0 over Julie Wieger. And then Caitlin Myers, Shea Cole is your top eight for the women's. And you see the match that's coming up next. We're going to take a very short minute break. Hit that share button now because uh, coming up next, Mike Maloney, Leonard Gates. Don't go anywhere.
Well, well, well. I guess you'll just have to deal with me for a little bit while these guys grab a quick drink. Maybe use the facilities before getting back underway. Leonard Gates takes on Mike Maloney right here, right now. This is your Booyah Cup winner side. Top eight, ladies and gentlemen. Should be an exciting match. There's a big one from uh, from Leonard who starts off with a nice 180. Mr. Will Stewart in the, on the chat. Yeah, I figured I'd jump on the mic for a second while uh, you guys got a beverage or whatnot, Ooh. some water. Uh, you've been on the mic for quite some time now, so love it. I'm uh, just talking to Elliot Milk. He's talking about the Joy Man match. Joey was leading that leg, missed a bull to win, and then Milk steals it for a 6-5 win. Wow. It was that close. That and Milk, Milk said it was crazy. He's a crazy match. That's unreal. That's that coming from unreal. the player in the match. Right. <laughs> Quick little uh, apologies, folks. We've been kind of looks like people have been suffering some issues on Facebook here and there with the choppy feed. We've had a couple, you know, dirty air moments. Uh, there is a wedding going on in the hall next to us, but we've kind of shut off the guest Wi-Fi and whatnot. Help us out. So uh, if you're struggling, go over to YouTube. It seems to be a, a cleaner feed. Kind of experienced some of those issues in the past, but who knows? You know, we're battling. We're seeing. We're kind of doing some investigative work. See where we can. Potentially uh, ramp things up, but for right now, we're going. Not happy with that second dart. Yeah. Only leaves 66. He's tripped 10 for 36. Well, he knows he's put himself out of this leg because with 58 remaining, Leonard Gates is most of the time going to come up here and hit this in a soft tip match. Maybe steel tip's a little bit rougher, a little bit tougher to do, but 18, double top. Yeah, I told you. Just simple, easy does it. Why not? One nil advantage for Gates. The soldier. I got to tell you, tell you something, though. The man gets down. The man can boogie. There's no doubt about that. We saw a little uh, of that action at Shoot for the Moon. Well, let's be honest. Every time I see Leonard, he's grooving or doing something in the camera. Speaking of doing something, Monster 7 to start this leg. Indeed, but Maloney's going to answer with a big 9 here. Boom. Big stuff for Mike Maloney. You called it. I, I think that the 0-1 advantages will be on Gates' side, but I really think I'm going to give the cricket to, to That's gutsy, especially with the way that Gates plays cricket. It just seems like it's, it's an easy game for him compared to I, most. I, I'm just feeling Maloney on this one. Well, he's looking for a little revenge from last night's uh, loss to... Oh, gutsy move for the 20. Scotty Burnett sending us a super chat on YouTube. Appreciate that, sir. Hope you're doing well. Zimbabwe tuning in. Wow. Love that. Just five mark there from Maloney. And is this a door opener that Gates can walk through? It looks like he's just going to go ahead and close out the 17s here. Moves to the 16s. Wow, okay. Going I for see the, him going for the extra wedge. Well, yeah. the, reason, the reason why is he's putting the three wedge, wedge advantage and yeah. putting, putting Mike in a spot there, which you can't really blame him for doing that one. Let's be honest. It, it is a smart strategic move because you're taking you're, – you're forcing your opponent to have more darts than he actually has. Virginia Higgins joining us from the comfort of, well, outside in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I told her she's my official uh, uh, moderator today for the comments. So, get after it, Virginia. <laughs> Just looking to fill up the 17s and exactly what he does. But Another big nine for Maloney. Gates still in control. Yeah, but we'll see what happens here, yeah, because he can – put this right in his in his hand with just even a single 20 or he'll go down to close there and that's a smart move and he grabs a 16 yep in the turn another seven because because even if he closed there a single 20 puts him ahead 7.4 plays 7.0 six rounds in 
Nuts. Nuts. Expect anything else, folks? God is saying, by jumping numbers, I am dictating what I want you to throw. Exactly. It's the same mindset Steve Brown used to tell me is the best start you can have in cricket is trip 20, trip 20, double bull, because it just puts your opponent in a, in a mindset of, oh, no. And that's the truth. I mean, anytime you can start off like that, it's just like, oh, what just happened? Then again, you see Gates start off with a white horse occasionally, and that can go the same way. But we'll see. Can he clean up this leg to make it 2-0, or will Mike make a stand? It's definitely looking looking Gates' favor. 6.86, and he's losing the leg. Down three houses. Think about that. That's Only hope is the bull here. But he's going to go ahead and try to close first. You, should, you need to. You got to do something there. But here we go. Gates for the win here in this leg for 2 0. Double single. And it's a 6 3 5, Ryan. Takes down a 6 3 8. Incredible. Incredible. There is a big nine open. Mike Maloney. Sorry about that. I got caught in the loophole of passing Sean the mic, and he's taking care of some stuff. So we're good. No, you're, no, you're fine. You're fine. So totally missed the switch there. My, my apologies. That's all right. Maloney, nine to start. Gates back seven. Back to Maloney. And he's just going to start off with a doozy again. Look at him go. Nine plays nine on this one. I'll say uh, a reference from Sean. Darts isn't this easy. They just make it look like it. Most of the time, we need six darts to throw like this. I think I could finger punch as good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's going to take for me to throw back-to-back -back nines like that. Oh, my Lord. He's not done. Nine start, nine back, seven on after nine darts. Love it. Forcing Gates already to the bull. Look at how soon he's going. But here's the thing that Gates feels. He he feels like he can hit that double so often that there's no point in going for the trip 16 or trip 15 because two less points, five less points in his mind. Maloney's not going to waste his time to get rid of both those two. And Jeez. there is the coffin shot. <laughs> wow. Trip 16, trip 15, double bull. One dart away from taking the match. That is a coffin shot. Unbelievable stuff here for Maloney in this leg. Throwing an 8 to 5, just needing a single bull. And he'll go 9, 9, 7, 8, and wrap it up here. Watch. One to, one to point, one to close. Doesn't get much better than that. If you just seen what I've seen, and the, it, 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 it sit on the screen, wow. Wow. 7.93 takes out 5.9. Two to one. Leonard Gates into the 01. Split ball 501. All right. Two to one lead here. Leonard Gates over Mike Maloney, but Maloney, 7.93. That is, I'm yeah. just going to say, yeah. most likely. The best leg we're going to see all weekend long of cricket. I'm sure there'll maybe one or two that I said can be best. Most likely. Most likely, but holy cow! That's gross. Grossly good. It's it's just ridiculous. Uh, absolutely craziness going on in this match, and I'm going to be honest with you. It was such a good sign for Mike Maloney to see him throw that seven nine three in that leg because, in his mind, in leg number two, he threw well enough to to win that leg. He, th he was above a seven for the majority of it. The whole time Leonard was doing the exact same thing. And in Mike's mind, usually, the best players play the best against him. And that's his mindset going into it. For, so for him to just raise his, he's like, fine, then I'll throw a 7-9-3 so you can't beat me. Um, man, Leonard Gates. Boom. 
boom goes the 180. You know, a 180. Uh, that's my goodness, a 180. A 51.11. He is on an 11 darter. And uh, when Leonard's going first, not much Mike can do about an 11 darter potential. So three to one lead. Mike down one break of throw. Nine for 32. This is a little 11 darter from Leonard Gates. Ah, easy peasy, right? He does it in soft tip. He does it in steel tip. If you are joining us, make that share. Make that like. Watch us. Get some popcorn. Get some beverages. Put it up on the big screen. you got a great match in front of you. See the win more raised Aki. That we're utilizing this weekend in the streaming board is Mike Maloney. Ooh, unlucky 135. That, that, that third dart hit the end of the second dart, kick to the left. Tough kick. And Leonard does not experience that does kick. Does not have the kick. That's a 180 from Soldier. And Mike firing right back. Hits one of his own. Back-to-back -back 180s between these two. This is the highest quality that you're going to see of darts being played in North America right now. They're throwing absolute gas at each other. I mean, there's a major fire. They keep throwing fuel on it and keep this thing burning hotter and hotter. Yes, I took what you said. You literally just I, said and it. And I did it but, on purpose. But you said it in a different way, and I, I did appreciate do it in a different that. Way. Trip 10. Sets himself up. Uh, you know what's nice? An 11 darter. You another, know what's nicer? Another 11 darter. A 10 darter. Mike Maloney's on that right now. Big 180 right here, needed. And probably not going to matter, but he did it anyway. They're both a 51-1-1, a 51-6-7 a in this leg. Leonard is on an 11 again, Mike on a 10. I don't know what else you could possibly want besides a double-double finish from Mike Maloney, as long as he hits it. Oh, no, my goodness gracious, Mike Maloney. Wow. Just needed 36, ends up leaving Brutal. himself 14. Brutal. Gates 9 for 32. I don't know how much more important a moment can be, but I have a feeling that's the match. Not okay. the leg, that's the match. So Leonard Gates was at 221, and your yep. opponent's at 3 at 36. He was not out of it, guys. He just didn't go up and chuck it. He smashed the 180. That I thought right. was meaningless. We, we could have said it was meaningless. But Maloney missed, and Gates took the leg. You're never out of it. Unexpected. Four to one lead now for Leonard Gates, the defending champion. Uh, just letting everybody know, hey, I'm still here. Don't forget about me. Alex phone up one nothing on Elliot Milk, Danny Baggish, and Kevin Luke. Still waiting to get going. Mike Maloney, of course, this one asks what's going on. And Rick Henzie's up one nothing on Bob McCoy. On our ladies' side, Abby Spot has just bested Liz Tynan. Wow. Five to one. This was up one nothing. Abby ran off five plays in a row there. To move into a, a, a state with Chrissy Grimmel in a, in a top four winner side. Lisa Yee has bested Julie Weger five to zero. Wow. Shea Cole currently up one to nothing on Caitlin Mars. Or, excuse me, Caitlin Myers. I almost said Carolyn Mars. I uh, now I get weird. I just thought you were trying to uh, throw in a weird accent there. No, no, I was, I was. Could have gotten away with it that time for I me. I called a lot of Carolyn stuff. Straight to the 16s is Maloney down quite a bit. Yeah, he's dictated to go straight to the 16s. The only leg that Mike Maloney has won, he threw a seven nine three. Other than that. Leonard Gates has uh, been flawless. And I don't care who you are, even if you're Mike Maloney, you can't throw a 7-9-3 every leg that you're playing in cricket, especially because half of them are 0-1. It's incredible. Six, six shooting a 6-5, and you're down three houses again. Yep. You're not. There's no shot for Mike Maloney right now in this leg unless something crazy happens from, from Leonard Gates. And he's throwing a 6 well, that's not something crazy in a bad way. That's Boom goes the dynamite from uh, There's Leonard another Gates. big nine waiting for the old dynamite call. The Texan. 
Yeah, and yep. Mike, we see what you see. It's about to be five to one. Gates over Maloney. Weirder things have happened, especially with alternate start. But uh, there's going to be a lot of work left to be done for Mike Maloney to be able to do that. Gates just playing flawless right now. 6.71 there. Wow. And right now, that's not even his ceiling for what he could be averaging. No. And that's scary. That is a commanding 5-1 to one lead. He is commanding every single dart that he's throwing. And not even Hey Dudes are helping out Mike Maloney right now. That wow. is a tough start. That is a real tough start. Unfortunately, that is a wide open door. It's too early to say that that's it, but it is not ideal. You just gave up the, the alternate start format. Mm -hmm. And you're in a must-win situation. You, cannot, you can't drop a single leg. You almost can't miss from here if you're Mike Maloney. Nope. Cannot. And he does it there. Boom goes the dynamite from Hulk Smash. Smashes in a nine. Leonard Gates doing Gates things on that 20. He just yawns in a nine of his own. Back to back. And right now, Michael Lynch just got to be like, uh, I don't. What? I, I, I see a nine. Know. I raise yeah. you a nine. Jeez. Gets the Maloney double. Takes away the high ground. Well, pushes Gates into the decision time. 17s or 18s? Go to the 17s. Gee, Mike, what is okay? Well, they haven't missed a dart in four four uh, rounds, four turns. So I'm just not going to say anything and just let you guys watch darts. I, I, I'm, I, I'm. Yep, that's how I feel. I, that's all you have to say. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. I, I'm just gonna, I'm sitting here in this chair, folks. That's all there is to it, it. It's amazing how things still shock us from time to time. This is uh, – it, it's not shocking that Leonard's doing this, but it's just how easy both of these players make this game look. It's It's got to be the format. It's got to be the atmosphere. I mean, it's, it's, it is a professional field out yep. there. We are seeing losing 6.0 darts. 6.0 is not winning a leg no, no. right now. It's taking a 7 to be competitive. Just able. He's just doing whatever he wants to do right now on a dartboard. Mike with the perfect response. <laughs> I throw this way in my dreams yeah. all night. <laughs> when I dream, I don't even dream of a 6-7-5. That's how good that was. 6-1 to one victory, Leonard Gates over Mike Maloney. I mean, at the end of the day, Mike gave away one leg, but uh, other than that, Leonard Gates earned easily every one of those legs that he won that one. I, 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 Crazy. I mean, you guys seen it. Yep. I called it. Sean called it. Will watched it. Will <laughs> switched with it. Wow. I'm just going to use the term wow. 2024 Booyah Cup finale. Uh, that was a round three match. So there's still a lot left in this thing. A lot of great darts still coming your way. But we're going to take a very short break. When we come back, we're going to have a couple of matches. One of the ladies' and one of the men's matches. Uh, right after this. Don't go anywhere.
it's Women's History Month. A to Z Darts is celebrating by encouraging you to show your love for the ladies in our industry. We've dedicated a page on our website called Women in Darts, where you can browse all of our female signature darts and flights. If you don't see your favorite player, simply check with your local supplier. And don't forget to thank your female bar owners, league organizers, or the women that are employed with the manufacturers in darts. If you love our company, we're always proud to share that we have a strong female leadership and perspective here. We're led by a female CEO and general manager we have women leading our online sales, wholesale, and warehouse departments. I myself act as the creative director for all of our brands, A to Z Darts, Magic Wear, and USA Darts Production, where we live stream some of the best female talent in the world. There are so many women in darts that make our world go round, and we hope you take the time all year long to show them your appreciation. Thanks for watching. He's the greatest golfing force on the planet. All right, it looks like we had a little jumping around going on there. So I'm going to do some investigative work in the background while these guys uh, get ready to get underway. do apologize for that. Uh, it's looking more and more likely that we may have to just go to a portable Wi-Fi option here soon, which expensive if you know that one. But, uh, yeah, these guys will get underway here in a moment. It looks like that 30 years gone. <laughs> we'll knock on wood once again. But Kevin Luke, Danny Baggish, exciting matchup coming up here on board number 39. Looks like we'll get underway very quickly. Travis asking for a link to the brackets again. I will do that for you in just a moment. Uh, let me get squared away here, and we shall do that. Big shout-out to Sean Green, Ryan Mooneyham for uh, – the great job this weekend on the uh, commentary duties, helping me out to allow myself to do some production, so that is always nice. Well, if you've had the seat that I've seen, or I've had, folks, you have seen a doozy. Yeah, that last match was incredible. As uh, Just kind of speak with Maloney afterwards, he was like, that, that was one that I've, I haven't seen Gates do in a little while, just downright slobber. Slobber knocker me, and <laughs> that's the truth, brother. That was a good one. And and granted, I mean, here's the thing. Mike played 
damn good in that leg. He's carrying a six seven and is out in three houses. It's not like he was out of the le- or out of the match at all. He was he played really really good. Just Gates played better. And yeah, there is a truth to that. Um, we had it mentioned in the chat. Maloney's been dealing with some stuff this weekend, this week, so keep that in mind. You know, very difficult for him to keep his mind in the right area or where it should be for a match. Um, so we just want to mention that, you know, thoughts and prayers to Maloney and his family. Um, but he's got boy, he can come back. Here, here we go. Baggish versus FKL Kevin Luke. We got ourselves another doozy. As these guys get settled in their legs, I'm going to give you a report from the field. Rick Kinsey, four right now over Bob McCoy with one. Wow. Still moving forward in the top eight of the winner side. Alex Spellman, four. Elliot Milk, one. Uh, of course, we've already seen the Maloney Baggish match, or the Mal Maloney Gates match. Now we're watching the Luke Baggish match. So that's your winner side of the bracket. This is a double elimination. But we're only going to report the winners. Apologize for that one, folks. Give you an update on the women's uh, ladies side on the winner's side. Shea Cole four, Caitlin Myers one. So right now we've got on hold Chrissy Grimble and Abby Spot. They will play, and then we got Lisa Yee will take on the winner of the Caitlin Myers Shea Cole match. So that's your winner's side for both the men's and women's as we move forward in this tournament. Baggish misses the the check there. Kevin will get a look at this one seventy. Got to go. It's got to go, Ryan. He's going to get a look, Ryan. Oh, just outside of that black spot on the dartboard. That was a great shot. You can't tell me that doesn't get your heart a pumping. But just like that, Danny Baggins gets to look at double 10, and most of the time he's going to hit it. He does it in one. One nil lead for Danny Baggins. You see that? Woo. Yeah, Oof. a little sigh of relief there, especially with uh, with that. Uh, yeah, look at him. He's, he's <laughs> trying to catch it, trying to catch it. All righty, guys. Let me grab that uh, those links for you. Seven on the start for Mr. Luke. Remember this alternating start. Baggish won the court. He started leg one. He will actually, if we go to a uh, last leg decider, last leg decider, he will start the final leg because it's all decided on the first court. All right. Look just outside of the 19s twice. Not going to be happy. Going to return to the 20 for more points. Oh, he stays still. I don't know if I'd want to stay still against a, a Danny Baggish, my friend. All righty, in the chat are both your women's and men's Booyah Cup links. You can check out those brackets and get real-time updates on score lines. So there you go, folks, for those that are wondering where the brackets are at. This one's ran on Tournament King instead of uh, CompuSport, but it does allow that to uh, happen with the score lines and stuff. So that is nice. Baggish. Close out the 18s. Back to the 17s. Great shot from Big, Kevin. big turn from Kevin Luke. That's a big nine mark. Pushes Baggish into the 16s and 15s. Luke does hold the high ground and the point lead currently. Of course, uh... Kevin of Sunnyside, Washington, making a good trek to get here. For Danny, Winter Haven, Florida, good trek as well. Of course, I had to make a good trek to pick him up from Chicago. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate that. No. I kind of ignored the phone call. I was driving <laughs> by the airport in Chicago, got all the way here. And Will's like, why didn't you pick up Danny? I don't know. Going into uh, the matches today, 5.63 average on cricket for Danny. 37.80 uh, in the 01 rankings. For Kevin, it was 5.49 and then a 37.44. Took a. Th Baggish hammering the 16s. Needs to pile them in. 
to work on this internet. Apologies, folks, for the uh, difficulties if you're experiencing them. We'll do some investigative work and figure it out. Kevin Luke is not showing any difficulties himself. Back to Mac 9 marks. I think I figured this out. It's Danny. It's got to be. You know? Uh, every time he's on stream, enough people don't want to watch it that they crash our stream. And honestly, that's a fair statement and a fair point from anyone else that, that's trying to do that. However, for for his family and all of his loved ones, uh, let's make sure that, that, that they are able to watch him play. You heard it best from Mr. Green, Sean Green. Hey, what's up, buddy? How are you doing? How was your break? Uh, uh, well, longer than I expected. Um, got a great story from Wisconsinite Mr. Matt Graff on his uh, adventures uh, in Sturdivant, Wisconsin last night. Okay. Speaking of ventures, there goes Kevin Luke to close down everything but the 15th. <laughs> Okay, listen, Nick DeShera, <laughs> with your speaking of every time to transfer into a new thing. I do it just because I love you. <laughs> oh, Danny Baggish needs another one for the point lead, but he'll take three because he's an overachiever. 6.22 in this leg, which is a bad leg for him right now, and that is saying a lot. Kevin Luke. Surprised he doesn't take out Danny's bailout plan. But he does get the point lead, which forces Danny to stay on the 15s for a little while. Maybe all the while. And the loser side of the bracket going on currently. How about that? JC Martinez, uh, Monday, was unbeatable by Sugar Shane Johnson. Um, and he is out of this tournament in the first round. Or in the, in the first wave. And some notables still left in the field there on the loser side. Shane Johnson, Demry Lawrence, Tyler Henze, Lucas Pritzel, uh, Chris Watson, Joey Mann, Dustin Holt still alive, Jesse Johnson, Cody Brunello, Mike Carter, Garrett Rakowski, and Mike Maloney. So those players are still alive, battling their way through the back side of the tournament as we work our way through the front side. Kevin Luke is just destroying these bulls right now just to stay, I mean – he is drowning with his head just barely above water, but right now he's able to uh, doggy paddle in front a little bit. Up 52 points. So Danny's trying to decide if it's worth it to go bowl here, if it's worth it to go point one more time. 45 gives him at least a bowl. But that's that means he has to hit the triple in order to do that. A single does nothing. And... If I know Danny, he's not going to try and – he's not going to throw the wasted dart. Yeah. So it goes bull. It ensures something coming out of it. Mm -hmm. was the higher of the two-point battle. And also, Kevin would have had to hit bull double bull to get a look at the win. He does fall into a 15, so the winning shot does become easier for him if he gets the opportunity, but Danny only needs two bulls, so this is over. First dart, fist pump, 6.18. And I'm telling you right now, uh, Danny's body language, Danny's uh, demeanor when he's not playing, he is having the time of his life. He is re loose, relaxed, and just focused. Um, it might be the most focused I've seen out of him since uh, – CDC a couple years ago when he went on a tear when he needed to do. One thing I've always wa liked about watching Danny play is I like how his elbow and arm straight, mm -hmm. straight delivery. I actually, when I'm practicing and stuff like that, if I notice I'm starting to chicken wing a little bit, I actually reference back to how I notice that Baggish will pull his elbow in, kind of lock it before he delivers straight ahead. So I reference back to him and thinking, well... You know, I can do that, or I need I need to do what Danny's doing to keep that chicken wing from happening. And just a three mark there from Danny Baggish. And that's a gift for most people. 
76 plays 100. 20s and 19s. Taking out the high ground. Yep. Good Absolutely. call on that one, sir. Good call on that one. Well, the great camera work and the great cameras themselves allow us the opportunity to see their eyes a little bit better than than maybe the average live stream that we are used to, to watching and being a part of. USA Darts is anything but average. No, no, I don't. I'm lucky enough to get to sit alongside of you and call these excellent matches and these excellent RAND tournaments. I feel the same way. You are lucky to sit next to me. I am. And I am lucky to sit next to you as well. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I, I did carry you in your luggage. Went and got something to drink. Went and got your breakfast this morning. Made sure that you couldn't sleep with my snoring. You did none of those things except for the snoring. <laughs> and I want to be perfectly clear in the fact that... Uh, I don't appreciate your lying. <laughs> Danny Baggish continuing to just be on an absolute tear. Oh, you got to call that one. That's a white horse for Danny Baggish. Boom goes there. Dynamite. Man, that's a huge shot. That's a timing shot right there. And Kevin just, Kevin just getting a lot of practice on the Bulls, and he is not missing them very often, if ever. I think he's missed one bull. I'm telling you, I think that's the most, uh, speaking to Mike Maloney quickly after his, uh, well, I guess we can call it a match against Leonard Gates, but Leonard made it less of one. Um, and that was probably the most in spirits I've seen Mike Maloney in a loss, especially a decimating loss like that. He was like, okay, well, that happens. Well, you know, he made the, you know, he had a fairly good record against him coming into today, and he kind of knew yep. that his time was due. But the display was incredible. He was hoping it wasn't today. Yeah, nobody wants it to ever happen, but that was incredible. Danny would, is throwing a, he threw a, what he would say, a garbage 5-6-5 five, five there. Um, but won't matter to him at all. He wins, and we go back to 0-1. Still yet to see a 9-darter. I still feel like we're going to today. It might not be on stream, but there's definitely going to be nine darters in the venue somewhere. At least one. It's too good of a talent. And too good of a format. Count them on up. One, two, three, Danny Baggish. And that's how many legs up he is on Kevin Luke. Race to six, best of 11 here at the Booyah Cup. This is the third Booyah Cup. It gets better every year. And uh, I don't know how much better it's, it can get without just um, being the greatest soft tip dart tournament in the world. I mean, it's... I know that's what Jeremy wants it to be. Yeah, the tour I mean, and everything that he has announced earlier. There will be a Booyah Cup tour. I, I mean, it's, it's the tour making the, the qualifiers more uh, dynamic, the field more dynamic. I mean, it's just sky's the limit. But Absolutely. the growth that he's put into it in three years, from where I first sat the first time in the first Booyah Cup to where we're setting today, is it's leaps and bounds. It's yeah. incredible. I, the reason why darts is growing so much right now, um, first of all around the world, but also in the U.S., as Danny Baggis gets another 180 is there are a lot of people that are in the dark community that um, are not complacent with where they're at, uh, either by skill level or by um, what they do in the dark community. As Kevin Luke matches it, but Danny, 98 left, first to look at the finish. It might be a double-double. Double 19. And he Ooh. can't take it out now, and he almost did a no-no. So he's going to step back, regroup. He knows better than that, and that's why he is shaking his head a little bit. And he's not happy or off, that is, on the double 19 for him. That's like yeah, four holes that, up. Yeah, that, that one surprised me. I mean, yeah. if he's going to miss miss on the wire, that's one thing, but he was a little high. 16 for tops. Luke checks the leg. Cool. Thank you. A lot of people joining us in the chat and all around the world. Guys, hit that like button. Hit that share button. 
We have our UK followers that we have gained significant following of recently, and we cannot appreciate you guys tuning in with us as well. Um, it honestly means a lot to to the American dark community to to know that that you guys are are appreciating the product that we're putting out there, and that you're appreciating what the players are putting out there as well. As Kevin Luke starts off with a 180. Can't be more perfect than that. Stole the last leg from Danny Baggish on a missed double 19. And is that going to be the page turner in this one? I, I mean, definitely the last leg, Kevin, and then that 180 start here. Back at ton plus here, ton 40 or better. Really puts the pressure on Danny going first. Kevin right back into the treble. He's six perfect into it. We're on a nine. And Danny can only put pressure on and hope that he gets it out in 12. Isn't that incredible? You start and you're, you're throwing ton pluses and you're watching your opponent go with Jeez. a nine. And there's another. That's the third 180 in this leg between these two players. Kevin Luke. Okay, now 141 left. Ask me just, the question later. 141 <laughs> left. <laughs> you got to take oh. it. Oh. Boo. All I right, now ask me the question. I was going to say, your opponent's on 96, and you have 141 on a 9. You have to hit it. Absolutely you do, especially when that opponent's Danny Baggish. Double-double? Uh, yep. Double. Miss. And that's two missed doubles from Danny Baggish. Kevin Luke took advantage of the first miss. Any mistake that Danny makes, which is a rarity, you have to punish completely. And the ultimate way to do that is by uh, hitting a treble here and then uh, taking out double 12. Triple 18? Ideally. No. Missed up. Hey, they're, uh, they're throwing the same average, I can tell. And if I didn't have the numbers down there, guess what? I would still be able to tell. Tops for Danny Baggish. And you want to talk about a gift with how well they've played 01. This is for a 13 darter, now 14. He'll take 15 if he needs to. Doesn't want to do any more than that, though. He doesn't, and uh, that'll settle him a little bit. 3-2 to two versus 4-1 to one is a huge difference Big in the race difference. of six. Big difference. 4-1 to one Danny Baggish on Kevin Luke. It That was a lot of missed doubles, especially for soft tip and especially for Danny Baggish. But at the end of the day, all that matters is he gets it. He hits one of them. Exactly. And the cricket, Luke will start. And he switches down to the 19s on dart three, as you see uh, the crowd out there. And, uh, yes, they can see that they are on uh, camera when they are. I love how quickly you switched off of it before they could even <laughs> react even. It was the best 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 case scenario. I was waiting for him to make them react without any actual reason for it. It was funny. Kevin Luke being very aggressive, taking out the 19s, even with the high ground that he has. Danny would love nothing more than, well, now a seven mark on the 18s. Oh, yeah, seventeen. I, and I yeah, like that move a little I do bit. Too. I do really, too. I agree with that, Danny. Brad Scott, you're not wrong. Uh, Taco Truck was for the win. And I apologi apologize earlier for not being here uh, on time. I had a Pepsi uh, puncture in my book bag. So I had to uh, take care of a, a sticky situation, so to speak, by ignoring it completely and just getting rid of the, the trash can. By the way, there is not a trash can within 100 feet of this room. I need that to be known, especially when there is a uh, Pepsi can leaking all over my hands. Just so you know. Is in that room? Perfection. Bag is doing whatever he can just to give himself options and make Kevin hit more than three. Kevin back to that trip 20, adding more points. 
Now we'll take a look at the yeah, double. Yeah, I like that. And Danny's like, huh. Wasn't expecting that. Now what do I do? But, and that's what everyone should do. Be analytical before you step onto the line. He knows exactly where all three darts are going, if, you, if he misses one or not. And that double bowl from Kevin Luke changed everything for Danny's strategy. Mm -hmm. Made him stay on the 16s. Yep. Luke closed the bowl here. Ideally, he would have won it right there. Uh, but he does close the bowl yep. on dart three. Eighty-one points is the lead for Luke. That means at least two triples for the sixteens on for Danny. Maybe kicking himself now that he switched to the fifteens on on dart two, but Another seven. I think he liked the open bed mm -hmm. idea. And Kevin Luke. No matter what, takes out the leg, and it is four to two now. Baggish still in the lead and in control over Kevin Luke in this alternate start. That was just a hold a throw. And Danny is okay with Kevin Luke holding his throw the rest of the way because uh, it'll be over with before Kevin can get six off of there. Report from the field, Rick Kinsey five, Bob McCoy four. Winner, of course, plays Leonard Gates, and then... Alex Spellman in the top four side after he defeats Elliot Milk six to one, and boom goes the dynamite there for Danny Baggish. Spellman waiting on the winner of this one. Uh, so let me be perfectly clear: Alex Spellman, Danny Baggish is a top four match, and Leonard Gates versus either Rick Henze or Bob McCoy is the other top four. Um, this gets better. And that's crazy. As Danny Baggis stays perfect with another nine back to back. That one, a bit of a, a horse of a different color. As he hits a white horse. Yeah, we get to spring forward tonight, too, so an extra hour of sleep missed for us. It's exciting times for this. So don't go to bed because you didn't get to sleep till four this morning, and that'll be five. And by that point, I might as well stay awake. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, guys, I'm going to look like a hobo tomorrow <laughs> in Lavinia, and it will be because I um, will have been up the entire time, especially with all the snoring that's going to be going on around me. Maybe I'll sleep in the bathtub. And you guys, by the way. I snore, too, uh, to the point where my wife complains about it uh, immensely and refuses to sleep in the same room as me often. She might hate me. That might be the just the fallback on it. But right now, that's the excuse. And, uh, yeah. So I also snore. I just let you guys feel like you're the problem. But it's really me. It's not you, it's me. 7.0 right now for Danny Baggish. 6.6 .6 to take a 5-2 to two lead. Defeats the 6.25 that, again, just wasn't touching this leg. It, and that's so gross. It's it's crazy that I was, I was just sitting here looking at those score lines and look at those averages, thinking, man, I'm shooting. I'm Kevin Luke shooting 6-plus, and I am lost that leg. It's just ridiculous, the standard. And then now. Perfect start again. Luke back on 180. That's how you have to start with the throw in 01. Danny trying to match it. I don't know if you noticed his commentary there, but he went, ooh. So Kevin now can go out in 12 if he needs to. But he would, he would love and we all would love to see a 9, and he's on it again. Second time in this match that he is 6 for 6. A little sigh and a chuckle from Baggish. He lines it back up. We were here before. And Danny uh, is going to clear the room here for Kevin Luke to, to get a look at this nine. And again, he only goes six into it, and Danny, again, is very upset. 
I love that look on the 121. Trip, or bowls, or 25 to leave. The trip 20 to the double 18. <laughs> look back for giving Daddy a hard time. He's booing. He's booing himself because the room didn't. And I felt bad when I booed on stream earlier. And I guess he actually wanted that to happen. Now you know. All right, 36 for a 10 darter. Gets it done in 11. Good enough. But he still needs to win three legs straight from this point to take down the gambler. So Danny feels really good about his positioning right now in this match. Adjust after the first start. That was just more unlucky than anything. One, three, five start. Two trouble visits will work every time at this point, unless Kevin goes perfect again, which he does. He just needs to stop missing dart number seven, I and then say, he's going to be six fine. Six perfect darts each time, and then dart seven. Nope. The fact that he is hitting it so often to start off and to stay. It, Danny follows with another one, but right now this is in Kevin's hand if he hits another 180. Jeez. He's not going to do this again, is he? Of course he is. Don't worry, Danny. He'll miss dart number seven at this point. <laughs> I mean, he's only been on a nine now the yeah, third time. When Danny's laughing at it because of how ridiculous this is, uh, you know something's weird because he's seen it all. We're good. And Danny is going to set himself up just in case Kevin cannot hit the nine this time. But for the third try, and third time's a charm, typically. Right? No. No, he went 19. At least he went a different direction. <laughs> so Danny for the match. It, it's crazy. Kevin has had to throw nine darters to win the O1 one legs, and he's gotten close. 6-10 wire, tops for the match. And he gets it done. Danny Bag is a 45.55, 11 darter. Gives, <coughs> gives it some at the end of the day. And Kevin Luke, uh, we won't see that again, where the same player has three chances at the nine darter going six perfect. And he only won one of the three legs. And he never hit dart number seven. Mm -hmm. And he got worse as, as it went on on his opportunities there. Guys, we're going to take a short break, as you can see there at the end of that match. Before we do that, though, Rick Henzie, Leonard Gates, will, and then Alex Bellman, Danny Baggs is your top four on the winner's side. Still a lot left to go on the loser's side of the bracket, but there's that. And then, of course, Christy Grimmel, Abby Spot, Lisa Yee, Shea Cole. And it looks like it's going to be Lisa Yee, Shea Cole heading to the streaming board next. So that match will be coming up right after this break. Don't go anywhere.
Well, well, well. <laughs> I knew I had to do it, Why? Sean. Why? Because Why? you love it so much. Everyone, everyone, everyone. William Stewart, Sean Green here. I had to give him three wells because he always calls me out for the well opener. It's both you and Nick. <laughs> Nick does it every time he starts off an interview. Well, welcome back to the CSC Counter Series. I love it. I absolutely love it. As we'll get our uh, deal rearranged if my camera works. There we go. I don't know. I thought that that was perfect for where you had it originally. Yeah, you know, Lisa, when she's not throwing, why not? (laughs) Oh, man. Well, here we go. First off, shout out to Brandon Lee. Call me out for putting my jacket on backwards. I knew that was going to happen. Literally talked to someone out there and was like, guaranteed I'm going to get called out here in a second. Sure enough. You were right. There you go. Do something dumb, you're bound to get called out. Well, what do you think, Sean? This is going to be a fantastic women's matchup. Lisa Yee taking on Shay Cole. Complete barn burner here, I think. Yeah, 100%. Uh, one of the players that I think gets overlooked all of the time, often, is Shay Cole. Yes. Uh, Myrtle Beach, now. South Carolina. She's th- her cricket average is a 4.26. That's second to only Chrissy Grimmel. Her 01 average is a 34.04, second only to Chrissy Grimm. Yep. She's definitely a talented individual. I mean, she made a run at uh, one of the events at Las Vegas Open. Yep. We saw that, that steel tip side. Um, but I don't know. I, uh, she'll call me out on this one because I know that she kind of listens back every once in a while. Maybe consistency has been her, been her misfortune of late. Well, speaking of consistency, <laughs> Lisa E gets herself a hat trick. I just want to make sure that Mooney's here in spe- spirit today. <laughs> like if he's not on the call for this one. Well, he's definitely uh, next to us, next door. So let's go and look at the tail of the tape here on the ladies' side of the bracket and see where these ladies have gotten to this point. Uh, Lisa, you started off against Olivia Terry and defeated OT 5-3 to three before defeating last night's qualifier, Julie Wieger, 5-0. You know, wow. That's shellacking to get to this point. And for Shay Cole... She defeated Meredith McGee, uh, five to two, and then Caitlin Myers, five to two. It, let's be honest, that that Julie Weger match, that's a tough, tough lady to come out on top like that, especially over. like that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And we we spoke about Shay Cole making a run at Las Vegas Open. We have to mention Lisa Yee, who made a run as well. Uh, semifinals berth for her, losing out to Fallon Shearing. Who? In that, uh, just some lady, Queen of the Palace. Maybe oh. you've heard of her, maybe not. Be the male. Said, they said Phelan Chirac. Oh, oh, yeah, Chirac. That's right. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> and Ryan quit. All right. <laughs> wait. We apologize wait, for that. Wait. Oh, he's back. Detta Hedman? <laughs> uh, 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 kid, listen, kid, he kid. did better at that than, than the other one. Um, so, <laughs> Lisa Yee, 96 left. Trouble for double. It is master out. Trouble 17 needed. She will return, with, but she wants to leave this with a good number. Does so, leave tops. I really love that move. As Ruben Herrera, California specialty since it's 45 stars. Love it. Ruben said he's going to be attending next year. Going to be starting to qualify, give it a run. Probably see him at NDA, I'm assuming. Team Dart. Our favorite Windsor's in the chat saying, let's go, Shea Cole. That'd be Reagan, not Kenny. Provide you some links here in the chat once again for those that are just tuning in or want to kind of keep forth. Maybe you've just asked me for links 17 times. I don't know. I'm just going to keep providing it for you. It won't hurt. No, no. But you can also see, like, updated how the matches are going, where they are overall. There's still a lot of loser side going on. Now, Lisa went outside on both those darts. Again, she'll be back. Shea back on 232. I believe this this might be the worst leg of darts Shea's thrown, I don't know, in a month, month or two. Again, her average coming into this from the Booyah Cup qualifiers, a 34.04. That's so good. Grossly good. She leaves the big fish. But Lisa Yee on 30. Now, master out. 30 is not as devastating of a number 
uh, to get miss inside on because then you can go trip five. And a lot of players forget that they do have that option if they happen to miss on the other side. Shit, you see what Ronnie did there. Ronnie went up to Shay and said, hey, 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 hey. She's yep. she's got a tip or something that's going that's malfunctioned. She's gonna need a second, so uh, she went up there and paused the board for. Her. Should I make up a whole story about how this is just anticipation and t anticipation kills and <laughs> uh, she's slow playing on purpose? I wouldn't do that to to Lisa. Yeah, let's be honest. That's that's your girl there. That's the last person <laughs> I'm going to. Fellow Hoosier Lisa Yee. Yeah, now resides in Phoenix. Now, now in Phoenix. But she was an original Hoosier, and she will admit it. Huge Colts fan, so wow, uh, near and dear to my heart because we can suffer together. Definitely a uh, looks like a tip issue there, and I think somebody just a random fan handed her a tip there. Said, "Hey, I got you covered." She went treble ten there, which is not a bad play. Uh, unfortunate to go in high into the six, but if this one seventy goes. This would be a huge steal of the leg, and she's still on it. This would be beautiful. Oh, Ooh. how is that? That's in. No, that's in the triple. Is it? That mismarked. She had a shot at it and oh, didn't know it. Oh, she did. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, that hurts. That is so brutal. Oh, my word. You got. That's why you've got to take that time and go up there and make sure your opponent's good with you. Fixing that right yeah. away. You have to. Yeah, I mean... At the end of the day, she didn't notice it until after yeah. she went up to the board. We get a high-def view from up close. Triple five. She no, she didn't know it. See, and that's, that's what I'm saying. It's the exact thing. I, uh, but did she do that on purpose? I would doubt that she would do that. Not in this. Not in this. It's too big of a thing. You never know. Double 16. Yeah, it's Lisa, so you really can't put it past her, but I, I still doubt that. Shay unable to take advantage of it, though. Yeah, I think Lisa did not like that tip that was given to her. Thanks, but no thanks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> thanks. Sorry, but no. No, thank you. No, Scott. How about that? 0-0 zero, zero scoreline. First leg. Definitely shaky uh, for these two, to say the least. Um, but I don't know if you can see in the background... And I always like to point this out because if there's one person that gets hate the most in the dark community, uh, sometimes unfairly, sometimes, and it's Mike Maloney. Well, right now he is back there throwing with 13-year-old uh, Liam Musser uh, just to warm up and, and, and throw. And those are the things that you don't notice typically about the top name guys is that they also do – all of those things. Yeah, yeah. And here's the thing: is Liam's going to take this experience and run with it. And uh, he's played Mike before yeah. multiple times. He, he played him yesterday on the uh, finals board up here for just a little bit. Yep. Uh, he's definitely a, a future. Yeah, uh, he's already an incredible shot. What can you do in the future is the thing. But yeah, <laughs> stepping up to the line with some of these guys, getting some more experience, and seeing how they're tackling the game is good for Liam. One thousand percent, it is. And also what's good for Liam is having his dad owning a bar. And also what's good for Liam is being in Wisconsin. Uh, true and true. Because uh, I've always said this. I've said it at numerous whammos in the two years that we've had. Sorry, you uh, mean whammo? Yeah, whammo. Um, your Division Four can compete with Division One yep. at whammo. There's no doubt about it. You can have some Division Four people beat Division One just because how stacked the talent is here in Wisconsin. 100%. Shay Cole showing her showing us why she is in this position here. She refused to do that in leg number one, but she has definitely uh, picked up the pace. And if you're confused about what Whammo is, 2,400 entries, folks, for their event there is just massive. They play it on, uh, what was it, 280 boards, 180? And that's enough for half. 280. Half the levels. Yeah. They can have to bring them in two different divisions. Folks. They can only play one tournament a day. Just unreal. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall during that conversation where they realized that it was so big that they had to split it into two and that they had to tell people that and get all the hate for it that they probably got, um, not knowing from all those people that uh, it was the only 
solution. Going to be honest. Can't wait to fly my drone in that arena. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to. Going to be incredible. Going to be incredible. Well, Lisa finds herself behind in this one. Was Shay throwing a 6 0? -oh. Yeah. Which is not surprising for a player of the caliber of Shay Cole. She has this level in her. And you said it earlier, the consistency factor is the one thing that um, she'll say. And what I think most players, dart players will say, is the main uh, flaw mm -hmm. in their game. And that's what makes dart so frustrating is that you can throw a 4-5 one game and then a 2.0 the next. You go from an immediate high to, I hate this game so much. But it's all out of love. I'll tell it. I hate this game. It's not easy enough. Just kidding. True. <laughs> That's not even a fun fact. <laughs> Paul Rogers made it home safe. It was great to see you again today, buddy. Always a pleasure. And uh, thanks for all the support, bud. Big hat trick from Lisa. Not enough. Yeah, you feel so. With Shea needing only three bulls to go ahead and take out the uh, leg. And, and you shoot at it. Yeah. Especially with the house advantage. Yeah. You got four houses. Go ahead and just take chances. Get rid of it. 1-1. One, one. And also, it, work on some bulls a little bit. Uh, she struggled on those in the first leg. 1-1 one to one score line now. Race to five. Best of nine here. This is the first... Top four match of the women's Booyah Cup finale. First place, $4,000. $3,000 in cash. Minus really one tournament I can think of. It is soft tip tournament I can think of. It is the highest payout uh, in the United States for soft tip for one tournament. This is definitely yeah, a for pay, one event. Yeah, for sure. Uh, second only to TOC. Yeah, there, there's some big prize money that happens at TOC. It's in the 10K yeah. winners and Jake Smith taking home 20K in one year. I mean, that's just incredible. Jules doing a run there as well. Jules, I think, won $24,000 yep. that weekend. Could you imagine taking home twenty four grand off of darts, folks, in one weekend? I dreamed about a five hundred dollar check once. And this is why and I'll say this for all you UK or English or, or Europeans that may be joining us, that is why you see your Leonard Gates, yep. your Jules Van Dong and go to those soft tip events because they can make so much money in a handful of weekends rather than, you know, some of those other sites. They'll go to three or four soft tip events because of the money they can make. And they are confident. 100% confident in their game heading to those things. Yeah. They walk into those rooms uh, knowing that they can beat anyone else in those rooms. Yep. And typically they will show off that they, in fact, are right. Same can be said about Paula. Paula Absolutely. Does the same. Yep. Well, at the same time, traveling and playing in bigger events and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you enter tournaments if you've never played in a league? It depends on the tournament is the right answer to that. Yeah. Yeah, this one you can uh, qualify – Via a G3 arachnid board, you can get involved and try to qualify um, in those qualifiers or a Phoenix board as well. They have a couple qualifiers via that route. So, Whammo, definitely you got to participate in, in some leagues yep. and, and, and get some games in. Same with TOC, CSC, all that stuff. But State tournaments, you are playing leagues and playing for vendors. Most vendor tournaments, of course, are through the vendor specific. Um, the only one that's different than that is Knox Amusement. I don't know if you saw that right there. Shay took a deep breath, closed her eyes before she took the Aki there, just trying to recover, recoup here as she kind of went into a quick slump. Well, it's easy to throw a 175. I've done it many times. Um, and just be so down on yourself for doing so that it affects you multiple legs after that. What Shay is realizing and, and utilizing with her, her uh, experience, this is such a longer format than anyone's used to that she has time to make mistakes and still be okay. And also, this is a hold a throw for Lisa at the end of the day. So no real harm done. Still on throw. 
annoying, but still on throw. Yeah. Well, Lisa needs to close out the 16s, go to the Bulls to try to get rid of this leg for a two to one score line. <laughs> If you hear a loud crash, it's me passing out <laughs> in the cloak hot in the coat closet. <laughs> Once again, if you need your coat hang or hung, just let us know. Bring the uh, coat over here. Five dollars. We got. I would wait a couple you. minutes if you before you do that, <laughs> or else it won't be worth the price. Jeez, Ryan. Jeez, Ryan. <laughs> Two bulls needed. Lisa there gets you it go. done. Three point six zero in that leg. I mean, that was so dirty, you could smell it from here. <laughs> what a great leg from Lisa Yee. The first match on our top four match of the winner's side is going to be Rick Henze, Leonard Gates on board 39. So that will be the first one. The second one will be coming as well, Alex Spellman, Danny Baggish. But they're going to have a little bit of a wait. Also allows the loser side of the bracket to catch up a little bit too. But they are moving. There's only going to be 12 people left in this tournament after uh, the Garrett Rakowski and Mike Carter match. That is insane. Oh. Yep. Quickly, we've kind of come along. Six coming up on 645 local time. We did start a little bit later than we wanted to, especially for that women's side. They were supposed to get underway at about 2 p.m. The doubles took a little bit more time than we anticipated. But... Uh, Nonetheless, we're still ready to rock here for the rest of the evening. So 83 there from Shea. Not terrible at all. A hat trick is the only thing from Lisa to kind of just get her right back into the almost even territory. And that was definitely not punished at all. Shea in the lead. Open in, master out. For master out, uh, if you are tuning in to soft tip for the first time, maybe, uh, that means that you can hit a bullseye, a triple, or a double to go out. Yep. You just cannot single out on a single number. Yeah, and, I, get, and it changes the math a little bit. Yeah, it really does. And there's there's some so many different games out there than norm, there's the normal steel tip side that you're used to, especially formatted for soft tip. So you get the fat bull side. You've got the uh, freeze rule, which comes into effect on certain games. Doubles really is the big key there. But uh, yeah, it kind of throws a wrench at you a little bit, but you got to learn and, and and continue on. It's one of the few logical arguments for why soft tip can sometimes be more difficult than steel. Steel, same format. You know what it is every time. Yeah. Just go play it. And soft tip, like for Lisa Yee, for instance, goes inside on the 15. Doesn't have the masters out or master out mindset to know trip five. Exactly. And goes in, she busts. Exactly. And just, here you go, Shay. Now. You get your your opportunity. You get your opportunity. Now, granted, soft tip is about what you what you miss. Steel tip is about what you hit kind trip, of mentality. We've heard 11. that before. But she's not even looking at it. So are we off on our mindset here? Either that, or they're not playing Master Out, and we just assumed it the whole time. But it has to be Master Out. Yeah, it's it's, it's labeled also, as it. It's also Lisa uh, allowing Shay to tee up. And that's the thing. The Lisa, Lisa's too, a little bit far back, so Shay probably making the strategic move. Yeah. Just say, let's line up for something I feel comfortable in, 32, instead of a possible trip 11, or, or double 11, I mean. Which, if you're sitting there wondering why not just shoot at the triple 11, it's because the triple 14 is right there. And you don't want to bust in that moment to go way back. Double double finish. A little fancy at the end of the day. Shea Cole gets the 32 accomplished. And uh do -si do here in this top four match. Two to two. So we'll get us underway in leg number five. I need to, everyone to understand that Lisa's dart jersey is a direct representation of her personality. If you were to describe her as an animal, she would be a happy penguin on a rainbow. By size and personality.
I'll say this, I have not been as impressed with the 0-1 game from, from either lady. They've struggled a little bit. For them. And for me, this is... I'm throwing phenomenal if I'm throwing like that. But for them, they're struggling a little bit in this one. Not too many hat tricks at all. Uh, which is just, again, different. Compared to what they're probably used to. Let's see Shake and Hammer one in here. She and will. what a timed one. Yeah, that's that's a perfect timed one right there. Especially with Lisa needing to hit 150 here. And that could be costly. It definitely will be costly. Yeah. Shay Cole will get a good opportunity to get the first look at a finish. And possibly break a throw here. So here we go, Shay Cole, 239. Once it leads a low ton. I'd love to order up a hat trick. Not going to do that, but that fallout's actually really beneficial. Leads 120. That will definitely work. The Shanghai look. Although, she ain't going to go Shanghai, let's be honest. She doesn't need to. He doesn't really need to at all. Bullseye 20 bullseye. Should be the exact shot here in Master Out. Yes. Yep. And again, a lot of players that are not used to that format will not think that way at all. Mm -hmm. And it is by far the best opportunity to take out the 120 because of how much bigger the bowl segment is. Here we go. There's the bowl 20. Double five. Oh, that'll work. Although she falls inside to Lisa. To hold her throw and make this three to two. I'm not even going to guess because I don't know. 20 for bowl. Oh, oh, no. Missed the big number. Wow. This is now very difficult for Shay, though. Or at least not easy. It's no longer textbook. First dart matters, I think, more than anything else. Yeah, she'll go one. Actually, she would triple. double one. She can go triple. Yes, yeah, she can. Madhouse. That would have been such a cool way to take that out, but unable to do so, and it doesn't register a single thing. So there's always that what if. No, this is the top four. First top four match. The second top four match that will happen after this is going to be Chris Grimmel taking on an Abby Spot. And if you're wondering if Paula Murphy is concerned at all, look at her back there just playing some uh, some little some little games there, and that's because she doesn't have to worry anymore. Paula Murphy, our defending champion, is out. Ooh. Four nothing defeat from Meredith McGee. So we will have a new champion on our women's side, guaranteed. As I mean, Meredith is is a great shot, but I did not expect a four nil victory over Paula. Well, Paula doesn't look super concerned back there. <laughs> nah, she's over there uh, hitting the button, hitting that good button that uh, I like to hit every once in a while. Let's be honest. Yeah, you walk out every five minutes. I'm just kidding. Just get, if get Hannah's, out of <laughs> Hannah's here. Hannah's listening in. Don't you dare. I already got in trouble for mentioning how much I brought to Vegas with me. <laughs> Whoopsies. All right. Shay gets an opening to redo the 20s. And, uh, again, Ooh. slow start. Mr. Hensy in the mix, it looks like, as he just popped his head in. That's going to be uh, the Rick Henze, Leonard Gates. And here first we go. Semi or first top four match on the. Here we go. I'll let you take care of this one here. Doc uh, asking the 50 required, 25 hit. How so? This is a fat bull yep. um, game. So that full segment, that 25 and 50 bit that we're used to in steel, is worth 50. So you have some different formats. The pros uh, or the men are playing a split bull format. Yep. The women are playing the fat bull format. So a little bit different. Yep. Soft tip lingo. Uh, full bull or fat bull means that the entire bullseye, 25 and 50, are worth 50 points. And yep. then you have split bull, which is what you are typically going to. In 
so, uh, steel tip, 100 percent. If you're just tuning yep. in for the first time or seeing this for, the, you're going to be confused. You're like, what is this? That's how we do it. Heather Fuller, this is not at a casino, um, but Wisconsin. It feels like yep. every place is a casino because they just put them bad boys everywhere. Admit, I gotta admit that one, bud. <laughs> hey, you would know. You you spent so much time on them. I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to get you in trouble uh, for no reason. Lisa, they, <laughs> a one uh, 108, Shay at 114. And again, this is one of those legs where like they seem like they're struggling so hard. I'm fine with a 3.0 or 3.5 and a leg of darts. And I'm not you, but I'm fine with it. That. <laughs> That's wonderful for me. If I average that for an entire league match, I am through the moon excited. I'm going to be honest with you. I want to be too keen on the three <laughs> myself, but, y you know, you got to count those wins at the end of the day, and that's what you need. Lisa Yee. Big eight mark from Lisa. Raises the average to a 4.20. That was a big hit there for her, but it's not yet out of reach for Shea. It, well, it is now. She well, puts, now it is. Yeah, she puts the one into the 15, and now Lisa can kind of gather a number or two or point, point up a little bit. Yeah, good move. Looks like we're getting Gates Hinsey yep. on 39. That's going to be an appetizing one. It will be good. I uh, when, I, when you saw Rick Hinsey, I did just say that to you, but Yep. Tell me you don't listen to me without telling me you don't listen well, to me. Well, um, you know, just double mention every once in a while. At least I'm not Ryan, Ryan Mooningham. <laughs> just kidding. Speaking of Ryan Mooningham, <laughs> I just he had to do it. Vanished. Uh, vanished. Well, I mean, get a, get a, we maybe get a he break went here. out there for a good reason. Maybe a helpful one for us. <laughs> Instead of trying to uh, <laughs> make us all uh, quit being in here. We all don't need to take a break at the same time. Uh, he was trying to make that happen. Lisa Yi in the driver's seat here for a chance to make this 4-2. to two. And this is a break of throw of Shea Cole. So Lisa will throw for the match in the next leg if she finishes this one off. Yeah. Scott, you should see me when I'm alone, brother, trying to do all this. That's a real, real tough one. <laughs> Maybe Scott thinks it's me. Talk about all over the place. I am definitely all over the place. So I'm trying to do production and commentary at the same time. We got three people compared to the PDC's, what, 20, 30? At least five. Uh, well, they, uh, there's definitely more than five, brother. <laughs> there's more than five commentators for one night. All uh, right. Well, Lisa struggling so much on the Bulls that it's given a little bit of an opening here. Yeah, it really is. And but Shea needs to still walk through the door. She, she's got to. It's a slim opening, if that. She's got to collect on the Bulls here. Like that. And collect a good amount. That's a great guide. Four Bulls hit at a very good time. I don't know if you noticed the name that just popped up watching along with us, but Mr. Spellman is maybe doing a little or, uh, investigative, investigative work. Investigative work on the two players potentially that you might be playing. I like Not that. Not like he hasn't played them before, but you never know how someone's playing on a given day. Lisa gets it done. 3.70. Never in doubt, and she's up 4-2. to two. We'll throw for the match and a chance to be the first queen seat. Qualifier. I don't know if you saw that there from Hinzi. Leaned over, hunched over. There's a reason for that. I think he's starting to feel some back issues maybe. Some of those troubles, especially in an extended format like this. Towards the end, you may start feeling that a little bit. 100%. Especially, no, Vince, he's, he's a bigger guy. You're definitely going to feel something there. I can't believe you said that. Get out of here. He never knew that. <laughs> He's six foot. He's six foot five. First of all, <laughs> even that just alone. <laughs> Listen, boss. <laughs> you just stay over there and you keep Orphis's clothes for a while <laughs> during your break. 
Lisa Yi <laughs> has the 20s closed and is looking at the 19s. She might move back eventually. <coughs> it's a struggle here. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, listen, they've been playing all day. The doubles is always great until it gets to a point where, uh, well. You never really know. Yeah, no. That can't be right. Surely not, right? I. Could it be? Could it be no. MBG? No, mm, it can't be. There's no way. Well, Robot Michael Van Gerwen, thank you so much. <laughs> and if you are the real Michael Van Gerwen, uh, the robot thing still kind of fits, if you ask me. In a great way. We have had some great, great people tuning into our chat. Lisa Ashton always always jumps oh my in. Gosh, Ricky what a, Evans. What a beaut. Yeah. Both of them. So if it is MBG tuning in, we appreciate it. Love that. Nice gentleman, I will say that. Oh, phenomenal. <laughs> no, he, he's he's top level. Top top notch for sure. Well, boom goes the dynamite from Shea Cole. That's what we would like to see. <coughs> what we've been missing a little bit in this bad boy. Lisa with a big five mark to follow. Gets the point lead back, but Shay, the nine mark has uh, given her an opportunity to turn the tables. Not going to quite do it there. And Lisa starting to struggle a little bit. She has the throw for the match here, but she's giving it away to Shay. Can we just for one second point out how amazing the hair jersey col col color combination is from Shay Cole? Yeah, right. It is. It is spectacular. I mean, the boys match the shoes. The women match the hair, and one's cooler than the other. Did I have a question about in regards to switching back and forth on these matches? A little bit tougher. We only have the one board cam. Yep. So we will probably just jump on over after this match concludes, which will str still probably be pro pro oh, progressing. Yeah. For sure it will be. Yeah, well, maybe. Um, good Better. question here. Yeah, absolutely. Is it possible to bet on this? How about this? We, we're working on that. Yep. CDC. Big darts again from Shea Cole. Another nine mark. C off some dynamite. CDC just announced that they're going to have some sports betting on there their events this year so that's kind of fun yeah it's it, it's super exciting um as a small part of the production team uh it i can tell you that those meetings have been uh very exciting because at the end of the day whether you like gambling or you don't like gambling or you do it or you don't do it um it is huge for the sport yep um for the amount of money that could potentially come in uh most americans do not know this but darts is the most bet on sport outside of the u.s in the world it's, it's starting to be a pretty good betting source here, if you ask me. <laughs> 100%. 1-1, one, Rick Henzie, Leonard Gates. And remember, it's a race to six in their format, so they're going to have a little bit longer to go. Lisa gets the point lead back, but Shea should be able to stay in the driver's seat. And uh, as soon as I say that, opportunity knocks for the Hoosier. It's an important dart, big dart. And not closing it might be the difference. Click on that one, see if it actually is him. There we go. Closing it out. Shea looking promising for a 4-3 score line here. I, 
I think that might be your iPad from 1985. <laughs> <laughs> Last week? Oh, it's beautiful then. <laughs> Here we go. Shay needing the three bulls to take the leg. It was more of assumption than, than reality, bud. How about a big six mark? What a bailout on the 18s. And Lisa still. I mean, this leg is completely turned on its head. Shea Cole. 1,000% in front. Yeah. 125 point advantage. And that's just the tip of the iceberg for the advantage right now in this leg. About to be four to three, and Shea will go first in the next leg. Yeah, so, so just has to hold, and then we go to a last leg decider. Where anything can happen. Yeah, we all know that one. It's never a good feeling when you hit a hat trick and you just can't even be anywhere close to excited about it. Wow, it's already 1-1 one, one there between Hensie and Gates. That's unbelievable, man. That, I, can't, I, can't, I can't believe that. Wow, Shea Cole, a 4.30. Makes it 4-3, to three, and so she went out, shoot, to send us to the last leg decider, going first. 5-1, open in, master out. Typically would favor mm -hmm. the player going first more than the other formats. Let's see if she can get the job done here. We will have to see about that. You can't even click on it? That sucks. Mm -mm. Oh, well. Starts off with a bull. And I'm going to be honest. Those she's are unlucky. Yeah, and third she's dart. not going to be thrilled with that one. Those could have easily have caught the flight the other way and gone up into the bull. But instead, the Dark God said, no, 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 no. And unfortunately, we are just at their uh, at their disposal. What am I doing? Opportunity here for Lisa. That was a 55 scored, no bowl. Hit. My goodness, they could not be closer to these being extremely good. They're still really good. Lisa E averaging coming into this 3.83 and a 30.43. And again, Shea Cole, second overall in both averages 4.26, 34.04. Heading into this, so you know the frustration is very real with how yeah. she has played in this match, and it's it's a frustration that I think we all can understand. She's down four to three. She's still in this for sure, but again, throwing a twenty-one when she's averaging a thirty-four is has to be so difficult to stay in it. Yeah. Oh, certainly so. So, and you're coming down to the nitty gritty points in the and the uh, bracket. Where you want to find yourself in that uh, hill matchup. There she is. Well, why didn't we just go 20s the whole time here, Shay? <laughs> Big one, 40 out of nowhere when she needed it most. Leaves a finish here in this format. Are they going to think that way, though? She hopefully does. Otherwise, she is giving Lisa free looks at what? Treble 20. And a big high ton. That was a great high ton indeed and adds a lot of pressure to this 171, which can go, ladies and gentlemen. Popping off the fireworks with that 171. This can go. Oh. I love how we just made the same noise that everyone else made watching along. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We all know that one. So Lisa E for the match. And a spot in the queen seat. Treble 20 hit, and that'll do it. That was good shot. And, and, and good, just go right at the trip 20 there. You hit a single, you've got tops. And 
what Shane needs to do is just head over to a board and kind of just regroup or sit down for a minute, regroup, and realize that uh, you're not going to do that again. Oh, who's this guy? Well, don't think I've ever met this gentleman. This is Winmore sponsored player, Mr. Leonard Gates. Uh, <laughs> and he now knows the board's on him. <laughs> As he says hi to us. Um, Played a little peekaboo there. Did you say peekaboo? Peekaboo. Are you saying peek or pick? Pick peekaboo. Okay, good. Man, that would have been another archive situation. We can't have another one of I, those. I probably definitely said pick by accident. Well, right, right. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I, I was just making sure that's not what you thought yep. it was. I'm okay with you miss saying something. I never do it, but you can do it <laughs> whatever you want. Uh, you um, never do it. Huh? All righty. Leonard Gates. One of my favorite things about Dan Dawson, minus being awesome at everything that he does, is that he calls him Lenny. And that's a 180 for Leonard Gates. Gates had never been about that. Ned had never been about that life. <laughs> we do love when he calls himself Gator. To think of that as such a missed opportunity as a dark nickname for real. I mean, don't get me wrong, Soldier's great, but it could have been Gator. Gator don't play. Think Big. how cool those shirts would have been. <laughs> Henzy knows he's got to put in a good score here. Two triples. Ideal. Needs at least one more. Gets it. Yeah, leaves that 1-3-6 pick. But I'd say advantage here, Leonard. 181, chance to uh, put a lot of pressure on the 1-3-6. That is a two-treble checkout. Or at the very least, two-double with a treble checkout. See if he can do it. I'm going to ask him, how, much, how many more matches do we think we have left? I would say we probably get, what, two, three more hours at least of action. Yeah, something like that. Yep. A uh, little update for you outside. Uh, of where we are currently located, all the loser side of the bracket. Tyler Henze down 2 nothing to Elliot Milk. Dustin Holt, Kevin Luke looking to get started here shortly. Maybe. Those guys are too good of friends to actually make that statement logically. Uh, Jesse Johnson, Bob McCoy, 2-1. to one. Jesse Johnson up on Bob. And then 3-0 lead for Garrett Rakowski over Mike Maloney, who just got his first leg on the board, so now it's 3-1. to one. But that is a race to five. Mike Maloney had some real trouble being out of this thing. Yeah, he really is. And then you look over on the women's side as Rick Henze does not take out that opportunity, and he, that's going to cost him. Yeah, he really needed that one. His tops is definitely an easy look for Gates in this situation, I feel. Double 10. Gets it done. 4-1, to one, Leonard Gate leads Rick Henze for a spot in the king seat match. But you're, I think you're absolutely right. At least a couple more hours, if not more than that. And you can see, you can kind of see in the background, Rick's been really leaning on that table a lot, man. He's got to be. I don't know if that actually is something different or if it's just his typical kind of how he, you know, it's a, a part of his thing. I've, like, Chrissy walks away all the time and paces and all that. I've got a little insider information. Well, I, I, know he's, yeah. I know he's hurt right now. Yeah. And I know he's hurting. But... I think for some people, I think that's not as used to hurting. Yeah, I think the I think the best statement from him was that he goes, "Well, the BR Cup shouldn't be too hard. It's not like a long format or anything." I said, "What? <laughs> what is what is the best of eleven? <laughs> All day." Yeah. Well, boom goes a dynamite for Leonard Gates. Five marks with how Leonard's playing right now. Like a man possessed by Leonard Gates. He is uh, pretty unstoppable, honestly. He's throwing sevens as a bare minimum round, if not more than that. And it's consistent. And that's the difference. Dan Jones asking, who is going to beat Gates? And that is the question. So far, no one has in the Booyah Cup. And yet, dumb, dumb, and dumb, dumber earlier in the pre-show, didn't even mention him. <laughs> well, here's the thing. He can pull off the three-peat if he can capitalize and win his win this one. And 7.25 right now. Wow. Dominance. 5, 9, 
eight, seven. He just gave, he just gave us an eye, a couple eye winks in the in the side camera. <laughs> Does he know we not we don't have all the cameras on right now? No, no, he doesn't know. It's just that's Gates for you. Oh yeah, he I, gives a couple subtle ones that if you catch it, you catch it. If you don't, he don't care. He's still gonna do it. <laughs> Gator throws a, throws a seven right there, and he takes a five to one lead. Uh, Leonard Gates is on top of his game today. And if you're anyone else in the field, just good luck. That he's playing lights out. I mean, decimated Mike Maloney, and now it's decimating Rick Henze. And those guys are so talented. We did see Danny, or it was off stream, but we did see Danny take on Luke Pritzel, and he really put in a great performance as well. But will we see a rematch of last year's final between Leonard and Danny, or is somebody gonna change that factor? We could see two new faces. You never know. And. Don't forget about Alex Spellman. Yeah, 100%. We can't, you can't forget about him. You can't forget about a lot of these people on the list because anyone can pull out a performance these days and, and best them. Let's give you updates on what's coming your way here on our stream, just so you guys can be prepared for the amazingness that's about to happen. Uh, coming up next will be the women's other semifinal, or top four match. No, it won't. That's Did they already play? awful. They're playing right now. 2 nothing lead for Chrissy Grimmel over Abby Spot. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't give them a board at all. I, I'm going to guess they just wanted to play. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's what it is. They didn't care. Which Especially Chrissy annoying. and Abby because they've dueled we a care. lot. They've dueled a lot. We care. Well, of course. We want to see as much So we need everyone to understand that that was the ladies making that decision and not us. So please don't come scream at us. Um, and then the next match coming up on this side, allegedly – is Alex Bowman, Danny Baggish. And luckily, Danny's playing in that one. That will be on stream because Danny will want to be there. Um, I think we'd be dumb not to put that one up. I I would I would gamble a lot of money that we're going to see that match on stream next. Yep. It'll be Alex Bowman's first time on stream today. Which is... Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Just so it speaks not volumes. Typical. It speaks volumes of the matches we've had uh, so far. But uh, Gates going at the 17s, possibly room to attack a number, but he'll stay right there to hammer in some points. Almost a 100-point advantage, 97. And that's really all he can do right now with Rick having two higher ground wedges yep. available to score on. Because Rick wants to just keep moving around the board right now, and he, he is now forced not to. And all Leonard wants to do is just – elongate this match as long as possible because he knows that if that happens with how he's playing, he'll win. And then as soon as I say that, he takes out the two numbers. 294, playing 236. Leonard Gates has the 17s closed and available for pointing. Rick Henze does open up the, fit, or the 16s on dart one and well, seven, just good enough for the point lead, not good enough for control of the leg. Leonard Gates on pace here for a 6-1 victory. Uh, Jacob, we're using the bull shooter stuff. He's gonna put, we're going to put the link right now into the bracket or into uh, the chat for you so you can see it. You just click on that bad boy and take you right there. Why can't I? It's crummy. That was not Will's commentating on a dart. I was trying to uh, pull up the bracket itself and see if we yeah. could pull it, probably pull that in, but it's just a little bl bl blurry for me. So, yeah, I'll just provide the links for you. There's the men's bracket, and here's the women's bracket. And right now the women's bracket, Leonard's dancing, dancing away right now. He found himself a good song. I told you. He just gets it every once in a while. You catch it or you don't. And he's definitely feeling himself here. And there's every reason for him to be feeling himself right now. Just dismantled Mike Maloney 6-1, and it looks like he's going to do the same thing to the juggernaut. Um, typically, that does not happen to those two players in tournaments. No questions asked, but Leonard Gates is doing exactly that, and he's dictating it. Now, 444 is a terrible leg for Rick Henze. 
Great leg for me. Terrible leg for Rick Enzi. And the fact that a 4 for 4 can be terrible for anyone is nuts, but Leonard Gates, 6 to 1 victory over the Juggernaut. So the Juggernaut is going to uh, breathe a little bit, take a little breather, but. So will we. He will, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, coming up next, Alex Spellman, the Jackal, taking on the gambler, Danny Baggish. That is a matchup of epic proportions because it also is Sean Green's favorite for winning the Booyah Cup against. Ryan Mooningham's favorite of winning the Booyah Cup. I, I also want to see where we're going to be at on the women's side because I want to get a couple women's matches up here. So uh, it is For unfortunate sure. that that semifinal went off. But, uh, hey, you know, push them along. I'm sure that's what they're trying to do and catch up. So we'll have another one for you in just a moment, folks. Uh, thanks for letting me join in with you for a minute, Sean. I appreciate that You are that so one. welcome. Uh, <laughs> a little bit different to, to jump on the mic there for a change. Well, uh, you're – you're joking. Yeah, you used to do this joking. all by yourself. <laughs> do you remember those days and how much worse it is now that you have to deal with me and, I and Ryan? I still do it every once in a while, but hey, it's, 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 it's all right. We make do. You guys are great at what you do, so happy you guys are a part of the team, and who knows what, what events we got for you down the road, but how about this? NDA Team Dart coming your way in April. Yep. May is going to be Whammo. Um what else do we got here? I got to go on the track. I think we we're going to take a little break. Challenge. Well, we, we can't got, forget CDC. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, cross-border challenge. We have uh, weekend one in May. Uh, there's a lot of awesome things uh, dart-related. PopCon. Yeah, PopCon, too. Indy. That's a big Championship thing. Darts Corporation will be there this year. Uh, I'll be in that booth. Um, and so I believe Mr. Spellman will be there as well, but I'm not positive. Do we got a Maloney out here? Well, um, well of course, someone left this without giving me any reasonable view whatsoever. <laughs> Mike Maloney is out. Wow. Five to two victory for Garrett Rakowski. So Winmore defeats Winmore. Garrett will either play Jesse Johnson or Bob McCoy in the next round. Dustin Holt, Kevin Luke. Still haven't gotten started yet. Shocker. And, then, uh, uh, and Elliot Milk is now up three to two on Tyler Henze. So Rick Henze just lost. Tyler trying to stay in this Booyah Cup. 19 years old. Yep. Um, Long career ahead, but he wants to get more going right now. As Alex Bowman warms up, we'll be right back. Breaking soft tip news, Windmill has announced a string of American player signings, including PDC superstar Jules Van Dongen. You've known about Leonard Gates, of course. However, we also saw Mike Maloney, Rick Henze, and Garrett Rakowski, who are prominent soft tip players. Not to say they've never won anything on the steel tip side, but they are renowned for their soft tip accomplishments and dominance in the U.S. And for you folks overseas unfamiliar with these guys, just go on over to our YouTube page, at USA Darts, type in their names in the search bar. We have dozens of great matches matches featuring all five of the new Windmouth sponsored players. You will not be disappointed. It is astonishing to see three sponsorships that are soft tip leaning by a major darts brand with over 50 years of experience in the industry, not to mention the Blade 6 being the board sponsor for the PDC. So if that doesn't answer the question, why do people play soft tip? I don't know what else can. We totally understand how the UK folks might not get it and just don't realize how popular soft tip is globally, but trust us, we at USA Darts Production literally make half 
half of our living streaming soft tip events and the other half streaming steel tip. You don't have to like or respect the soft tip side, but at least be aware. Soft tip is obviously beloved by enough people who truly enjoy participating. And now players are getting signed by Winmau. I can't wait to see what's next. The new FitPoint Plus CC conversion points. The CC in the name stands for carbon composite, which is a material that is very durable yet very lightweight, close to the soft tip plastic points you're used to throwing. They come in two available lengths to choose from, the shorter 25 millimeter and the longer 30 millimeter. They feature barbed tips that help to prevent bounce outs. Something to be said about these is they're very aggressive at first versus being made smooth and wearing out to virtually nothing. So you can speed up the smoothing process by taking Welcome back to this top four matchup at the 2024 Booyah Cup Finale, live in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. Sean Green joined by Ryan Mooneyham. Mooney, this one is bound to be absolutely ridiculous. Maybe even speechless start from time to time. Yeah, this one definitely I circled on the, on the bracket. Uh, was able to get a quick break in, ready to come back and call this monster of a match. I mean, it's just a monster of a match. I mean, at the end of the day, we picked these players to win the whole thing as experts, making it an a expert opinion pick. And now they're doing battle here in this top four. So one of them is going to be more of an advantage than the other. But here's the problem. Uh, Gator came to play today. 
And I might have to switch my opinion on who I'm picking in this just because of what I've seen from Leonard Gates. Gator came to play is the exact words to be used. We have seen top-notch stuff out of his opponents, and Gator has decimated his opponents. Yep. A thousand percent correct. Alex leaves only 126, an unlucky last start kind of flight out for him. Baggish can put some pressure on this 126. At least Del still leaves the big fish. That's pressure for Alex Bowman because Danny loves the idea that he might be able to hit that. And I'll make sure that opportunity does not happen. Needs the treble. Doesn't get it. So Danny Baggish will get a look at the big fish. Trying to catch himself a grouper. First thing he's got to do is group two, double tw or triple 20. Not going to do it now. And that was a couple of a couple of holes over into the trouble one too, so I don't think he's going to be excited about the attempt even. Sixteen for tops. It will only be one dart. Spelling up one nothing. Only one dart needed. Hold a throw. It is an alternate start. Best of eleven legs. Race to six. This is the other. Top four match. Leonard Gates right now waiting in the king seat, which is lingo in a, in a soft tip doubles tournament uh, for uh, the winner of the winner side. So guaranteed first or second place uh, and automatically guaranteed in the finals. The loser of the king seat match will move into the third place match automatically, so they will take on whoever runs through the loser side. Chrissy Grimble up 4-1 to one on Abby Spot in that second Top four match of the ladies. Lisa Yi waiting to see who she will play in the queen seat. And then Caitlin Myers gets it done against Julie Wieger. She's waiting on the loser of the match we just mentioned. The Liz Tynan J. Cole. The talent that's still in this thing is crazy good. If you look over the loser side of the men's Booyah Cup bracket, Dustin Holt 2-1 to one lead over Kevin Luke. Jesse Johnson, three. Bob McCoy, three. Garrett Rakowski's waiting on the winner of that one. Elliot Milk waiting on the Dustin Holt-Kevin Luke match, where we saw Kevin Luke early on stream uh, go th six darts into a perfect nine-darter three different times. And then just miserable dart number seven. Each time. He even tried yeah. 19 to get a different look and still couldn't get dart seven to fall. And that was even worse yeah. on that one. He will be the first to tell you that. But still... How impressive was that to go six perfect three different times? I know I know a lot of people who, if they hit one 180 uh, a year, they're very excited. Exactly. We've seen six six in a row out of him. And his name is Sean. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to him in the mirror, I tell him it's going to be okay. Boom goes the dynamite for Danny Baggish, the gambler. 575. He half seriously kicked us out of the streaming area so that he wasn't bothered so that he could uh, warm up without anyone saying anything to him. I was just telling him, hey, shoot good, shoot well. Oh, I was talking trash. That might yeah, be Yeah, you were talking trash. Yeah. I was like, hey, um, Danny, shoot well. Uh, enjoy your match. I'm kidding. I was also just trying to be nice, but he assumes what he assumes, and he typically he's right about that. Points up to 17. Yep. Tried to look at that 16, only managed one. Pushes it right back for a Spellman to have to visit at least six on that 16. He needs more than that because he's 99 down. Another trouble does not do that. Amount? See, is he looking 17s or 15s? 15s, I think yeah. he's looking 15s, yeah. Uh, he did good. He, one thing about our camera system, you can watch their eyes. You can see where they're looking. Chess, not checkers is what's being played right now. Danny now forced the 17s. Unless your name is Danny Baggish, then you shoot wherever you want to shoot. Gets the treble 17 on dart three. Sends the points out. He does have the high ground. And I see Caitlin Myers heading up to the streaming board. It'll be Caitlin Myers' Abby Spot on board 40.
And Ryan, I'm going to ask you a question that I'm hoping that you know the answer to. But at this point, I'm, I don't have high hopes. Uh, do you know what the format is for the loser side of the women's? Uh, best of seven. And I got high hopes. Good job, buddy. That was a test. You are correct. I had no idea. So I'm really happy that you knew the answer to that question. Best of seven. Thank you, sir. Alex Bellman. Turning the tables a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean, Danny has the point lead, but... He cannot close this out. He sure cannot, and no matter what he does, best case scenario is he, Alex Bowman needs four bowls, and he will get a look at that. And Danny will need one. 16. And Danny's going to try and do that. Yep, he's going to try to push it into where Spellman has to hit. Perfect. I mean that's a chess match. You're you're yep. betting on your on your opponent having to hit four. Four to three is is what's happening here. That means it's four bulls needed for Alex Bellman. Needs the double. And he gets the double to win the leg. Steals it right out from under Danny Baggish, and it's a two nothing lead. And all Danny Baggish is gonna do there is he's like, if he hits it, he hits it. And I mean, hit you it. gotta put the pressure on. If he doesn't go for it, puts up a bunch of points on bulls. It was Danny's best chance of winning the Yeah, yeah, and Spellman's got all fifteens and sixteens just to load up back. So he made him throw. Essentially that also makes Danny two breaks of throw down because he will need two breaks of throw to win the match of Alex Spellman at this point. And Alex goes perfect. Boom goes the dynamite for Alex Spellman to start off this leg. Danny looking down at the 19s. Just going to try and match 19s. And, uh, nope. So Alex Spellman, 2 nothing lead over Danny Baggish. Spellman continually to dominate here. Got the first two legs. Now opening up nine, backs it with another seven. Yep. Incredible shots, incredible shots, spreading his weight around the board. And if you want to know how well he feels he's throwing, that was a disappointing seven mark. That's Bellman. But even more disappointing is going to be these fives from Baggish. But we've been in situations before where a 3-0 lead has meant very little and has been erased quickly. Twice now on the stream. Uh, yeah, I mean, we sit on the floor, too. We have had, uh, we've had opponents out there, players out there up 4-1, to one, got beat 5-4. to four. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just happens. And Baggis gets himself a 9. Bags himself a 9. But you see the shake of the head from him. Winning this leg means Alex Spellman, Spellman, Spellman missing. And, uh, well, you can gamble on, gamble on better things happening exactly. than, than that. Looks See to bag another up. nine. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I like that shot across the 15. I mean, he does, he's down two houses. He's down two high houses. But he's gained two smaller houses on the backside. Points leads are close. He's trying to play a little more chess. And this is how good both these players are, right? Is that Danny goes back-to-back -back nines, and he's still not near control of this leg. No. 6.5, Danny's throwing his losing to a 6.0. He's another one, and another one still does not give him control of the leg. Just gives him the point lead. And he's going to take out Spellman's numbers and play this as a chess game, and he does so because now he's only down 24 points, meaning that Alex Spellman... No matter what he does, it's a three to four race. Three bulls. No. Oh. And Spellman does not answer <coughs> the challenge from Danny there, but Danny still needs four bulls. And that's a tough first start. Steps over just a little bit, though. Oh, no, he can't oh. do it now. And you saw that first start. Flighted oh, him down. Kicked it out. And uh, 
My goodness. Spellman hits the double for good measure, and he takes a 3-0 to zero lead on the Gambler. Hunter, the final score was 16-14. Danny Bagish got the victory there. Sean Green, Ryan Mooneyham in the booth with you for this one. The score line favoring Alex Bellman 3-0. Alex Bellman, two-time ESPN champion. He is also Continental Cup champion for the Championship Arts Corporation. Uh, there's nothing that this man cannot do in darts. Played in the World Darts Championship this past year. Danny Bags has also played in World Darts Championship. He's won uh, through to round three in the World Darts Championship. Also, Danny is a North American Open champion. Mm -hmm. That's another big title to win. I mean, these guys have both done so much in their careers. Danny's has been a longer one. More overseas success with the PDC. But Spellman is just... When Alex Spellman plays like this... He's punished in the dartboard. It's, it's got to be brutal to play against. A lot of players, like, it's lucky when when they hit a 9 mark or a, nine, or a 180, right? For Alex Spellman, it's unlucky when he doesn't hit it. Well, unlucky there. Two trip 20s out of Danny Baggish. Trip 5 and a fallout. Still leaves him a 126. He was definitely chasing that 180 again. 106. Yep, which is fine. He was going to have to switch on the last start over it anyway. Uh, but Danny needs this. This is a must hit 126. This, this 126 has got to go. Two 19s. Still alive. Bullseye. And that's a disappointing dart from him. And you can see the demeanor is is also the energy from him is not, not what you wanted. Tops from Spellman for a 4-0 lead. And a second break of throw, one dart in hand. Gets it done. 45-5-5. 12 darter from Spellman. And that's almost the seal or the floor of what he's going to shoot right now. And he's going to do -si do and step right back up to start this 501 leg. Hunter, that's, I mean, he doesn't get more uh, complimentary than Wayne Mardell saying uh, the most consistent timing and throw is Alex Bellman. Had the opportunity to watch and interact with Ryan Joyce and Alex Bellman after the match. And Ryan was also uh, very complimentary of Alex and specifically Alex's finishing. Uh, he said, I take pride in my finishing and it's not every day that uh, someone out finishes me by that much. That was a great match. I mean, Spellman come off that stage shooting a 98 average at World Championships. Yep. He didn't have the outcome he won, but boy, it was close. Boy, was it close. And the real deal, Alex Spellman, that's a 180. 200 left after six. Danny can just match that. It's kind of interesting. They both hit a 121 in the first go about. You can see. I mean, count it on up. One, two, three from Danny Baggish, but Spellman in control. Complete control. It's four nothing. If he wins this, he'll be one leg away from a matchup with Leonard Gates in the king seat. Defending champion versus the Jackal. Defending back-to-back -back champion against the Jackal. Actually, this is the first year we will have a new Booyah Cup champion, or more than one Booyah Cup champion, uh, on either side. Leonard Gates is the only men's winner in the history of the event, and Paula Murphy was the only women's winner in the history of the event. And a 180 from Danny Baggish, just to put a little pressure on this 100. But hoping Alex Bowman misses right now is uh, just, you just don't do it. Outside and not phased. 
Ready to drop in the tops. He does it. Clinical. Clinical. A lot of folks don't realize that missing outside on that double top sometimes, most times it'll stick for a still tip board, but you use that as a marker. You use it as a throw, as a guide. And it did come out, but Spellman didn't take his eyes off the prize and, and checked it. Alex Spellman's up 5-0 to zero on Denny Baggish. And if if you put – if if this was live on uh, – DraftKings, and the scoreline was 6-0, Spellman as one of the odds. Um, uh, maybe one person might have might have taken those odds. And it's like Alex's cousin, who just knows him <laughs> by name, you know? That's funny stuff right there. 5-5 five, five start. Danny does, choosing not to point, and he's choosing not to – It's a tall task, but he's, uh, I think, resigned to just let Alex continue to, if he continues to do what he's been doing. Uh, it's just like a great job, you know? Not happy with just three. Vanish flips right back to, to Baggish. It's the worst leg he's thrown today. It is. Tough leg, but he's up 5-0, so uh, you don't want to get di too disappointed. Just, uh, it didn't happen. Danny's just getting way frustrated. Which, understandable. There is no uh, no shame in that one whatsoever. But it is going to be a quick turnaround for Danny where he's at. So he's going to want to keep his form as Spellman just sets off some more dynamite. Just like Danny Baggish said he smelled blood in the water as a shark last night. That is something that Alex Spellman is... Uh, doing right now well Danny right there trying to win to grab 17 16 15 house a chess move again uh, and Alex is going to try and do the same thing goes after that 15 looky here looky here last start could have been anything realistically but the board said a single 16 I'll accept that needs to fill it up this is on dart two I think what frustrates me most about Danny throwing nonchalantly and frustratingly right now is that he's still throwing a five. That the talent is still there, that he's throwing a five, not trying anymore. Spellman, a little bit of staple on this match. Trip 18, closes the 16, goes right back to trip 18. Unfortunately, Baggish is left with the bullseye. He has to work it. And uh, Alex Spellman... Largest victory that you can have, 6-0, will give him a lot of confidence. And he does so, round six, a 6.18. And uh, I didn't expect that. No, I don't think, I think anyone in the chat that thought it was going to be 6-0 is lying right now. I did not in, expect. In favor of white, either player. Yeah, I did not expect a whitewash. But I think more people would have said, someone won 6-0, who was it? I think more people would have said Danny Baggish than Alex Bowman. But not this guy. This guy picked him to win. That, this guy picked him to win. My uh, my pick has now moved down to the loser's bracket to kind of give you an update of who it was left in the tournament for the men. Please. Elliot Milk and Dustin Holt are head-to-head -head right now. Jesse jo Johnson and Garrett Rakowski still waiting on an opponent. Danny Baggish, Rick Henze, and then our King Seat match will feature Leonard Gates – Alex Spellman. That's all that's left out of 32, uh, 32 uh, participants. And then the ladies' side, there's six left. Your six remaining, Chrissy Grimmel, Lisa Yee, Caitlin Myers, Abby Spot are getting ready to play on the stream. And then Liz Tynan will face Shay Co. And Liz is up 2 nothing already. Exactly. So out of 16 competitors there, six remain. Top six remain and payouts. Because I know that's interesting to you guys, and it's interesting to us because uh, the amount of money that is at stake here is, uh, well, it's tremendous. On the women's side, the remaining players are guaranteed at least $350. Uh, the winner of this one uh, on either side is, see where they're at? Yep. Guaranteed $600. 
And then all the way up, seven fifty for third, one thousand one hundred fifty dollars for second place, and then four thousand dollars if you uh, take down this title. In which Chrissy Grimmel and Lisa Yee are about to battle to see who's going to have the best opportunity at that and guarantee themselves four figures in payouts. But here we go, Caitlin Myers, Super Dart sponsored player, taking on Abby Spot who just recently announced, I believe, going a different direction there. And Abby has been slow to get going in the doubles every time she's been on stream, but then as soon as she hits high gear, uh, it is lights out for an opponent. Yeah, as soon as she gets going, she was dropping 12 dart legs and 501 singles. And or 501 free, excuse me. And Caitlin has been very impressive. This is her second year in the Booyah Cup and second year where she has just continued to impress. Uh, she's taken out some, some good names in that loser side. Some tough names. Julie Wieger. Casey Bates and Vanessa Talks. No, it's not Vanessa Talks, sorry. Just Casey Bates and Julie Wieger to get to the spot. She also bested on her opening round, uh, Hunter Smith, 5-3. to three. Yep. And you saw the hat trick start from her there. Abby's 24.67 will go up. Maybe not in this leg, but that will be the lowest 0-1 average that she'll throw. We saw more legs in the 40s from Abby's spot than we did in the 20s. Finds the 102 just to get a slight lead, but effectively Caitlin has stolen the throws or has the best opportunity to steal the throw here. We'll get the first look at a finish, albeit a very difficult one in this 501 Open and Master Out. If you're just joining us and are not familiar with Master Out, that means you can go out on the bullseye, uh, any part of the bullseye, a triple or a double. Any triple or any double. And it is just different math than you're used to. So Abby Spot at 138. Uh, the route there is bullseye, bullseye, double 19. For Caitlin Myers right now, she could take out the 174 before she's going to do her first start. Leads 59. If she returns, she'll go nine bullseye versus 19 tops. Whereas Abby, 138, very doable. We've seen tougher shots go from her for her before, but not this time. See, that's right there. She had 75 left. It's master out. She went to go to the, the 45 for the double 15, triple 10, or the fat 15, which she dragged into, left her a triple 20 to finish. Bullseye for Caitlin Myers. Just like you said it. Tops, that's a good fallout. Could have been something that did not leave a finish. And she does not take advantage of it. And when you're playing the talent of Abby Spot, you got to take advantage of opportunities that you're given. She give her, she gave herself that opportunity and unfortunately unable to capitalize on it. Abby still has 60 left to, to check out. And she can attack right at the triple 20. Goes 10 for Bull. Goes Just an even like safer that. route didn't than... Even, uh, yeah, so they didn't even want to mess around with that triple 20. That is the conservative approach to that. And what you did not, what she did not want to do is go five or one on the first start. So go ten, just to make that easy. Uh, fat bulls, I look there. All right, time. It's cricket time, and Caitlin Myers can start with the three mark. This is a best of seven legs on the loser side of the women's. So it is a race to four, not a race to five. And yep. Abby only starts off with a two. Vantage Caitlin Myers. She'll look to tr so point the 20. Oh, she's going to go 19 early. Now she's going to go back to 20. Stays there with her eyes. You can see after she didn't get that 19 to fall, pointed up the 20. And uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, but she is not gentle on how she gets that dart to the dartboard. She puts some steam behind it. Yes, she does. This report from the field, Liz Tynan, 
has eliminated Shea Cole with a 4-0 scoreline. So Liz Tynan will be waiting for the winner of this match. We're almost to our final four in our ladies. Yeah, I was a little bit worried with Shea with her struggles against Lisa Yee. Um, and then to take on Liz Tynan right after that, that's, that's not an easy task whatsoever. Garrett Rakowski up 2-0 on Jesse Johnson. one nothing lead early. Dustin Holt, Elliott Milk. That is a race to five on the loser side. The winner of the Milk-Holt match will get Rick Henze. Congratulations. And the winner of the Johnson-Rakowski match well, gets, a, gets the gambler who is, um, well, he's got to be angry. And I think he's going to be very dangerous. I do, too. I was thinking about that. I don't see Danny get whitewashed. I wouldn't. I don't. I don't think I've ever it. seen that happen. To I, I I just can't ever remember. But a six-zero finish for Alex Thelman really kind of pushes pushes you back. Um, in Danny's case, he's the kind of guy that can rally back. And I think when he rallies back, snatchy third dart there. It will be a. <laughs> it'll be nice and nice and crisp games coming from him. I think Abby in that situation was still deciding whether or not to go the 20s or the 18s on the last start, and by the time she made up her decision, uh, it was too late. But Caitlin leaves the door wide open with a miss. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, it's, I mean, the storylines that are still coming your way. L Leonard Gates, Alex Bellman, king seat match. We are still going to get the, kings, the queen seat match coming your way as well. Uh, the action that's still remaining in this tournament is – uh, plentiful, and the quality remaining is about as high as you can get. Yeah. Speaking of quality, Chip Anderson, first year Booyah Cup, he was here playing, drove all the way over from North Dakota. Um, it's good to see him in the in the uh, in the chat and watching the matches. Mr. Anderson, quality uh, shot out of North Dakota has principal this tournament. Yeah, school principal. School principal has freaking this tournament in the past. So. Uh, because of my school experience as both a teacher and a student, I am terrified of Chip Anderson. Uh, never had good experiences. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a little bit of a goofball when it comes to everything that I do. <laughs> and no uh, way. that no, no that way. was not that meant for not good conversations with principals in in my in my past Stop 36 years. Look at those from Caitlin Myers, big eight mark from her. And that's control. Huge round. And you saw Abby uh, gave her a little low five as she walked by for it. Little real recognizing real there. Fine start three. On the attack, Caitlin Myers. Only manages two, and man, Abby is so good at punishing when she needs to most. She does not take her eyes off that board. Five mark was the bare minimum of what she wanted to do there, but she'll she'll accept that. Myers looking for two trip seventeens here. Will she stay? Nope. Or will she go? She went towards the 16s. Only gets the single. Back and forth. Taking a look. No. At the ninth or at the 16s. You didn't let me finish. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I was gonna say taking a look at the 17s. You caught. Yeah, 25-point lead. No, I don't see her moving. Especially when she's got a one-shot close she's that Caitlin has got yeah. on her on the 16s. You're absolutely right. The, the X on the 16s made that a mm -hmm. different scenario altogether. Now, if the 16s would have been completely open, I'd see her take a shot at 17. Abby just needs a 9 marker to take complete control and make it a 4-3 to three race with 15s. She's not going to do that. Triple, triple, triple 17 would have done that. But she'll take the point lead. And a nice 7 mark there. And just continue to, to pressure Caitlin to... Perform. Oh, oh, that's a difficult flight. Unlucky on that third dart. Man, remember that crazy one last night where it 
It was at the triple twenty. It fly, flighted out of the triple twenty of the triple eighteen and set him up perfectly. Yeah. Speaking of setting up here, she wants a trip fifteen to fall. Gets it. Seventeens aggressive. Yep. You gotta take that look there, and she says, "Come on." Like exactly like that, by the way, um, because if she hits that double or that triple seventeen, uh, control is hers. Kaylin con continuing to answer the bell, though. What a leg of darts this is. Five forty-five plays five twenty, seventeens versus fifteens. Reminder: both of these ladies were beat already in this tournament. Um, I mean, just. The field, the talent, so impressive. Four two seven playing a three eight three. Abby hits the Maloney double on the seventeens after missing the Maloney double the first go around, which was a no 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 move with two darts remaining. But uh at the end of the day, the dart gods decided to reward her for some reason for it, so we're gonna just accept it for what it was. Something that now she's no longer going to learn from. But she's Abby's spot, so she doesn't really need to worry about any of that. Good she's going to be just fine without it. 80-point lead. So Caitlin cannot win it at this point. She could have, though, head into the line. Yeah. Bullseye for Abby. Try and get rid of it. Two more. Oh, that's a very difficult flight, and you got to bail, right? Got to go to the 15s. Math-wise, it, it even works. Yeah, go to the 15s. That's why she sat and pulled herself no, back. It does it. I lied. Math-wise, it definitely does not work. She would have had to hit a triple. By the way, that was the same. Come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can even see like how she even makes her face at it. That yeah. There's that Wisconsin accent in there. Isn't she from Minnesota? No. Nope. Don't don't say that. She is from Wisconsin. Oh, it's across the line. That's it right. is across the line. And she does take it down. Four point oh two. Round fifteen. Four point oh two to three point four. Uh, that was an absolute battle in leg number two. Abby Spot up 2 nothing. It's a race to four here on the loose side of the women's. The winner of this will make it to the fourth place match where they will take on the winner of – I love how Abby tried to, like, just hit the board to, like – yeah, you can't go back now. No, it's just Abby's turn. It doesn't matter. Where's the round out at in this format? Is there any? No. no. There's not. This could go on forever, technically. Yeah. That's a bold move, Burn. <laughs> TOC would have a field day with that because there are women who literally, their whole goal is just to round out. And never leave the 20s. Yep. That would cause a that would cause a bit of an uproar, if you ask me. But uh, I let's put it this way: I haven't noticed it, so has not been an issue. Abby trying to be aggressive and play a little uh, jump, jump the numbers. Okay, then tax that nineteen. Looks to fill it up. Takes a look at the 20. Yeah. Yep. And I think at the same time, she's saying, thanks for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Oh. That question in the chat, who's won the men's cup? We're still going. Oh, yeah. This is the top six match for the ladies' side. And the men's side is a little bit further back than that. The king seat match is Alex Bowman, Leonard Gates. That will be coming to the streaming board. Don't you worry one little bit. Uh, and then Rick Henze is awaiting the winner of Dustin Holt, Elliot Mick, Milk, which is looking more and more likely like it's Dustin Holt, up 4-0. And then Garrett Kowski up 4-0 on Jesse Johnson. He will get the distinct honor of playing Mr. Danny Baggish in the next round. 
where Garrett Rakowski has been a bit of a giant killer on the loose side of the bracket. He's been taking down quite a few people. Took down uh, Bob McCoy, Jesse jo Johnson, David Fadham. Um, so it's been a run for from Jesse. However, the bullet, Rakowski, hammering in with a 4-0 start. Who has taken out Mike Maloney and Mike Carter. Mm -hmm. And Mark McGrain. And Darian Akubi. Akubi. Uh, that's four. Uh, he's run through from the very get-go. Lost his very first round match and uh, has rolled through ever since. And has not even been threatened with loss yet. Liz Tynan defeats Jay Cole 4-0. We mentioned that earlier. Abby Spot. Caitlin Myers going on currently, if you didn't know that. It's in front of you. As Caitlin throws in a big seven mark to complete the control here in this leg. Domination. Liz Tynan waiting on the winner of this. And then the queen seat match, Chrissy Grimmel, Lisa Yee. So a lot of action still heading your way here on USA Darts. Sean Green, Ryan Mooningham, Will Stewart will be right back. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to stay here. <laughs> Sean was already halfway out the booth, and we had to drag him back in and set him down. Bullseye! She will return. And Abby will practice for a round for the next leg, which is 0-1, so it really doesn't do any good for her to be shooting these numbers, but she just wanted to make, me, make sure I was wrong on what I said. For the leg. Just needs one. And overachieves at the end of the day with two. 4.14 average from Caitlin Myers. That is why uh, she has been able to make her way to this spot. Absolutely throwing fantastic darts. Let's head to 01. Full bowl, master out. Full bowl means that the 25 segment of the bullseye and the 50 segment of the bullseye are both worth 50 points. So the ladies will shoot at bowls as that is a much bigger service area than the triples are in this game for a slight advantage on the triples. Both ladies start off with low tons, big low tons, which is the minimum that they are looking for every single round. They know that if they don't do that, they're in trouble. 150 plays 150, uh, low ton, minimal, like you said. The thing that really could set one of the girls apart is your opponent goes 150, and then you have a non-bull turn. That's what really can get you. Do you want me to say something that's going to confuse you? No, don't confuse me. I'm tired. Good. Uh, Anyways, go ahead. I'm gonna, I promise you, you will not know what my sentence is going to mean. You ready? Go for it. I know he doesn't look like much, but the gentleman sitting back there in the maroon has ridiculous riz. <laughs> you like the hoodie. Nope. That was a good guess, though. It has nothing to do with the hoodie, although it might. He wears the same color all the time. It must be the one color that matches his eyes more than anything else. Or is it the hat? Nothing to do with his wardrobe, although it might uh, overall help that for someone. I don't know. Maybe. There he is. Riz God, Trigger Shane Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's us putting you up, buddy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, Just as that Abby was so goes 150. Big hat trick from Abby Spot. And the first bullseye was missed because Sugar Shane got more camera time. <laughs> 111 can easily go. 11. Hey, triple 13 works just as well, and I love triple 13. I Caitlin guess more so than Caitlin. Love it, just pulled it. Abby, 80 left. We saw her play very conservative on uh, 60, but bullseye double 15 will be the move here. Nope, she's going to chase it. She's got to go 45 here. Yeah, 15. 15 or 45. Double 15 or triple 10. It is double 15, and what a recovery after that first start from Abby Spot. Three to one lead and a break of throw. And a race to four. 
There we go again. Back to Riz. You're up again. Yeah. <laughs> why? He wants to know why. Why? <laughs> we don't know why either. But for some reason, the Riz is there. You tell us. <laughs> we got a big thumbs up. <laughs> Scott, it's a 150 right there. This is uh, the alter ego of Abby Spot where uh, she just starts dominating completely. We almost got attacked, I'm pretty sure, by Murph. Oh, I have no clue. Three legs for Abby, one leg for Caitlin. Abby, last turn, 150. Does she back it up? They both have two legs, Ryan. They both have two legs. Okay, dart legs. Oh. oh I was wondering what you were talking about there. Yeah, Abby up three to one here and uh, doing everything possible to complete this match. Uh, perfect. Perfect through the first six. We've seen her do this in the freeze. Are we going to see her do it here? Continues on with that 50. Backs it up with the second one. Give us a third. She's still perfect. I'm looking at a perfect leg. Perfect through nine. Can she complete it with the 51? Don't blow it now, Abby. We just want one perfect leg of darts, please. And let's be honest, this is a perfect leg of darts for this format. It is the most reasonable way to get to a perfect leg in this format. Trip 17. Gets it, it to win the match. Abby Spot. I got to give you a clap on that. Take a bow. Nice 10 darter. 50.10 is the best you can do in that format. And she wins it in style. Abby Spot, perfect leg of darts. Abby Spot's opponent, Liz Tynan, your final four of your women. Chrissy Gremmel, Lisa Yee, which will be up next. Queen seat match, fourth place match, Abby Spot, Liz Tynan. Guys, we're going to take a short break. Sean Green, Ryan Mooneyham, Will Stewart will be right back with more action. The conclusions right after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2024 Dark Horse Classic and Booyah Cup Finale. This is the Booyah Cup Finale King Seat Match featuring, well, two players that really need no introduction, and that is Leonard Gates coming out with a 1-2-1, one, one, taking on Alex Spellman. Both of them former Continental Cup champions for the CDC. Both of them USA representatives for numerous, at numerous events. Uh, of course, Leonard Gates, the greatest senior player of all time. The only player to win all three majors in the senior tour. And uh, he's played in the UK Open a couple weeks ago. His accolades are endless. The and nine daughter in the Modus, yeah. nine daughter in the Modus series. I mean, yeah, it's it's incredible. And you got, you know, of course, you got Spellman. I mean, ninety-eight average on the World Championship stage. Lost a stellar match against Ryan Joyce. Um, you've mentioned more than once Continental Cup champion. Mm -hmm. um, goes by the Jackal. Two-time ESPN champion. Only yep. only only champion of that mm -hmm. event. He's been playing for a much shorter time than Leonard Gates. He's been playing since nineteen ninety-four. Or 30 years, whereas Alex Spillman um, has been playing for a while, but really has not been, is kind of still relatively new to the big scene. Um, COVID and BDG's live stream uh, won a sponsorship through them to start playing some stuff, and uh, next thing you know, he is uh, hitting higher and higher gears. And what great counting there from Alex Spillman to leave the 167. Uh, especially compared to Leonard Gates, who left 162, which is not a finish. Looking to set up for this round right here. One of that 54 to go to leave 36. Didn't happen. 167 for Spellman. Got to finish on the bullseye. Yep. But he gave himself the opportunity by leaving what he left. He did not like it as soon as it left his hand, and you could tell. Yeah, you can see his hand kind of slightly jerked, yep. and it pulled high. That was a frustration uh, expression as soon as the dart released from his hand before it even reached the dartboard. 8 or 16. It'll be double 16. And Leonard Gates gets it done in leg number one despite the bogey leave. And sometimes just it doesn't matter. You're still good enough. And uh, 15 darter will do. Spellman going to start cricket. One nothing score line, Leonard Gates. These holds and throws are going to be dynamic and, and in a lot of ways must-haves for the players, and then the breaks are going to be huge. Here is Soldier stepping up. Looking at the 19s. Up. Torn. Nope, stayed no, there. No, His no. eyes are tricky sometimes. Yeah, I, I was – also, he rocks a little bit, so he pulled that shoulder up. I'm thinking, is he taking a look at that 20? He, and he stayed on that 19. Well, and he also uniquely, I have to I have to tell you, looks down at the screen after every dart, and then his eyes look back up. So he's almost making split-second decision, decisions often. Split and second. I'm going to start talking eventually. There we go. I'm back. Had a reboot. My bad. This time takes a look at that 20 yeah. after two 19s. Two trip 19s in there. I don't know if you noticed that about him, but he does that. I don't know how one is able to accomplish that. Spellman. Yeah, not happy with the five there. It's one nothing. Leonard Gates. And leg number two here. King seat. The winner of this one is guaranteed, meaning will not leave with less than $2,500. It's a pretty good spot to be in when, if, if, uh, when the king seat. And they have already guaranteed themselves at least $1,300 by making it to the king seat match. So not a bad payday overall, no matter no, what from no. this point. But... Uh, First place is a bit of a doozy of a difference. $7,500 with $5,625 in cash. $2,500 for second. And uh, that's not even mentioning that there are a lot of people sweating this Booyah Cup finish uh, that, I don't know, have just a couple bucks here or there that they had lying around on a, on a couple of players that are still left in this bad boy. 
I know what you're talking about. Quite a little payday. It is also the name of a city. <laughs> and it is a huge payday. Nice payday. To the I 16th. Almost, I almost kept going with adjectives, but I decided to stop myself ahead of time. Gotta fill it up here for against Gates. Ooh, and switch the 19th move to there. The 19s. Yeah, I don't know if... I think that was probably a little early. I think I would have well, tried at least the other 16 in there. Or probably grab the 15s. Gates has not missed. This, has that surprised... That cannot surprise you at this point with how he's been playing every single match that we've seen so far today. This is this is Leonard Gates at his highest quality. Only well, manages three. Not happy with that turn. No, Spellman's going to get broken here. Uh, it is... A long format that they're both very used to playing against each other often in this exact format of legs in the CDC. Six, six point, five seven. I was gonna say six five six point five seven. Chrissy Grimmel's up one nothing over Lisa Yi. Uh, this is the Queen Seat match going on at the exact same time. Which is wonderful. Uh so we'll try and get you as much coverage of both that we can. It is a 2 nothing lead here for Leonard Gates in the king seat of the men's side. Coverage for the Booyah Cup brought to you by USA Darts. Spellman, aggressive move there. Gates has been pointing him hard on that 20. Grabs the 19, singles the 19, closes the 20, forces Gates into the 18. And he responds. And responding well. Boom goes the dynamite. And that is a horse of a different color. Leonard Gates throws in three different troubles. Spellman, seven of his own. Uh, they're both averaging seven here early in this. And I can't believe they're already on the 16s. This is round three. <laughs> it didn't, uh, yeah, it's it's incredible to sit here and be able to call these matches and watch, <laughs> watch these darts being thrown in a level I have never played in. I can't even dream of these levels. No, I, it's just, it is. Uh, My mind wouldn't even allow me to. Uh, I, there's, not much, there's just not much more you can do to be perfect. And Spellman right there comes flying back with his own nine. Boom, closes the out the dynamite. Line. Closes out the board. Pushes him in in the 15s. Nope, he'll stay there. No. Oh. See, I was surprised. I thought he would stay there. He's normally going to stay there. Yeah, I got, this, this got really leg aggressive. Has been, and, yeah. Yes, this leg has been very aggressive. You just said it. Andy, honestly, he's being pressured here. And if he hit it, that was a huge, huge hit. Just like that was from Alex Spellman, albeit a little bit safer. But a 7.50 right now from Alex Spellman responding down 2-0 and a break of throw. Surprised Leonard did not go to the 16s on the last start, but... Spellman now has a bailout number if he needs it. And he's going to utilize it now. Might as well stay. Yep. Puts it back out of reach for Leonard to win. There he takes out that. So, a round later, we're in the similar circumstance that we would have been. Alex needs three. And he gets the three. Otherwise, Leonard only needed three. 6.50 for Alex Bowman. Breaks right back. Two to one lead as we head back to 01. And we're going to head on over to Chrissy and Lisa. Two nil. Chrissy Grimmel on top. That one is a race to five over there. Race to six right now in the men's side. Alex starting off with a 140. His 
target goal here is 12 darts. Gates up two. Uh, Spellman one. Two to one is the score line. Yep. We are back on throw. Count them on up. One, two, three for Mr. Leonard Gates. And that is an absolutely perfect dart for Spellman to follow. There is no way he doesn't hit a 180 here. Yeah. I Good, mean, call. There, I mean, there was, Good call. There was no chance he was not hitting 180 I mean, after the first two. If you've seen those first two darts go in, he does not move. Yep. He is so clinical on his shot. And Leonard's not going to miss either. Yep. Oh, it flights into the fives. That's unlucky. That's tough. But Spellman was going to get six from 181 no matter what. 96. I like that shot on the 121. You like that yeah, shot on I the do. 121. Especially in that situation mm -hmm. right there. All Gates can do is set up something and put a little pressure on the 76. It's got to be a little bit more than that. That's not bad on the pressure. Definitely more than capable of doing the 113 easily. Spellman, 76. Might only be one dart. It's two, double 14. Only needed the one, and it's two to two. All tied up early in the King Seat match of the Booyah Cup finale. Brought to you by Booyah Darts. To give you an update on the field, top five and fifth and sixth place matches, Dustin Holt down two to zero to Rick Kinsey. Garrett Rakowski two, Danny Baggish two. Oh, boy. And on the ladies' side, Liz Tynan currently is up one to nothing on Abby Spot. A lot of action still happening around this venue. And then Chrissy Grimmel's up 2-0 currently on Lisa Yee. And Chrissy went first in leg number three as well. Gates, two trouble visit, 137 scored, but Spellman start off with a big 140 again. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that that grabbed that last start and kicked into the five, and I know he didn't like that. Nice big 180 out of Mr. Gates. Spellman back at 266. Needs the 99 at least to set up for at least an out. We'll look to go bigger. Yeah, Gates definitely in the driver's seat here. Does leave the big fish if he gets a look at it. 84. Quick two dart combination. Just like that. Leonard Gates, 11 dart. Hold a throw. Only thing that would have done it for Alex Spellman in that leg was a nine darter. Yeah, I, it's Spellman left himself 170, but he just didn't have that opportunity. See the score line over here is Chris Grimmel is about to take a 3 0 lead in the Queen Seat match to get her over the halfway point. Up 3 0 in the Queen Seat. Spellman starts with a big seven. And uh, Garakowski up three to two on Danny Baggish now. Rick Henzie still up two to one on Dustin Holt. So other matches going on. And then Abby Spot, Liz Tynum 1 1 in that race to four over there in the ladies' side. Race to five on the men's uh, loser side. And another big seven from Alex Spellman. Do we have the makings of going the distance in this match? Man, it sure does feel like it, doesn't it? 
That being said, we've also seen both of these players hit a just unbeatable gear uh, at certain points on stream today. Thumb so. six zero over baggage soldiers six one over yeah. Maloney with ridiculous numbers. And I mean a million and little sevens. Back to back to back to back to back. I bet he hits another triple. Shocker! Seven mark. Nice big From turn Leonard there. Gates. And it's aggressive. It's really aggressive. Look, oh, Spellman, huge. Spellman's got to work with the 16s or 15s if he wants to point. First, he's got to do his gear of that 17. After he gets the 16. He'll grab that 15 now. Yep. He didn't even hit a seven mark. Six from Alex Spellman. Gives him still control. But uh, Gates needs a nine to really kind of make Spellman worry about the leg a little bit at this point. And that's with Leonard Gates throwing a 6.50 right now. To point out that he is uh, well behind in this leg with throwing a 6.50. And Spellman for the win of the leg with Leonard throwing a 6.50. Ooh, he bailed on dart on the last dart there. Smart last dart. A lot of bullseyes needed for Mr. Gates. Six would do him some fancy. You sound so British there. <laughs> what? Do him so fancy. All right, Spellman. Un mas por favor. Tie ball game. Big, big, big darts. Well, I'm not going to sing it, but oh, we're halfway there. We got a 3 3 score line. Both these guys are being pushed. Chrissy, double 11 needed. That would have made it 4 0. So Lisa Yee, a chance to put a leg on the board and maybe shift the momentum a little bit. Triple 19. Double 19. Cannot do single 19. And, uh, well, you don't need to see much to know that that is part of the storyline of that match right there. And it is 4-0. Chrissy Grimmel on Lisa Yee. And Spellman just did something awesome. Like a 7 mark. Darren Gates attacking the 20. And gets rid of the 19. Nice move. Nice, nice move. You're never going to believe this, but that was a 7. I'll tell you what, if the 7 sit like that in Vegas. <laughs> Here we go, Mr. Spellman onto the 18s. Let's find us a craps table immediately. <laughs> Another 7 mark <laughs> from Alex Spellman. At this point, it's becoming a joke. From the field, Rick Hensey, four, Dustin Holt, one. Wow. Fifth place. Wow. Fifth, sixth place match. And oh, my gosh. And here's the other score line. Garrett Rakowski, four, Danny Baggish, two. This is a race to five legs. So yeah. So not much needed to get into the fourth place match. My, oh, my. If there's anyone out there watching that match live and can give us some updates step by step, that would be, uh, you know, helpful to our psyche would be a good way to put that. Leonard Gates just hit a nine mark. And uh, follows it up with just a three. Again, a lot of money on the line. $7,500 to first place. The winner of this match is guaranteed the best opportunity at that. As Alex Bowman hits a seven. Um, 56 25 in cash there for first place. 2500 for second, 1300 for third, which is the lowest <laughs> the lowest that either of these players can finish. Fourth place 950. Fifth six 750, $750 each. And the payouts uh, go all the way to 32nd. So for, for qualifying for this event, you guaranteed guaranteed yourself $300. Abby Spot, Liz Tynan 
obviously battling in leg number three as it's still 1-1 over there. And to give you a quick update on the other side, 94 left for Casey Grimmel for the match. Now 76. Trip 20 will win it. And she does hit the trip 20 to win it 5-0 over Lisa Yee. So domination in the queen seat by Chrissy Grimmel. On the fourth place match for the ladies, Abby spot two, Liz Stein and one. That final four is top-notch players. Absolutely. Back at that trip 20. Looks to close the 15. Stays aggressive. Keeps them points of coming. That last start was weird uh, with the second dart going at the 15. That being said, you hit a triple 20. Who, I, there's nothing wrong with that. So who's to say? Single 15 to close. Trip 16 to close. He'll move, he'll move to get rid of them. That's, that's, in a sense, a coffin shot. Yeah, that's it. It's, I mean, he basically put this leg to bed. It is a hole to throw, which Alex will remind himself of at the end of the day. The blind draw is alive and well out there in the venue as well. How many? Yeah, that blind draw is a $1,500 $1, ad. It's almost worth the trip itself. Yeah, I was going to say, for good that players. Draw, quite a bit of money to be playing for. Garrett has is beating some, some named players that... He's a win now sponsor, win more sponsored player. And I think he was the least known of the win more sponsored players that had just come up, even though if, you know, you like people and you like darts, you'd love Garrett Rakowski. Um... I think he's showing a little bit why he was picked in that spot. And for most of us that know him, there was no doubt. No, no. The bullet can fly. Whammo two years ago, he had, what was that, four legs in one night where he threw perfect 501 legs? Yeah, they were just, it was just. Full bowl, 501 full legs. Full bowl, and it was just, everything he threw was a perfect leg. Yep. Spamel looks control, 140 on the turn. 401 back is Gates. Wants to lease a, lease a turn 40. He'll take them all, though. That's a 180 from Leonard Gates. Alex Spellman, 261. Spellman, not necessarily a must win leg, but pretty much must win leg. As he needs to tie this thing back up. A break of throw. Ooh, doesn't need that. And that's, that is a tough dart. Finds it on dart three, saves it a little bit, but whoa, that was uh, that was almost a disaster. Update: Danny Baggish is taking the league off Rakowski. It's four to three. Gates puts a lot of pressure on the one three six. If you're Spellman, you assume Leonard hits that. Seventy six. So this must go. Go double? Or, no, it stays there. Double eight for a huge checkout and to save. Bam. Nice. The tie ball game. 4-4 nice. scoreline now. Big, big checkout from Alex Bellman. Now we're down to our uh, – now our thoughts are, are we going to go the distance? We haven't gone oh, to the I, distance on the stream. We have not. And I said about ten minutes ago, it definitely was feeling that way, and I, my feelings have not changed. Especially with Leonard Gates starting off with a big 180 right out the gate. And after that first start, Leonard Gates is guaranteed 12 darts uh, at least to be able to take out the leg. So he has nine more darts at least in hand. Continues well, on with that trip 20. He won't need them. He won't need them. Mm, just pulls up to the ton 40. He'll return for 181. Spellman 361 back. Needs a, needs a ton 40 or better.
he wanted the 180, but mm -hmm. effectively does does the same thing with the 140. Yep. I mean, that's what you got to be there pressuring Gates. You got to be there. No idea, but I I like it now. No matter what, it got him low. Got him to a point where he had a good setup. It would have left either 76 or 51. Yeah, so mean, that's, that, that's not bad at it's all. It's not bad at all. I mean, they're both manageable outs. 11 for tops. Needed a different triple Ooh, than that. That one hurts. But effectively just a hold a throw for Leonard Gates. If he takes out this 51 right here. If not, he still will be back. Tops. Double 10. And Gator becomes one leg away from a potential king seat spot. And uh, best chance at a three-peat opportunity for for him. No one's ever three-peated in this event. He would become the first. No, yeah, well, it's only the third year. Here we go. Alex Spellman needs a leg to tie it up so we can go the distance. No one's ever beat Leonard Gates in this event. No one has. That's correct. Alex would like to be the first. And we know you guys see the board jumping a little bit on the screen. Um, we we see it. I, we don't. I, Maybe they turned up the base. I don't know. Maybe it's just been a long day of staring at the screen and it looks way wigglier to me than Oh, it than could it be is. someone has their hands on the truss or something. Huh? Could be the base in the building. Well, a seven mark from Alex Bellman. Let me know if you've heard that story already. Leonard Gates is averaging a seven, which is not surprising either. Ooh. As you've seen early, Chrissy, earlier, Chrissy Grimmel is the queen seat holder. The fourth place match on the women's side, Listine in three, Abby Spot two. It was two to one Abby Spot, so that one has flipped on its head a little bit. It's a race to four only. And look at this. Guys, uh, breaking news for you. As Alex Bellman gets a boom goes the dynamite. Garrett Rakowski has defeated the gambler Danny Baggish five to three. Danny Baggish is out in sixth fifth, sixth place. That was my pick to win this. On the other side, Rick Kinsey's holding a four to two lead on Dustin Holt. Spellman gotta do this right here to send us to a decider. Garrett Rakowski has taken out on the loser. He's run through the loser side. He has he lost his first round match and has since then def defeated Darian Akubi, Akobe, Mark McGrain, Mike Carter, Mike Maloney, Jesse Johnson, and now Danny Baggish. And in none of those legs or those matches did it go to a last leg decider where he was in threat of losing the match. Incredible. Incredible stuff. So Garrett finds himself in the fourth place spot. He will take on the winner of Dustin Holt, Rick Henze, which is looking like it's Rick Henze at this point, up four to two in a race to five. Speaking of race right here, we're, we are looking like we're going to go to the decider. Unless Gates can flip 16s and 15s back on Spellman. And then some. That'll be the good start of it. Throwing a 7.0, and the advantage is with his opponent. Seven point zero for Alex Spellman again. Just continuing to just kill him with sevens. Gator, back to back nines. I was gonna say back to back nines on that sixteen. Big and stuff coming. Starting to gain a little bit of an advantage, but still two wedges of high ground for Alex Spellman, and now the point lead. And he's throwing. Leonard Gates is not winning this match, throwing a seven point three three. A 7.33 is not is the struggling and, right and now to down stay in two the match. houses. And down two houses. If this starts to become the normal losing number, like, I'm never going to play darts again. I'll just sit back here and just keep eating my popcorn and sitting next to people I like and you two and <laughs> talking darts. Uh, I, I appreciate the fact that I'm allowed to sit next to you. Thank you. 
You are always allowed to sit next to me, Ryan. I appreciate that. Better gates. On, let's say back on Looking that on 16 another nine game. of the 16s. And that's a big testament there. 48 to 60 on the turn. He's still throwing a 7.25. And again, um, if this was a water polo match, uh, he would be uh, the kid that is just barely keeping his head above water, let alone playing. And another, another nine from Alex Bellman. 6.78 playing a 7.25. And it's not getting worse. Gates makes the move to get rid of the 20. Going to force Spellman either point the 18s or come after his 16. If he doesn't come after the 16s with a 113-point lead, I will be very surprised. 15s and bullseye. Almost a coffin shot. Almost there. Effectively becomes one. And again, Leonard Gates is going to lose this leg. He's averaging a 7.2 in a losing effort right now. He dropped he dropped below a seven, so I can I can accept it. A six point eight, I have never in my life tried a six point eight average, and uh it's going to lose this leg. And to be a down two houses too. Six point five six beats a six point eight, and the six point eight was never in control of the leg, and as high as seven point three three. Yeah, there's still two houses he was two houses down yeah. and hundred and thirteen points. And we are yeah. at a five five score line. Going the distance. <coughs> The winner of the cork started leg one and gets to start the final leg. Advantage Leonard Gates. Sir Leonard starts off with a nine. As if you expected anything else. Spellman going to look to match it on the 19s. And I would not be surprised if we see the best leg of the entire match right here. So far, so good. Boom goes the dynamite for both players. That is correct, folks. They are on fire. They're both on nines. They're both on the nine. This is insane. Oh, you had to do it. Well, yeah. That's. I knew it was going to eventually not happen. Okay, we can't. Darts isn't just a game of magnets where they just let it go and it goes exactly where it's supposed to go. I know it seems like that, folks. I'm telling you, it looks like that. This game is so hard. An average dart player does an average a 3.0. These guys are just... 8.33. This is gross. Speeding up on a 7.0. The only th This is the only thing that's going to take our job. It's just them playing, throwing so well that we just have nothing to say. Just like that. Nothing to say about this. Um, incredible performance from both players. And a last leg decider for the king seat. Uh, difference in prize is $5,000. And they're throwing their best leg of darts right now. And Gates now in control of the leg. Closes the 19. He's got three houses and the point lead. Forces Spellman into the 16. He's got to fill it up. Five's not going to be good enough, obviously. Five is just a terrible round right now. Spellman and that knows is not it. an exaggeration. Spellman knows it. He sure does. But then Gator's going to give it right back. Takes does the 15. Yep. Grabs Which, another house. Four houses up. 7.4. Playing against a 7.0. The 7.0 is being dominated right now overall. Again. Going first has been the difference overall. Both players throwing seven pluses like it's nothing. He's so upset about a seven right there. You can't throw a seven. You gotta throw a nine. Well how about that seven? That's probably good enough. That's a big seven right there. That's that's <laughs> that, that's huge. Three houses and the point lead. Do you go for the nine you. here? You do. You do, you do. Force that bull shot. Oh my gosh, does he do this? Yep, it's five to three in bowl race. Leonard Gates needs three. Alex Bowman needs five. And uh, that's a horse of a different color because it's they're both throwing seven three threes. Leonard Gates could beat a 7.33 right now. He's going to beat a 7.33 right now. 
A 7.33 just lost the last leg decider in the king seat of the Booyah Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, I have never in my life seen anything remotely close to that ridiculous leg of darts and for it to be worth so much. I don't understand how these players are able to consistently perform at this level. Ryan? Are you going to quit darts now? Like, uh, is that the? That, I mean, that's got to be it. Look, I, I guess I. I Congratulations, I, you two. Uh, you ruined the game for everyone else. I, I just need to sit in the seat because I can't do that. No, I don't think I could finger bang that thing that well. Well, no, I, I, I can't punch the board fast enough. I wouldn't be good at that. And guys, we're going to head to a break so we can uh, gather our our thoughts and uh, decide if uh, darts is. Now a new game. Uh, I'll give you an update from the field. Dustin Holt, four. Rick Kinsey, four. Oh, my gosh. That was 4-1. It was 4-1. And the winner will take on Garrett Rakowski, who has been running the bottom of the line there. And the ladies? And on the ladies' side, we have Liz Tynan bested Avi Spot, 43. So the third-place match will be Liz Tynan versus Elisa Yee up next. Uh I wouldn't go very far. I mean, no, I, don't I, go anywhere, guys. Wow. A lot of fantastic. I don't know about that. Fantastic, but uh, they're both still in the tournament, so probably that fantastic. Don't go anywhere, guys. Sean Green, Ryan Mooneyham, Will Stewart. We'll be right back right after this break. Women's History Month, A to Z Darts is celebrating by encouraging you to show your love for the ladies in our industry. We've dedicated a page on our website called Women in Darts, where you can browse all of our female signature darts and flights. If you don't see your favorite player, simply check with your local supplier. And don't forget to thank your female bar owners, league organizers, or the women that are employed with the manufacturers in darts. If you love our company, we're always proud to share that we have a strong female leadership and perspective here. We're led by a female CEO and general manager. We have women leading our online sales, wholesale, and warehouse departments. I myself act as the creative director for all of our brands, A to Z Darts, Magicwear, and USA Darts Production, where we live stream some of the best female talent in the world. There are so many women in darts that make our world go round, and we hope you take the time all your creation. Thanks for watching.
Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We got another interesting matchup for you. Dustin Holt, Garrett Rakowski. What is this, fourth place matchup? This is the fourth place matchup. That's correct. Awesome. This should be an interesting one. Garrett Rakowski coming out on top of Danny Baggish in his last round. This has been a crazy run. So this is from the loser's side. Dustin Holt has been able to best Ryan Gervis, Joey Mann, uh, Kevin Luke, Elliot Milk, and was down four to one and bested Rick Enzi five to four. Garrett Rakowski lost his first round, taking out Darren Kobe, uh, Mark McGrain, Mike Carter, Mike Maloney, Jesse jo uh, Johnson, and Danny Baggish to get to this point. The winner of this match will face Mr. Alex Spellman, with Leonard Gates sitting in the finale, waiting on the outcome of our next two matches. We'll go ahead and make our scoreboard at least somewhat legible here as we just lost the last name here. There we go. Sorry for that one, folks. Trying to do a little double duty as Sean takes a quick break. He's been on the mic all day, and though you enjoyed one, might as well give him one as well. Oh, so. yeah. You, you just you, you get uh, you want to stay fresh. You want to be ready. You want to be ready to go with, the, with everybody in the booth for our finals. So we got an interesting development going on on the women's bracket. We'll kind of explain that a little bit further down, but uh, it's not the ideal situation. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll discuss it here in just a minute. But for right now, this matchup between Dustin and Garrett's going to be a spicy one. I I you know they're just getting underway. I think we're going to see some big. Big nine marks in, included in those uh, cricket legs. We're going to probably see some sixes happen, I believe. High, f high five sixes. 
especially with the way that Garrett came out on top of uh, Danny. And Dustin, you mentioned he came out on top of uh, who in the last round? Rick Kenzie Rick. down four to one. Best Rick Kenzie five to four. That's no easy task, folks. No, it's not. You've got to feel confident in your skills when you when you come out on top over over Hensie. Uh, especially being down like that, as Garrett Rakowski will take the first leg of action here. As we'll get that adjusted. Just interesting things that we just seen earlier, this, the Spellman-Gates match. I was talking to Spellman after the fact with Sean, and, you know, it, it was it, it was the two rounds he talked about it only being a five and a couple rounds only being a seven, and then losing that opening bowl Yep. because he didn't get to start in the final leg. That could have that could have been the factor. It was that was the factor. It was incredible because any any day if if he's throwing a seven, he's most likely going to win the match. But when your opponent starts and he's throwing a seven, you're in a spot. You're in a pickle because then you have to pull out an eight in order to try to counteract what he's been able to do. So, yeah, it was a br that was all time perfect. I've already seen a couple posts on Facebook that are talking about that match was just incredible. That may be the best match I've ever seen in my life. Well, folks, it's the Booyah Cup. That's why it happened there. It's just the format calls for this kind of kind of big big hitting action. Will, you are not incorrect. We started this campaign the first year of the Booyah Cup. This is year three, and this is the level we're already at. Where do we go from here? How much more perfect can you get? Yeah, I mean, whew. unreal. Unreal stuff, what we saw there. The thing that's crazy, if you qualify for the Booyah Cup and you came in and you averaged over a five, you want to come back next year, but you want to be able to average a six. We're seeing the gentleman's losing throwing a 7-3-3. Three, three. One seven seven throws a one seven six. Three houses for Holt. Going to point. Looks to grab. The sixteens goodbye. Moving forward to the fifteens. Did not get it go. Murkowski up one to zero. Gonna have to have some fifteens. Gonna have to work with some stuff. He's down three houses. Yeah, he's gonna have to take advantage here. Hit a plenty, plenty of those fifteens. Six of them is nice, but nine of them would have been better. They would have put uh, Dustin in a, in a triple, uh, triple in the, and then some in order to get the outright lead. Dustin continues on in this leg. 6.2 versus 5.5 .5 on our averages. 257 defeating a 221 in points. Hold up three houses. Into the bullseye, Mr. Rakowski needs to go. Board did not register that double bull right, so he will be given uh, an opportunity to fix his score real quick. He did grab a second double bull, which makes a big difference because it now gives him the point lead. Just needs two. Does get two, but not the double bull to finish. Rakowski's going to have to stay on the bull. Yeah. We'll see if uh, Rakowski can stomp his feet in the ground here. Tough task. Ooh. Yeah, that miss is crucial. As uh, Dustin Holt. He's going to have to fix that bull. Holt doesn't need much. One to score, one to close on the bullseye. Got rid of the bull first. Just needs to throw a fat point. Fatty does. 5.7 defeats 4.83. One to one on our score line. First one to five.
see, there was a lot of love between these guys. And Dustin's kind of one of those guys that he's usually a hugger when it comes before the big match. Big old teddy bear. Big old teddy bear, I'll tell you what, yeah. Played numerous matches with him, and it always starts with a big hug. And, well, and, and your option. <laughs> and your option. Your option. That's what, the, that's what he always – your option. He'll hit you with it beforehand. So I've learned that. And now if I see myself coming up in the bracket, and I know we're going to probably meet, I'll hit him up the round before and say, hey, your option. <laughs> it's funny. Will and I, we've been together, what, oh, oh, could be up on our second year, third year? Oh, for sure. And yeah, how many different sure. times have we streamed at different locations throughout the country? And guess who's there? Dustin Holt. And it doesn't matter, but soft tip, steel tip, he's starting to – Play darts, and that and that's good for his development and, and his game in general. Um, we always say there's there shouldn't be a difference between soft tip and steel tip. You should be a dart player. Go go enjoy it. Rakowski going to the 19s here. Knows he just needs three to close it out and then back up for points. Just to remind you, the winner of this will play Alex Spellman for the opportunity to, to try to best our two-time champion, Leonard Gates. Hasn't been done yet. Reminder, next up will be Liz Tynan and Lisa Yee. As they'll compete on our uh, right-hand streaming board right after this one. Between Garrett and Dustin. Three women left, four men left. That's it. 32 competitors showed up today after qualifying for the Booyah Cup for the men. We're down to four. Yep, that's it, folks. You got Dustin Holt, Garrett Rakowski, Leonard Gates, Alex Spellman for the men. For the women, it's Chrissy Grimmel, Liz Tynan, and Lisa Yee. 16 ladies qualified. We're down to three. You never know. Next year it could be 32 ladies. Who knows Who with what knows? Jeremy's been able to do here with Booyah Darts. Just a quick uh, shout-out if you want to get involved in the Booyah Cup. All you got to do is go into booyahcup.com and check out how to get qualified. That has all the registration links and all the info you may need to know. We'll drop a link down in the chat for you as well for some easy access for later on. Kowski owns the, the high ground, looks to continue to work on it, gets rid of the 17s, moves to the 16s. Plays aggressive there. Not, slight, not keeping a very large point lead, but is able to grab another house and close out the 17s. Holt has got to work that 15. He's starting to work with it, but needs to stay there. That's, that's the thing. He can't really take a shot at the 20s because the 16s are open, and Vice versa. Exactly. 5.8 plays a 5.8 here. Hammers it down. Looking to close out the 15s and does so. Leaves himself the Bulls for the 2-1 advantage here. Oh, not what he wants on that third dart. Get, does get two. You just want to take a quick look here at the first throw from Garrett. You can see why they call him the bullet. Whams that dart into the dart board. Speaking he, of the second dart, bam into the board. Three for the win. Two to one is your score line. Nice token for Mr. Dustin Holt. 180. Murkowski 
Not happy with the 99 turn. Holt on his opening, 180. Can he back it here? What a shot from Dustin Holt. He's on a nine. Leaves the one four one with with Garrett back on four oh two. No really pressure added to the one four one. Doesn't have to go, but he'd love it. Don't jinx it. Ryan, don't don't say a word. I ain't saying a word. <laughs> I want to see it hit. Hush, hush, hush. Shh. Never. Never going to happen. It's never going to happen, Ryan. Spellman's opening match. <laughs> you can see Sean <laughs> back there saying by a mile. By a mile. Spellman's first floor match opened up with a nine. But we didn't get it on stream. Still, hey, perfect execution from Dustin. It may not be a nine, but he sets up that 10 dart leg. And he's going to get probably another look. We'll see what uh, Garrett can pop, uh, do here. 180 to leave 141 for himself. Nice 140 on the turn. Doesn't leave an out. Double eight for Holt to make this a 2 2 score line. And there he goes. Gets the leg. 2 to 2. Just like mentioned. You see, there's no <laughs> these guys. Every after every leg, give yourself a, a giving each other a pat there. A lot of love between these guys. Markowski going to open up with a ton eighty. Does it? Does so. Keep it right here. See if Dustin can do the same. Back to back, question mark? Yes, sir. <laughs> Having fun with it, folks. <laughs> You're dang right they are. I love every bit of it. Oh, pulls it. We wanted to go back to back nice. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Dustin still on a possible first opening 180. Are they going to shoot the same numbers? I guess they told each other, you go 180, <laughs> I go 180, you go 100, I go 100. And then we'll play from there. What do you think? Seems like it. Garrett will want another triple. Gets another triple, leave 81. We'll see how he attacks this uh, when he comes up here. I like the 57 for 24. And, and it's 57, 24, or 45, 36. Mm -hmm. What you, what you going to choose here? I don't shoot that 45 as much he's, as I do 57. I think he's going to go. Yeah, he's going to go 57. Inside 12, double six. Oh, wow. And you can see the background. Look at the two gentlemen back there that were the same thing. Oh. Holt with an opportunity to snag the leg here for a break of throw. 51. 50. Boom. Boom, baby. What a big shot for Dustin Holt. To break. The throw of Garrett Rakowski and put him in a three to two position, needing just two legs here to advance. We have a question what's going on with the ladies' bracket? Uh, the very next matchup here is Lisa 
or Lisa Yi versus Liz Tan in third place match. So, so we'll have that one up. Yep, that they're holding that match until after these guys finish. So we'll get uh, the conclusion of your Booyah Cup here on the stream. Not missing out on anything, folks. I guarantee you, we wouldn't do that to you, especially in this critical point of the bracket. <clears throat> if you are experiencing any issues on Facebook, head on over to our uh, YouTube platform. We have been noticing that numerous people have been saying they've been experiencing some issues on Facebook. We're not coming up with anything, knock on wood, on our end. So. No, and I've been watching both. I've got both Facebook and YouTube pulled up on um, uh, two different devices, and the YouTube's been smooth. Good. Good stuff. Highly confusing for me as a European. I don't doubt it, especially with the cricket format here. That's usually a common common thing that's said here. Um, Got to have three numbers to close, or three um, marks to close, so that can be achieved by three singles, a double and a single, or a triple. Once you have that closed X and your opponent doesn't, you can open on that. Big nine mark out of this hole. That was huge. That was huge. Oh, pulls in underneath. Not happy with that turn. Does manage to get another chip 18 in there. Vanish goes back right back to hold. That last nine mark was a huge turn. Set up the point values and get two houses. Big close there. Back to points or down to... Close out a number, another nine for Dustin Holt. Nine plays a nine. 7.5 right now, eclipsing the 5.67 out of Garrett Rakowski. Wow. Six, five, seven, five in this leg for these two. Round number five. Moving over is Garrett. Needs to place a double bull here to keep Dustin out there with a free shot. For the win, for the leg. Big shots. Take the bull and the four to two advantage here. <laughs> Remember, it's the first one to five. And right now, holds up four to two. Yep, one leg away. Now we know Rakowski can hold here and break back. And, and you just saw there, although Rakowski's in a tough situation, no love lost. He gives a slap there. There's, like I said, that's that's. A lot of Dustin, but a lot of Garrett, too. They're both very, very uh, top-notch individuals. Let's just say that. They're very friendly. <clears throat> Rakowski wants to capitalize on that high ground. Looks to gear the 19 first. Oh, he's wasted two. Yeah. He's going to have to close it. Oh, and he kicks out. Does he leave the door open for Dustin Holt? Holt, 57 points there on the triple. Can take a look at the high ground. Looks to move. Oh, and he just pulled it to the right. Vantage comes right back to Rakowski. And that's what happens. Your, your hits are big, but your misses can be bigger. Smartly gets rid of the 19. Pushes back to the 20. 33. 
Holtz got the 20, or Rakowski got the 20s. Holtz needs that 18. Not happy with Dart 2. We'll stay there. Get seven there from Garrett, or from uh, Dustin, sorry. Makes Garrett collect on the triple before he can possibly take a look, but yeah, I didn't think he would in that situation. Just try to gather some more points, put the pressure on. Holt continues on with that 18. Aggressive shot there, Will. What do you think of that? Hey, it got the job done, didn't it? Man. 277, 260 here. Pushes Rakowski down in the, into the lower grounds. Needs that 17 to go. Dustin Holt, four, get Rakowski, two. First one to take five legs. We'll move on for the for a spot in the third place match and a chance to play Alex Spellman. Dustin Holt's doing the business. Gets rid of that 17. Trips the 19 twice. Nice nine mark. 16s and 15s is about all Rakowski's got to work with. But he can fill it up right here and put some pressure back. Good nine there from Garrett. Let's see, six, six, five, one, seven here. Oh, that's difficult for, for Dustin. What, what? Op uh, opens the door. I was going to say that door, that trip 15 goes twice. Could be aggressively take a lose at 18. Oh, oh, he wanted that. You could tell. Look at the grin on the teeth there. Oh. <laughs> he knew. He knew. Yeah, I'm glad. Adam is saying, this is the best match on light. And Trevor Quick says, obviously you missed the king seat match. There's no doubt about it. This is a good match, but that king seat match may go down as one of the best matches that we've seen you know, I, I, in a I, while. Right now we have got a stellar match going on, 5.43 going against the 6.4. But, guys, when that thing is post-clipped and put back out, oh, why don't goodness. you go back and slowly watch that level of play? Wow. I, I have the opportunity to talk about that match and call that match. Will, me, Sean, we all were just an amazement. Those, at the, end of that thing. the mic shut off and we all went, holy, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? But here we go, Garrett. Oh, he needed six of them right there. To the bull. Interesting spot here for Rakowski. I mean, it's a big, big ass, but he, and he can do it here with the bulls. Not going to happen now. Dustin needing just the one to advance. Into the third place match. That'll do it. Give big shout out to Garrett Rakowski. Lost his opening match 6 2 to Kevin Luke. Went and ran the gauntlet all the way to the fourth place match and took out a lot of big hitters along the way. Dustin Holt went himself, he was coming through the back of the bracket. It's now going to book his place to the third place match against Alex Spellman up, coming up soon. That was. That was a good one. Uh, Dustin Holt 
And Garrett, big hug afterwards, but Garrett's a little salty with himself. He usually, you know, he, he expects some stuff, some things from himself. But, uh, all righty, here is what I got for you, folks, and I hate to do it, but it's it's what's going to happen. Yeah. We've got Liz Tynan vor- versus uh, uh, Lisa Yee. That's about to happen. Chrissy Grimmel is in your queen seat spot. Unfortunate circumstances have arose where – Chrissy is, she's been progressively getting ill throughout the day. And uh, I think she's elected to back out and go get some rest, relax a little bit, try to get feeling better. So with that being said, all three players have elected that this will be your final. One person will take first, one person will take third. Chrissy Grimmel will take second because she is in that queen C spot. Now, whatever you feel about that is whatever you feel about that. That's what we've got for you. Decisions were made. There we go. That's what's going to happen. So no matter what, Liz Tynan or Lisa Yee will be crowned your champion. This match has now became very interesting, as Sean tells me. There is a difference between over $3,000. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yep, so that that's a massive difference. A massive pressure has been added to this one. I'm kind of excited to see what happens. We do want to say, Chrissy, we hope you get well. We totally understand how things happen. Um, we're, we're glad that there was a compromise set up for this, but, and we're going to roll with it. So uh, this will be your final. Up next, Liz Tynan, Lisa Yee. I hope you're excited, folks. A doozy of a matchup for your Booyah Cup Women's Championship. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2024 Booyah Cup Finale Women's Final here. Uh, again, for those of us just joining, uh, Chris Grimmel uh, not feeling well. Uh, talked to these ladies, and it was agreed, even though she is in the queen seat, that she is getting second place. What that means is that this is a race to four, like it would have been anyway. Um, but the difference is now not third place and an opportunity to potentially double dip Chrissy Grimmel, which is very difficult to do no matter who you are in any format whatsoever, especially a longer format. Um, you now are playing a race to four because uh, you're going to be the queen seat or you're going to be the champion mm -hmm. of the Women's Booyah Cup by winning this match. And uh, the loser of this match is getting third place, which is $750. First place for the Booyah Cup on the women's is $4,000. So, bullseye. And big bullseye there from Lisa Yee. one nothing score line in favor of her. Uh, that's a difference in of $3,250 uh, between these two ladies in a race to four. Incredible storylines have developed all day. Incredible darts have been thrown all day. Um, yeah, I mean, you... Liz Tynan, Lisa Yee, Chrissy Grimmel, the final three. It's down to these two ladies. Um, all of them great, fabulous start players. Um, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm okay with any one of them yep. being the, the Booyah Cup champion, especially when, you you know, you've got a situation where one has to has to pull out. Well, boom goes the dynamite from Liz Tynan. And uh, we're seeing why both of these ladies are here in this spot. A 41 average from Lisa Yee in the first leg to take that one. Liz Tynan just starts off with a little nine, little nine mark. Yeah, just out the gate, a little nine mark. Yeah, just out on your 20s. Liz Tynan from Chicago. Lisa Yee originally from the Hoosier State in Indiana, but currently residing in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a little bit warmer in there. She said it's been cold up here. She made the right move, I'm going to be fair. Speaking of moves, not going to be happy just only grabbing a 17. Big advantage for Tynan. Yeah, we absolutely want to make sure to, to our thoughts are also with Chrissy that uh, she feels better and hopefully it's nothing uh, too serious and she can bounce back from it quickly because uh, I know at the end of the day it was probably not easy for her to make that decision. That's a lot of money. You're just kind of le letting go. Yeah, however, I mean... And you came here for this opportunity. Yeah, a lot fly it up, so everything. However, you if you awful. medically cannot uh, continue on, yeah. uh, you just have to, you have to do what you got to do. It didn't matter in any sport. Yep. It didn't matter if it starts. It didn't matter if it's, you know, you know, baseball, football, anything. Anything. If you medically cannot continue on, then you have to pull out. It's just part of, part of life. Well, Lisa has made a decision to just, you know... Take a break this leg. Yeah, and we'll tie this thing up 1-1. One, one. We'll let Liz just throw these darts and carry this one. And, uh, and Liz, the, but she's like, I'm going to show you what a 5.5 yeah. looks like. And uh, by the way, we're playing this exact game next round. And if you do that again, uh, thank you for the 2-1 to one lead yeah. and the break of throw. But right now, this is just a hold of throw for Liz Tynan at the end of the day. So, Lisa, no panic needed here. In the bull, Lisa trying to get back on the board. Not going to manage with that second dart. She goes ahead and just practices her first dart, first dart for the next throw. Potentially first dart for the next throw. Stays right there. No reason to move. No, she got the fly off on the 16, too. Now, if I'm Lisa, I'm hitting two bulls and celebrating the fact that I pointed and that I am not skunked, uh, meaning you get at zero points in a leg of cricket. And she does get on the board with the points. See if she says anything. I would. This is a perfect time to do so. Makes you feel better about the fact that you just got whooped in a leg. Did you say whooped? With a capital H. And she did not do that. So I guess we're just not the same person. Three turns on the bull. Tynan only manages one. Lisa hits four bowls again. <laughs> I 
this has been nothing short of an absolutely phenomenal, fantastic, exciting, uh, edge of your seat, top performance uh, out of the men's, out of the ladies. We saw a perfect 10 darter from Abby Spot. Uh, we've seen ridiculous averages uh, from the men all day long. Leonard Gates is a man possessed right now uh, by a better Leonard Gates, which is just scary um, when you really think about it. We had Danny Baggis got fifth, times. sixth. Yeah, Kevin Luke was on three nines. Yep, after six darts. Um, Danny Baggis gets fifth, sixth. Mike Maloney finishing uh, worse than that. So a couple of shocking exits early f for some favorites, um, which is going to happen in this type of event. How about Garrett Rakowski? Yeah. A losing's opening round and runs rattle six or seven off in the loser's bracket to make it to the fourth place position. Stopped by the one and only Dustin Holt. Yeah. Um, so who also has made a deep run in the loser's bracket. That will let you guys know what's coming up. Still left to go. Two matches remain. Potentially three matches remain, technically. Uh, it will be the third place match of the men's. Dustin Holt versus Alex Spellman. Alex feeling pretty good, which is not losing to Leonard in the King Seat match because, uh, well, he shot a 7.33 in the last league decider and still lost. So not a whole lot you could do, although I'm going to be fair. Here's what he said. Well, there was I had a couple fives in there, so uh, I still th felt like I could, shot, could have shot better. <laughs> I know. I was in the conversation. <laughs> I said, I am so excited to be able to say that to the chat later on that you said that. So, anyway, Alex Bowen feeling pretty good. Dustin Holt uh, had a huge comeback to win early in the loser side um, against a very tough opponent, and since then has uh, – just continued to shock the world. 5-0 victory. Dustin Holt wins Rick Henze 5-4. 5-2 over Garrett Rakowski, finally ending his streak and uh, getting to this point. A lot of great darts left to go here in our Booyah Cup finale. It's the third year, and uh, they are right. Third time's a charm because this one has been fantastic and fantastic. Uh, and fantastic and fantastic and stellar. Well, we can think of every everything that's been great. You can think of everything that's been I'm great. I'm going to think of everything that's great. I'm going to tell you why. Because I have wow. I have had the ability to sit in the booth. Oh, you and stop call it. Why do you keep doing that? You keep turning it that team. way. Back to the match. <laughs> you know that's the only thing that works. <laughs> Liz stepping up on the 17s. Steals those. Looking for a nine. She'll take seven. Coming into this matchup, let's look at these averages from these two ladies from the qualifiers that they played in to get to this moment. Liz Tynan was your five seed uh, in this Booyah Cup, and she only played the last four qualifiers, and that was two second-place finishes and two third-place finishes, uh, consistently making the top three in very difficult fields. And then Lisa Yi got it done early by winning the first qualifier, uh, guaranteeing her a spot. And she ended up coming into this uh, one of the last in points because she didn't need them anymore. And uh, it's always nice to get it done early and not to worry about qualifying later on down the line. And uh, she's done nothing but perform extremely well here. The actual overall averages for these ladies after all of that was discussed. 3.93 and a 31.15 for Liz Tynan. And for Lisa Yee, a 3.83 and a 30.43. Uh, it doesn't get much closer than that overall. So incredible stuff. It I is mean, it's no surprise that this is a battle. No, it's just incredible. 3.75. Liz taking the this leg off a little bit compared to Lisa doing that last leg. Oh, just misses on that third, third dart. Wanted that bull to fall. Big advantage right here for Lisa Yee to get the leg. Yeah, I would be very surprised if Liz came back to win this leg. It might be more shocking than a 7.33 losing a leg in cricket. No, Lisa would have to miss everything. A lot, yeah. Which Lisa just does not do. No. And you can see, like, that's almost one of those situations where Liz is just kind of done with the leg, which makes perfect sense. She's just ready for Lisa to be done with the leg, too. 
Long format. It is two to one now. It's a race to four. Again, this is your final of the Women's Booyah Cup uh, with Chrissy Grimmel, Grimmel getting second place. The winner of this first place and $4,000, $3,000 in cash and your Booyah Cup Women's Champion. Either lady would be extremely deserving of this title. And that was a break of throw from Liz Tynan in that one. Or sorry, Lisa Yee won that one with a hold of throw. Yeah. I confused myself. No, it's been good. We've been we've been seeing such amazing darts thrown all day. You can, you're afford to make a mistake every once in a while. Doesn't happen very often. When you work with Sean Green, he doesn't make mistakes. Uh, that we <laughs> like we, to talk about. That we like to talk about. That's right. <laughs> anyway. Unless they're really big, and then we will talk about them all day. There we go. And back to the match. Look at this from Liz Tynan. Gets the low ton. Doing her job. Let Lisa start off with a hat trick. See if she can stay perfect. She shot a 42 in the last 01 leg, the first leg of the match. And honestly, the best part of the cricket legs for her, the first cricket leg, was her bowl. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you know that those are firing on all cylinders. One more of those would be very helpful, and she gets it. Fills up a hat trick at the right time. Lisa Yi can put a lot of pressure on the 126, but a two bowl finish for Liz makes that a, a pretty decent opportunity to check out. Whereas that's going to be a difficult check out. Yeah. Doable. It's doable with the master out. Bull Bull double 13. It's the route that she will probably go. Yeah. Reminder if you're just joining us and wondering what master out is, uh, soft tip darts, that means you can go out on the bullseye. The triples or the doubles. Uh, you can not single out. Uh, a fun fact from earlier, after talking to Abby Spot um, during my break in the last leg, uh, that came back to bite Abby very hard because she had no idea it was master out until she needed to know and didn't know. And that was against uh, that was in the fourth place match that she played against Liz Tynan, where she bust by hitting a single 15, needing 15 points. Oh wow. And then Liz took it out. Hey, congratulations as a Chiefs fan. Yep. Oh, that's that's a tough. Now only one dart will be given. It's on double 16. And she hits it anyway. Great recovery. You always expect to hit the 50, and then when it doesn't go, and it leaves you an odd number that's gross, now you're panic mode. But she stays calm, cool, and collected. Two to two score line. Lisa going first in this 0-1 leg. There is nothing between them at this point. Setting up to be a great finish. And again, I need to remind you, a $3,250 difference in a best two out of three at this point. I keep fidgeting. Fidgeting? Hold yep. on. With the pen. Hold on. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. No, apparently it make, it's making noise that they can hear. Hold on. Hold That's on. the whole purpose. I'm trying to Ryan. fidget for you. Back to the match. 399 plays 388. This is an important moment in this match. Yes, sir. You're fidgeting. If Lisa Yi uh, holds her throw here, she'll be one leg away from the title and will guarantee at least an opportunity to throw for the match in the last leg decider. If Liz wins this leg, uh, Lisa is in trouble because Liz will be throwing for the match in the next leg, and it will be cricket. Nothing between them after the first six darts. Oh, just outside, almost, almost for the hat trick. One thirteen low ton. At the end of the day, it ends up being about the same thing because if she would have hit the bullseye on the last start, one eighty-two would not have been a look either. Yeah. Looking to set this up. Essentially, still right at where they should be on throw. But this is an important spot for Lisa to 
Hit another bullseye here. Gets that done. Leaves a steady ton. That's easy in this type of format for this type of talent. Needs one more. Put the pressure on. Under pressure. You didn't uh -huh. do that dum dum no. dum 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 dum. That's fine. Dum 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 dum. dum. <laughs> Back to the bowl. <laughs> Lisa Yi with the win. She Next is now leg. one leg away from the title here. Three to two score line. Lisa will have an opportunity to throw for the title no matter what. Liz will start off this cricket leg. This is all the fixins of going the distance. And how would you like to play one leg for a difference of three thousand two hundred fifty dollars? I'd be happy with a difference of twenty five dollars, <laughs> let alone that kind of money. I don't know how to respond to that, Ryan. But we're gonna move on from it. <laughs> Good old Joplin, Missouri. I ain't from Joplin. I'm from Springfield. Oh, okay, sorry. Don't give me that. Give, give me that title. <laughs> my bad. That's my like, bad. That's like living in Wichita. Oh, oh I'm so Lord. sorry. <laughs> or Davenport, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> or Pendleton, Indiana. Yep. All the same boat. There's the East. Trying to just match. Unable to do quite that. Mike Smith, yes, would be the answer to your question. And I will set it up for you uh, after this leg. Because I think a lot of people are annoyed with hearing it again. <laughs> Only three from Lisa Yi. And Liz now a chance to really cement control. She's definitely going to do that. Big darts there from Liz Tynan. And Lisa needs a lot of work to be done. And she's going to start it off right here. Oh. After the first dart, it's frustrating. Yeah, then you go, over, then you go fat 18, and then you pull out, and you're like, ah. I needed that turn. Big monster seven from Liz. Really puts her in the driver's seat for this leg. Absolutely. She wants to tie this up for a one leg shootout. It's looking more and more likely. Great darts from Liz Tyne. Another seven. Just being absolute relentless in this leg. A 5.83. Plays a 4-6. Both of these ladies would de be very deserving of the type Booyah Cup champion for the women's. Liz closes out this leg. We're going to have a one-leg difference to find out. Lisa Yi will go first. Oh, yeah, Abby also didn't know what alternate start meant, I guess, because she thought that you would just diddle on the last leg again. Back to the match. Just letting you know the insight that I got that was just shocking. Lisa, and to answer all your questions, I have no idea in the chat. Liz, to send us to a very last leg decider, and that was dead center bullseye on the first one, and then miss miss. And she is so excited that uh, Lisa gets to practice her bowls again. Or whatever she wants to practice here. It's going to be bowls. All right. One bowl needed to send us the distance. And again, with Chrissy Grimmel uh, falling ill after the king seat match and ill enough to give up her spot in and chance of her first place, her best chance of first place. Uh, 
She is taking second place. It was agreed upon by all three ladies that this is the final. One leg to decide it all. What? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yep, I agree. And we have an update. It is, as much as we love last night's deciders, it might still happen, but we're not in it yet. It is a 3-3 scoreline, but because this has been moved to a final, um, it makes perfect sense to make this a best out of nine legs. You can see it updated on our scoreboard. Um, that was just none of us knew. And I don't, and the ladies Let's say we're, just, we were, were just playing a race to, se race to seven as well, so yeah. um, they will play the last two legs offline. Uh, does that mean that they will finish an, with 0-1 then? Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm going to stop talking again. Thank you, Mr. Jeremy. Appreciate yeah, that. appreciate the update. Appreciate that. From uh, tournament director Jeremy Byrne. Again, uh, this has been nothing short of absolutely fantastic. And uh, third time was a charm. This one has definitely been fantastic. I mean, we're only, we get fantastic. Gifted. These girls are playing great. We get two more legs. Yep. Why not? Let's go. Bonus darts. That's like getting... Two toys in the Happy Meal. Someone might get fired, but it's not your problem. Going back down to the 19s. Trying to just keep the distance. Early on, though, <laughs> Liz Tynan very much favored. But look at Lisa Yee. Battling back with a 7. Big stuff out of Lisa Yee. Liz Tynan. Grab that 19 for some more points. We'll stay there. Does get the point lead, but it's definitely not what she was looking for. Both only throwing a 3.50, which is very expected if they even thought for a second this was the last leg decider, which I know that now that they did not. Maybe not. Maybe they just found out. They were today years old. No, they're just going to play the last ones uh, offline. Offline means there's just going to be no yep. stats on it. It'll just be home and away. Yeah, exactly. And no bull shooter stats no. is what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, every one of these stats from all these players will be available uh, because of the the way this tournament was run mm -hmm. uh, with using the bull shooter app and, and all of that. So really cool to have that availability. Closes because up all the stats 18. matters. Yep. Closes up the 18. Compliments of Smash Drops. Opening up the 17s and pointing them. Staying in striking distance. But Lisa back into control. A reminder, I know we set it up just in case you like went away for five seconds and came back. Uh, it is a race to five, not a race to four, because this is the final. And as soon as he said that, it absolutely makes sense. And boy, are we happy about that. Because it's still setting up to go to a last leg decider. We just get mm -hmm. to see three more uh, legs of darts instead of only one. Big Maybe monster not. run by Liz Tynan. Trip 17, trip 17, triple 18 for the monster close. It's an eight mark at the right time. And Lisa trying to fire in a timed nine mark. Only gets seven, but whew, they're starting to fire. Stays there for all three, only gets three. And with this talent, only gets three is a real thing that I can say. Oh, no. Looks and to close the 17. Might have left that door open too much for Liz. Yeah, that's a, that's a very bad timed miss. Not punished as heavily as it could have been. 
from Liz. A little scrappy here. Uh, Ashley, this is the final. Um, after circumstances, this has uh, become the final where first place is on the line and then third place. Didn't take a look at the 15s. Stayed on the 16s, which is a smart move. But Liz, an opportunity. No, oh, not happy with that 15 shot. Finds the cover. And points a, a little bit more. 100 points up. Or 50 points up, sorry. Which is now going to feel like 100 points up. Trips the 15s right here. Liz can take a look at the 16s. Who's going to actually finish the opportunity? That's really the only question right now. Oh, tough, tough turn for Liz Tynan. Lisa needs to punish that. And just like that, she does. I don't like her math there at all. On there where the 16 would have added an extra bowl. Oh. And you gave Liz Tynan. An opportunity. A winning darts there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't want to do that if you can help it. It'll work out. 4-3 to three lead for Lisa Yee. And you see Jeremy walking up. Tournament director is going to take care of all the other stuff here. To make sure everything is right and the formatting is correct. It will be Liz starting this one. If Liz wins, we go to a last link decider for the whole thing. If Lisa wins, well, that would be five and it's all over. Mm -hmm. Ryan, this is uh, approaching a interesting conclusion, and I am here for it. This has been a lot of fun. I can't stop fidgeting with how excited and how kind of on edge I am. I will tell you, we've been doing this all day, and I'm just as excited sitting here with this match as I was walking in to start this day. It has been unimaginable, the, the level of darts we've got, to, we've got the chance to call. Yeah, you hope for darts like this, um, but they have exceeded expectations, uh, and expectations were high. Because it was the Booyah Cup. I still don't think we'll see a leg as crazy as a 7.33 losing in a last leg decider for the king seat. But it could be worse. there's a possibility. It could be even higher. I have no idea. Every time I think I've seen the, the, the top of the level, they keep giving me another level. The glass, the glass ceiling keeps breaking. Stop putting up a glass ceiling, folks, because they're going to shatter it. And you see it here. Advantage. Liz in this leg by far. Throwing a 45 on pace for a potential 11 darter. Lisa is miles away. So this is very much looking like it's going to go the distance. Scott, it was a pleasure seeing you on stream. You shot great. Yeah, I was going to say and his I, first What time. a mustache. Yeah, we love your mustache, and uh, good to see Bulls and Brewskis represented in the field and a third-place finish in the doubles for you, sir. Good job. Liz sets up tops instead of bowl, but she is very much a steel-tip dart player and will be very comfortable with that. And She'll have six at it. And she has a long time if she needs it. Two tens. And this is where you, I mean, it's still fine. No panic here yet. It's a little bit 
worse because now if you go inside, you're only getting one more dart at it. And uh, the pressure is going to be maximum as Lisa leaves 50. If Liz doesn't hit this, Lisa or Liz has to assume this is done. So there's a lot of pressure on this. It's a big double five. And she can't hit it. And Lisa Yi is going to get a bullseye look to win the Booyah Cup. This is for everything. I couldn't have scripted here. I couldn't have scripted this, folks. And there, Lisa Yi is the champion of the Booyah Cup. She wins four thousand dollars for first place. And uh, listen, I'm gonna say this: that could not have happened to a better, nicer person than Lisa Yi. An accomplished player is now adding to her resume today with a Booyah Cup championship on the line. Wow, 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 wow. Congratulations to Liz Tynan. Congratulations to every lady that qualified. It was a wonderful it was a wonderful final, wonderful field. Thank you so much for entertaining us and letting us call your matches. Your Booyah Cup champion, Lisa Yee, what a finer person. Absolutely, and huge shout-out to Liz Tynan for third place. Uh, absolutely gave it all and just unfortunate to go inside there on Dart 2. Um, and, of course, we'd be remiss if we did not say – uh, we hope Chrissy feels better and that everything is is absolutely okay. Nope. Well, if you uh, thought if that you was like that, yeah, you, you will love what's <laughs> coming up. We're gonna try and get Lisa in for an interview later on, uh, but for obvious reasons, with it being ten o'clock and uh, just a couple matches left that are worth a little bit, uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep rolling along here. Dustin Holt has rolled through the loser side for quite a while to get to this point. Alex Spellman, uh, one leg away from being in a completely different circumstance, but Leonard Gates bested him in that last leg decider. Dustin Holt, Alex Spellman for third place. $1,300 will go to the loser of this one. $2,500 guaranteed to the winner with a potential chance to dethrone the two-time champion, Mr. Leonard Gates. And... Uh, Win $7,500. Here's an interesting fact. Dustin Holt opened up this day against Juan Martinez, won 6-3. Then he lost to Alex Spellman, 6-4. Then Dustin made his way all the way back to meet in the third place match against Alex Spellman. So that's number two for these gentlemen. And it does not get any easier to beat a person a second time around, especially a person the caliber of Dustin Holt who can find 10, millions of, 10 minutes of brilliance at any point in time. And the consistency that Alex has thrown with today, Dustin might need to find that 10, million, 10 minutes of brilliance. Who do you got in this? I'll be honest. I'm, listen, I called him from the get-go, so I can't jump ship now. That oh, would be okay. rude. So I have Alex still, and I have Alex winning the final because I can't jump ship. That would be rude. I, I, and I'm that would also that. be cheating because then you're picking Leonard just because he already beat him once. I, I'm picking Leonard. I, that chain, oh, I, shocking. Uh, wow, great wow, job. Shocking. No. To give you an honest answer, I uh, I think Spellman will best Mr. Holt here. and uh, I think Leonard obviously wins. But I, I'm going to pick I, Alex because I stuck, I'm stuck in, sticking with him the whole time. They are warming up as we speak. Again, third place match. So here we go. The dynamite set. The fireworks are in place. They just have to do what they do best. And that's hit a lot of triples. As a court just inside for Alex Spellman. The bull is very, very important because if you go to the last leg decider, you win the cork, you also have the start. Best of nine, race to five. 501, start us off.
manages a ton to open. Spalman will want to look to capitalize here. It has been opening with a ton 80 or ton 40 pretty consistently most of the day. And he does have a nine darter today. It was the very first leg of the very first match for him. What a way to settle in. There's that ten forty open. Yep. <laughs> averages tell a story here, and the story that these averages tell are that both these players are pretty darn good. Alex Bowman averaging a 5.71 and a 39.48 uh, overall. Dustin Holt, a 5.26 and a 36.39. So on paper, Alex Bowman favored, but those are close enough to where whoever plays better over the next nine legs uh, will deserve to uh, make it to the final. You're not wrong there. Um, the bottom line of it is right here, it's going to come down to those timing shots because both these gentlemen can push, push that seven plus eight. It's the late timing shots that got Alex beat. It's the late timing shots that that Dustin has had on his side to win. It's it, it's going to be at the right time. It's going to be the momentum. It's it's sit back and relax and watch. Perfect time for 180, and that's exactly what he does to put a lot of pressure on the 126. As if there was any doubt that that's what was going to happen, and if you're Dustin Holt, you expected that exact thing to happen. So. That shouldn't change any, shouldn't worry at all. Starting on the 19s. Staying right there. Bullseye for a one nothing lead. Oh, just pulled it. And he's not going to be happy about no, that. No, into the 7. That's miles off because he had a whole 25 segment that exactly. he missed through. Triple 18. 32. Alex Bellman nonchalantly throws an 11 darter. And steals the break of throw right away. What diddle? It doesn't matter now. It does not matter as long as Spellman does not get broke. It is a race to five. Best of nine legs. Winner of this one will play in the finals against Mr. Leonard Gates, who has yet to lose in the Booyah Cup. And I don't think he is ready to start now based on everything that he has done today. And remind me next year to just pick him, no matter what. Spellman looking to just Regrip fix the little mechanical error he had on dart one. And I'm telling you, if you get 10 minutes to talk to Alex Bowman about darts and about throws and all that, um, he'll give you 30. And on top of that, you'll learn more about uh, mechanics of darts and just how much thought process goes into every motion that he does every time he steps to the line. And honestly, that's the brilliance of Alex Bowman. Highly intelligent man. Worked worked for in the IT industry for uh, gaming industry, programming for years. Now playing darts um, as a full-time job. And that's a nine mark from Alex Bellman. The first of the match. And usually it only takes one for waves to happen. And I've seen it too, Dustin. You pulled up pretty hard. Yeah, and Alex can sometimes uh, play the role of the shark and attack when uh, he smells that blood. Guess what? Here comes the attack. Closes that out. Six mark needed and a six mark hit. Throwing a 6.25 to a 5.0 from Dustin Holt. Is it sad that we are not used to seeing 5.0? in the winning line because it's six plus. It's been six plus this whole time. Uh, it, is it? We, we go home. We're used to seeing that four and a gross. half. It, yeah. You come here and you're like, holy cow. We're not. We're not even on the same. No. We shouldn't even be in this building. No. Which is why we're in the coat closet. That's why we're in the coat closet. 
Wow. Now let's just continue to just put on an epic display. Seven marks again. Dustin Holt throws in a hat trick. Alex Bowman will look to do the exact same thing and take a 2-0 lead. And does so in two. 6.18 from Alex Bellman is enough to get across the line in leg number two. Dustin Holt will start off this one. He's got a lot of work to do because I don't see Spellman missing much. Not right now. He's going to have to get that timing shot for him and, get, and try to break him. I don't know how he found that through there, but... That was impressive. I don't think anyone realizes how blocked that, that dart was. Or th the treble was there. Alex is going to try and throw in a nine, though. Seven will do. And Alex actually mentioned the fact that he's he was told a long time ago that seven marks are going to win and nine marks are for show. And he has taken that directly to heart with the amount of seven marks that I have seen out of him today. That's what I talked about earlier. I said I should take all his sevens to Vegas. But that nine mark's going to be better. Boom goes the dynamite for Dustin Holt. The second of the match. First for him. Spellman looking to respond with one of his own. And what happens... Once tends to happen in, happen in bunches. And boom goes the dynamite again. Back-to-back -back nines. Manages six. Spellman here. Does he take a look if he gets two triples? Yes. Because it is a devastating dart if he hits it. And he is going to stay there now. And only gets a five. And he doesn't like it. You can tell. We were talking about that earlier. He don't like those fives. The Jackal's not happy. And Dustin's going to take back advantage of it. Moves to the 19s. And big nine mark from Dustin Holt. His second of the leg. Spellman firing right back, and this is the brilliance of Alex Spellman. If you're going to hit a nine mark, guess what? I'm going to one. Me too. And that was a big shot right there. And Chess that, match close right there. Dustin Holt has two nine marks in this match. Alex Spellman has also hit a nine mark directly after it both times. Dustin not phased with losing the 20. But you can see there how much pressure he's putting on himself to be perfect now. Mm -hmm. And that is Alex putting that pressure on him. 7.5 plays a 7.2. I was going to say, I mean, I, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. It's You're shooting a 7.5, and you're worried about that 7.2. Is he looking? He is, and back-to-back -back nines for Another Spellman. Another chess match shot. And that's why Dustin Holt was upset at the 7 mark. Exactly. Gross right now. Surely not. <laughs> Huge eight. Seven eight right now is behind in the leg. It won't be a seven eight at the end, but this is, guys, come on. Yep, and that's exactly what he's going to do there every time. Sweep that, sweep that fifteen to keep the points off. However, missed it. Dustin Holt's going to go to the bowl anyway. Yep. Three needed. He knows it's an outside shot, but it's the only chance he's going to get to do it. 7.05 defeated something a 7.0. So that's now the second time that I've seen that in my lifetime. Uh, both of them in the last half an hour, and both Alex Bellman losing the legs with the 7 plus average. 2-1. to one. Spellman over Holt. Back to the 0-1.
Again, Alex started off his day with a nine darter. And it's been obviously downhill from there. Because he's not done it again. And he can't even win with 7.0s in cricket. <laughs> twice now. It's twice. I, I, I'm just not used to. No, no one is. You don't. You don't have to repeat. Like finish that. I, I, this is so insane, and awesome at the same time because these players are putting on such a show. It yeah. doesn't get better. Boom goes the dynamite because this has been great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. Another fun 140. Yeah, Dustin throwing a 40.0 right now and way behind. Alex Spellman. Spellman with it. Pretty much in cruise control as long as he continues to do what, you know, he does. And I see probably another one coming. And it happens. 46 after 9. It's just what Alex Bowman's going to do in these are one legs. 11 or 12. If it's worse than that, he's throwing a terrible leg. Dustin Holt, just in case, leaves the 1-2-1. One, one. After 9. Yep. We have seen crazier things happen so far today. 14 for 32. Oh, and in and the inside. There's what I'm talking about. And the opportunity is there for Dustin Holt to tie this right up and break the throw, steal this leg. Doing so will give him back control of the entire match. He should get a dart. He didn't get a dart. Oh. He got very aggressive on dart, too. Uh-huh. And that's going to cost him. And even Alex doesn't want to win that way. But he's fine with it. Uh, well, yeah, that mean, was a good fake job by him. Yeah. He's like, oh, man, I'm so upset, too. Pulls it to the 42. Yes, Dustin, we hear you. 61 needed. 1 and 33 didn't get it. Double eight. Dustin, or Alex Bellman, just happy, you know, just to clean that one up for him. Three to one score line now for Alex Bellman. And again, we're not saying that Dustin hits, but he definitely is not going to hit it with 19 left after the second dart. It wasn't a bad dart, just floated it, on him a little bit. Exactly. I, yeah. And that starts. That starts. The luck, the dartboard giveth, the dartboard take away. And the dartboard's about to take away a lot more than that as Dustin Holt only starts off with 60. Which was matched right there by the first dart. And was bested by that one. And, and maximized by that one. Good call. Good call, Mr. Green. 180. It's easy. When someone doesn't miss, you can just call out that they're not going to miss. It's that easy. See if we can match it. Of course we can. Dustin Holt fires in one of his own. That 60, though, might still cost him. Alex will have to be perfect, though, for uh, that to be insured. Fourth dart's perfect. Fifth dart's perfect, and it's also wide open on that bed. Oh, he hit it and pounced out. Yeah, he, he's seen it like we did. He springboard into yep. the one. Nothing to do about that. Thus needs at least a ton to leave the finish, and that's all he's going to be able to do. Advantage Alex Spellman, because 161 is not easy. Grab the first 20. He's got his second one in there. Wants to leave double 10. And there's another 180 for Mr. Alec Spellman. 161 left for Dustin Holt. Trouble 17. Oh, just on the bottom wire. And Spellman, this is for a 4-1 to one lead and a race to 5. And 
I will say Dustin's been in that position for, before today and bounced back to win it. Yeah, yeah. He he was down 4-1 to Rick Hensley, came back 1-5-4. We're not counting him out. But this is also Alex Spellman. And the only leg that he lost, he lost throwing a 7. And he's going first right now. A lot of things working against Dustin Holt right now. And uh, Alex in prime position to see if he can uh, take down the Leonard Gates. Ooh, but not the open we were used to seeing out of him. Just manages three. And what you don't want to do there is give Dustin Holt hope, and he just did that. That's a big advantage right here. He'll grab the 19s. Oh, we went for the clear up the 20s. And he I think that was a mental mistake. Five. Yeah, he only manages a five. Yeah, I think that's a mental mistake. And Spellman's going to go ahead and make him pay with a seven mark. And Dustin now just wiring the wrong side of the triple. Not happy with those two darts, of course. He did move. He was able to slide into trip 19. However, the advantage is still firmly in Spellman's court. All around. You see the eyes move? Yep. Looking down. One hole. He said it. A one hole. We're playing a game of millimeters. It's incredible. This is incredible stuff. And up to this point, those players have not really missed those millimeters. But that's what you're talking about right there. You know, we talk about this being a marathon. They've played all day. Fatigue can start becoming in a, as a factor. Dustin, of course, has played a lot more matches than Spellman. Yeah, double, double elimination long style format, too. Mm -hmm. So, realistically, none of these guys have played in this long of a format for this long of time. Uh, CDC events our single elimination, so that's going to alleviate a lot of that. But Dustin Holt gets the point lead back. I, it's bare minimum for him, and he knows that, but he's just trying to stick with it and see what happens. I think everyone's just waiting for Alex to throw in that big, big dart, though. And he should have gone down to close to 17. And he I was going to say, himself. I'm like... I don't know if he realized that 17 just needed a one-shot close. Opportunity right here for Dustin. He trips it twice. He can take a look at that 20. Not a bad move there to grab the 18. Not at all. Not a bad move at all. Get your second house. You're just down some points. Good chess move right there. Your Alex to go 18 first. He's in a point. Yeah, he's staying right there. I don't know how his eyes even shifted there. I was staring straight into them, and they did not move. He did get rid of the 17. Exactly. I thought he was down the trip 20, actually. I didn't see the eyes move. This is the third place match of the Booyah Cup finale. The winner of this match will play in the finals against Mr. Leonard Gates, the two-time defending champion. He has never lost in the Booyah Cup. And again, I need to remind everybody that we both did not pick him as a favorite to win. Even knowing all that information. Even but know how well he plays. We, yeah. Boom goes the dynamite Alex Spellman. And that's what I'm talking about. You're just kind of waiting for that, ha that to happen eventually. He's going to hit nines at some point. And Dustin only falls with a five. So Spellman in complete control right now to just kind of do what he wants. And he is doing exactly that. Trip 16. Yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, shaking. 
I, I'm watching Sean shake his head as he watches Spellman continually move down that board. It's a knockout trip, punch. It's just knockout punch after knockout punch. You're seeing it. We're seeing it. It's incredible. So Alex Spellman, three bowls needed. This is to make it to the finals for a rematch with Leonard. And I think all of us are ready for that. And he gets it done. Six, 5.65, enough to get it accomplished. Five to one victory over Dustin Holt. Congratulations to Dustin for third place. $1,300 coming his way. Spellman is still in this bad boy. He will take on Leonard Gates. But for us, we are going to refresh the st stream as we're coming up on eight hours. And we want to make sure that it definitely doesn't cut out during the final. Uh, just the Facebook stream. It's going to stay on YouTube. Um, so if you are on Facebook, uh, go ahead and just wait for us to come back real quick. And we will see you guys shortly. Sean Green, Ryan Mooneyham, Will Stewart, USA Darts Productions live at the Booyah Cup. We have the final coming up next.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the moment we have been waiting for all weekend long, the Booyah Cup Finale Finals. Coming to you live from Sturdivant, Wisconsin, Sean Green, Ryan Mooneyham, Will Stewart on the production side, and uh, we have King Seat Leonard Gates, who must be double dipped, taking on the Jackal, Alex Spellman, who has uh, been nothing short of spectacular so far. We have seen two losing legs now in, in my lifetime uh, of a 7.0 plus losing a leg in cricket. Both of them have been Alex Spellman. We have seen a seven point plus match are out of Leonard Gates, yep. but kicking up to 8.33, we have seen him just destroy his opponents with his cricket strategies and cricket play. Uh, question that I'm sure is being asked is, what do you do when you have that much time in between the finals and uh, your king seat match where you're on top? Well, if you're Leonard Gates, you uh, enter the blind draw and you play your blind draw match. There you go. To get warmed up here. So he has he has competed. Uh, he also, t you know, got refreshed. And Alex Bellman doing, uh, he's just par for the course right now. This is nothing surprising. He's on 46 after 9. He's done that multiple times. 11 darter opportunity again. 32, two 16s. He would be back if he misses this, but he will. And you can see the trophy being put out there by Mr. Jeremy Byrne. He needs to incorporate a little mustache in there somewhere. Leonard just letting Alex know where he is. Tapping on the shoulder. I'm here for 55 if you don't take that double eight. This is unlikely to be missed three times from Alex Bellman, but weirder things have happened. Not going to happen this time. Alex Bellman holds throw in leg number one. It is alternate start, best of 11 legs, so race to six. Alex Bellman will start the last leg decider if it does go that distance, uh, which is a huge advantage on the bull uh, that you guys saw in the background there. So Spellman won, Leonard Gates nothing, and I'm going to argue that the diddle made all the difference in their first matchup. Oh, huge. Alex said the same thing. He said it came down to that bull in that king seat match. He says, I take the bull. I, I, I got the start on the last leg. I'm the one holding the king seat. Yep. And that tells you how much he probably put emphasis on making sure he won the diddle. Exactly. Exactly. Well, these guys need no introduction, but we're going to try anyway. Leonard Gates – He's been playing since 1994 from Houston, Texas. Former professional baseball player turned professional dart player. And uh, he's done nothing but just dominate the world of darts for a very, very long time. Uh, one of the best and consistent and most consistent dart players. Soft tip or steel tip. And Alex Bellman has been one of those guys that just does this with no surprise. Boom goes a dynamite. Fuquay Varina is where Alex Bowman resides in North Carolina. And uh, he went from an online dart player to uh, one of the absolute best dart players in North America. Both these gentlemen, folks, have crossed that Alexander Palace stage. They've yep. had the walk-ons in front of thousands of people. They've represented their, their country well. Well, Alex Bellman back-to-back -back nines, throwing an 8.33 in this leg. You mentioned that number earlier, and uh, right now we're seeing it. It's synonymous with almost a perfect game, 8.33. Yep. Right now we're seeing Alex hit that level. This is leg number two. Alex Bellman is up one nothing. As soon as we start talking about the high average, did we, we get the two mark out of him. Well, you can blame us all you want, but you'd be right. <laughs> Leonard Gates going to look to just fill it up on the 16s. And earlier in the king seat match, uh, he was able to do just that pretty much on will. I, he had at least three or four nine marks just on the 16s. So he is never out of a leg knowing that he has that ability to do that at any time. He might be out of this one, though. Chip 19 for first start out of Spellman. What's the degree of the 16? Only manages the one. 
Still well out in front of a uh, soldier in this match. Or in this leg, excuse me. And this might be one of those moments where soldier tries to dig himself back into the leg. Seven mark is good. We're going to go ahead and both argue it's probably not good enough. But uh, that depends on what Alex does here. That first start, well above the, the triple. And hard adjustment to be made. And he decides to just barely take the point lead. Last time around two, this time only three. Knocks. Big door opened right now, possibly for Leonard Gates. Well, what do you do here? I did not have an answer to that question. I, I, you know, I, he closed the 19th. I think he should have went trip 16 first start because now he's left the door open. Yeah, and not just a jar a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, he shoved it wide open. He for left Alex the door wide open and Spellman just buried that seven right on top of him. You give him opportunities to take control, he'll do that more often than not. Both of these player, players will, so um, you'll see a lot of punishment from mistakes. You open the door, the other one slams it on you. We both know that they're going to hit. Who's going to make the most mistakes is who's going to lose this match. Because they will be very few and far between. Yep, very few. You see blind draw going on, but a lot of players and supporters here just watching uh, coming down to this final here on this Saturday night. This beautiful Wisconsin night. Single bull to win. Alex Spellman, 2-0 lead. And uh, a terrible 5.64. And I I, <laughs> I, would just I mean love, that in jest, but... I would love to throw that. But for these two players, we're going to see that be one of the lower winning averages of the cricket legs in this final. Oh, most Guaranteed. definitely, most definitely, most definitely. But most definitely? Most definitely. Alex Bellman getting the start here. Already up 2-0 on Leonard Gates. Spellman's tail of the tape. Actually, we're going to start with Leonard Gates, since I said that. He beat Ryan Jarvis in the first round uh, that we called a potential upset. And, uh, well, you saw how that worked out for us. Boom goes a dynamite Leonard Gates. Then he defeated Jesse Johnson 6-2. to 6-1 to one over Mike Maloney. Then 6-1 to one over Rick Henze. And last link decider, victory over Alex Spellman to get him to the king seat. For Alex Spellman. Defeated David David Fadham, 6-0 in round one. Then uh, quite the battle against Dustin Holt, 6-4. Elliot Milk, he defeated 6-1. Before uh, whitewashing Danny Baggish, 6-0. And I'm pretty sure that's the first time in history Danny Baggish has lost uh, in soft tip by a whitewash. Yeah, and then, of course, that stellar king seat match. Sends him to that third place match where he was able to dismantle Dustin Holt 5-1. to one. And that sets us up right here right now for the final. Leonard Gates would love to continue to be the only player to win the Booyah Cup in the history of the tournament and get a three-peat. He will be the first person to become a three-time champion of this event. If he does so. But Spellman right now is staying ahead with Leonard throwing a 7.33. And, well, we've seen this before now, so now this isn't surprising either anymore. We are we continue to be in awe, but we're getting used to it. There's another nine. Back and forth, this is a slug match. Two heavyweight boxers right now battling for the world title. Just we're in the haymaker after haymaker. Haymaker after haymaker is exactly correct. Speaking of, he did a he was that a no look? Away. Was that a no look? No, no one's gonna agree that's a no look. But he did kind of look away as soon as he released that dart, and uh, I'm Leonard missed a dart, and that's the most surprising thing right now. This is absolutely ridiculous. 
but I'm not gonna say the cliche. For the coffin shot. Good enough. Good enough. Spellman will, no matter what, come back with only two bowls needed. And also some points now. <laughs> Unfortunately for Leonard, though, it's only 116 needed. Doesn't matter anyway. He's going to hit a triple, of course. Two bowls. Big dart. No doubt. And that is the third time now in my lifetime I have seen a 7-point-plus average defeated. A 7.17 defeated. Not Thank good enough. Not good enough. Uh, All right. 3-0, Alex Bellman. I guess it wasn't that crazy when it happened the first time. Now that's happened three times. It's, is this the new norm? No. no. <laughs> there is nothing normal about what these two humans are doing. The Jackal and Soldier are superheroes when it comes to the dartboard. And there is nothing else you can uh, say to deter that opinion. No, I have no opinion. I, I'm, I'm continually being in awe. But now I'm getting used to seeing a 7.0 get beat. I, I, I don't talk about it to probably till, till the end of time that I, I've watched 7.0s get beat but multiple times. I'm almost mad that it's happening so often right this second because it was special about half an hour ago and now it is meaningless and just expected between these players and when you get to that level it's I mean I don't know are they having fun or are they just having fun I, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm, I'm having, having the best time. time. They're putting on an absolute clinic of a show for all of the viewers. Honestly, with darts like this, we don't even need to exist. Um, we just Will does. Yeah. But we, our jobs are pretty much obsolete. Okay. They don't. They don't need us to tell us anything. Here's the thing: we started this morning at 9:30. We've been nonstop all day. It's 10:47, and I'm more excited now than I was when I first walked in the venue today. Yeah, the For finals. 13 hours of this stuff. Of the Booyah Cup finale here live in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. Huge shout out to the man with the stash, Mr. J Jeremy Byrne for just continuing to put on an absolute fantastic event year after year. Leonard Gates trying to three-peat for the first time in the history of the event. Double 12 needed. That is Whoa. really weird. We need to fix that. That is outside. Should be a zero. And it's outside, so it should be a zero. The throw needs to come off and go as just an outside Yeah, it's hit. actually stuck between the segment and the wire. Yeah, it's showing as outside. And there's only eight seconds to throw. Five seconds to throw. Jeremy, fix it. There we go. There's the miss. Yeah, but if you're Leonard, you want the marker, so you leave it in there. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> and, a good uh, marker. You don't get those in soft dip. Doubles. Three, three to one. At the end of the day, that was just a hold of throw. And you wish for it, and it ends up happening. These averages between uh, some of these players, guys. 5.86 for Alex Spellman with a 39.70 PPD. Leonard Gates a 39.48 and a 5.94 average throughout this tournament. There's throwing smoke, and then there's that. Uh, yeah, ton 80s. Alex Bowman has 12. Leonard Gates has 13. Nine marks, 24 for Alex Bowman, 23 for Leonard Gates. The most, though, is Dustin Holt with 36 on the day. Incredible, 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 incredible. Stats don't tell all the, the storyline, but they do tell a story, and the story of today is uh, we've seen some fantastic darts throughout this event. We've got to talk about some fantastic darts. Absolutely insane. We have – we're still in all – and we're not done. We're only in the be the, the beginnings of the final. It's three only three to one. 
Yeah, there's still a long way to go in this long format event. One Leonard, of a kind here. Leonard will have to win six to take the title. Spell Ministry away from turning this into the second half. For or the he will dip. only have to win six. Yeah, for, for the double dip. And Alex Bowman hits a 180. Just for a break of throw opportunity for Spellman. This is leg number five, though, so Spellman should be going first in this leg, to be fair. I think they uh, pushed off Leonard's turn, which is where they're at currently. As I was looking at the stat line there, I missed that interaction, but oh, I'm going to assume that for sure. They sent it over to yeah. Spellman, yeah. That's why he's out in front with a 146 to 280. Yeah, it's not just the 45.78. No. Shockingly, he's on a uh, 11 darter, which I've yet to see him take more than 12, at least in recent memory. So here we go. 89. 57 for 32. Yep. 11 darter from Alex Bowman once again. Now up four to one. Two legs away from uh, maybe having us some ice cream. And he would like two scoops on that bad boy. Still a lot of work left to get done here in this first matchup because he's playing Leonard Gates. And Mr. Gates being Mr. Gates opens up with the nine mark. Need I say more? to the 19th, needs to come back with his his nine. Was there any doubt? No, there's not. I hyped it up, though. I know I just don't need to speak right now, so I'm just not I, going to. It, I mean, you can, for sure. What you say is smart. I just say things to say them, and right now I don't need to. Have you ever heard the term speechless? Because I've been speechless through most of, these, most of these matches between these two. I've heard of it, never experienced it, but... I mean, these guys are just put on an absolute clinic of a show. I'm going to say this one time, guys, if you're just tuning in for the first time. Darts is not this easy. Um, no, no, no. The amount of time and effort and ability these guys put in and have make this game uh, still very difficult for them, but um, that's just because of who they play now. On the 19s, looks to grab two triples. He's Looking gonna, up. He's going to take a look. Look at the eyes. Smart chest move right there. Takes away the high ground. Forces uh, Gates to move to the 18s or 17s. Awesome. Gates did not like how that one lies. You see how that 18 yep. laying in its way goes down five, four marks to 17s. Gets a house. Gets a little bit of a point lead. Listen, we're in the coat closet here, so I know a lot about hangers. That was a hanger. That was a hanger. 17s. Just kidding. Nothing wrong with points. And Soldier. Trying to look for a lot of those himself. Decides to go ahead and uh, open up that new wedge. Into the 17s. Now. There it is. Nine mark from Alex Bellman. Boom goes the dynamite for the man from North Carolina. And Gates in a lot of trouble here in this first of the potential double dip. Updated stats is uh, these guys just keep getting better as this continues to go on. Uh, now throwing above what we just said earlier. Gates almost had a 6.0, but behind 4-1 to one in this first round of the finals. Good chess move there. Gets rid of the 19s. Forces Spellman to either take the 16 away or go straight to the 15s. 
Now he's got to stay. It's a good marker for that tri triple. He does hit it. 16s. Six point eight six for Alex Spellman in this one. Six point oh for Gates. Straight to the bull. Got to pile them all in. He needs all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, hit that share button for us. Uh, listen, it's not going to get better than this. It just won't. Alex Bowman up 4-1. to one. A very strong chance of this going to a double dip scenario with an even ball game. Didn't like the flyer on the, on the second shot on the pool. Goes as 45 more points. Winning dart here for Leonard Gates, though. Double, double. Not going to do it now. Goes and hit four for good measure. Alex needs to point once and hit that. For five to one. One more bull needed. Doesn't hit it. Registers a 15, which is a perfect fallout because that's 51 points versus uh, below 50. Still so, three bulls gives yep. you the shot at the trip 15. And he's going to maybe get a look at it. He is. To steal the leg and make it four to two. Gets it, Leonard Gates. A bounce out to the 15, and Gates takes advantage of it. And shockingly, a 6.33. Guess what? Not good enough. Unfortunately, we did not see the, the dart stay in the board for Spellman. Yep. It did register a 15. Which it honestly probably was at the end of the day. It, I think it deflect, deflected off the flight yeah, more than anything else. Yeah, I think else. so, too. So four to two instead of five to one. It's a difference, but at the end of the day, it's a hold of throw for Gates. And I don't think it's going to bother Alex Bowman one little bit. Not with an I-7 mark to open. Gates try to best him right here on the 19s with 9. And after the first start, very disappointing from him. To not capitalize on more than that. Maybe there's just a force field on the 19s and the 20s. The uh, no mark from Alex Bellman, most likely. I haven't. Yep. We haven't seen one of those today. And I don't think we we're going to experience it again. Yeah. Close. Yeah. Good chess move right there. A couple 19s for points. Get rid of that 20. Force Bellman either take my 19 or go into the 18s. 18s first. Stay in. Nine mark. I can't believe it. Have they thrown one of those yet? Just a couple. Alex Bellman, a big nine. At some point, it just becomes so unbelievable it, it, that it's... It looks so easy from these two. Spellman's... Bare minimum job here is just to close the 17s. Now he can bonus point the 18s. Does exactly that. Good six mark from Spellman. Smart move right there for Spellman. He's been a little bit slower on the 16s and 15s. Give it to Gates. He's got 54 to chase 48. If we go to the double dip, it obviously makes it 0-0. Zero, zero. That's a seven mark, which is why they're backing it up there. But is it advantage Alex Spellman at that point? Or yes. will it not matter since it's just restart? Well, you know they're going to have to diddle. Of course. And we know already we already seen what the diddle did for the final leg in the King Seat match. However, if you want a momentum swing, I think it'll be Spellman. Okay. Spellman in the driver's seat once again. He's really realistically been in control in his first set. Um... But then, you know, no, I'm not going to change my mind. It'll be Sp it'll be Spellman's to win. <laughs> Just because you say I'm not going to change my mind doesn't mean we have to believe you that you no, didn't no, change no, your no. mind. No, 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 no. I'm saying is if we go into the, if we go into the double dip, it'll be Spellman's. Okay. I think the momentum will be on his side. Oh, I get what you're saying. Fair. 
Now mental, I understand what you're saying. Mental momentum. I thought you were just trying to his, steal my pick no, from the get-go. No, no, I'm not stealing your pick. My pick is out. What I'm saying is the mental momentum going into the, the second set on the double dip. Like, I'm totally expecting you to be like, and I picked Alex Bowman in that pre-show. I did not pick Alex Bowman in the pre-show. I did not pick out Leonard Gates either. Yeah, still very, very weird move from both of us. ESPN two-time champion. It seems like Alex Bowman gets drawn to the major events, and not only does he perform well in them, uh, he has a uh, just a habit of winning them. I was going to say, yeah, he pretty much shows up and wins. Soft tip steal does not matter. For Alex Bowman, he's, uh, he's just good at all. all. And he's one leg away from only being six legs away. But it's also one leg away from Leonard also being six legs away, which um, is the first time in a long time that it's anybody's ball game again. All right now they're doing a, anything you can do, I can do the same. 140, 140, 140. Big 180 right here. Really could change the thought process for Gates. If he does leave 81, do you start on the ball in 121? I do. Well, there's consistency, and then there's this. Through nine darts, they are averaging a 140 per round. Sometimes math is easy. 11 or a triple. Bullseye for Leonard Gates. Oh, Alex Bowman's going to get a look at this now. Same exact shot. If anything is the same of what's happened so far in this leg, uh, he will leave 25. Trouble 17 needed to get a look. Oh, just on the other side. Not going to do it. Does leave himself 32. Gates has to clean up with dart one. But let's make it five to three. End of the day, it's a hole to throw for Leonard Gates, but... You don't want him to start picking up momentum at all. Big leg here. Five to three score line. Alex Bowman going first. The first of two opportunities for Alex to throw for the match. It's 5 0 1. You're going to throw a nine here, isn't he? Well, the first three are done. Big 180. Big 180 for Alex Bellman. Okay, I can speak again. Uh, I, wouldn't I was, was going to protest it if he did that to win the first dip because they're going to eventually get to a point where they just can't top each other. Like, we're going to see the Michael Van Gerwen, Michael Smith leg, like, just here between these two guys, and uh, they just they won't be able to be topped ever again. That's what yeah. we're going towards here. I was gonna say, speaking of top, there's 180 for Mr. Leonard Gates. Spellman so back on 221. Still the advantage favoring Alex. And 86 leaves himself a clean two dart look that he's already pulled off multiple times. Pulled the 135, not happy with dart two, sliding into trip five, but that managed the third dart to hit trip 20. Yeah, at the end of the day, he's happy because he has an opportunity right now to tie this up completely. One to one and match head to head. Triple 18, 32. To send us to the double dip. No doubt whatsoever. 45, 5, 5. Just another 11 dart leg. That one, though, is a big, big 11 dart leg. Alex Bum and Linder Gates, 0 0. You might as well just call it. A tie ball game at this point. 
as we are uh, getting ready to go for the double dip. It's a best of nine. Best of 11. They're going to stay the same for all the marbles. It's the final. And Gates wins the diddle. So advantage Leonard if we go the distance. Dead even, 0-0. Zero, zero. Whoever wins this race to, to six, best of 11, is your Booyah Cup champion. Is it going to be a three-peat for Leonard Gates? Or is it going to be a first-time victory and another just notch in the old belt for Mr. Alex Bellman? Spellman looks to get back out and run that 416. Last time he lost that diddle, he broke leg one and then was able to maintain it. Not able to do that this turn. But that will be his goal is to try to get this leg to get out in front. And we've yet to see the same soldier that we saw that we've seen all day long. Forty one only from Leonard Gates there. Advantage Spellman. He'll have to settle for a ton there, which is below average for, for how these guys have been playing. Count them on up, Mr. Gates. One, two, three. Spellman back on 333. Uh, 180 here does leave a finish. Oh, not, not going to do that. Not happy with Dart 2, but he doesn't show any emotion on that. Stays right there. Still grabs the 140. Honestly, at that, I think he's really fine with that 140 because that second Dart was... He'll deem that a good Dart that was just unlucky. Yeah, it's straight up unlucky. He gets frustrated with himself every time when he mechanically makes a mistake uh, with his throw. That's where you'll see the uh, immediate frustration from him. Uh, and it's it's really just a re-coaching that he does. Uh for most people, he he would well overthink the game. But for him, being so analytical, uh, it makes him better. Yeah, he talks about how his barrels lie, how yep. he knows that he can set one on top of the other barrel. Um, very studious of the game, really concentrating deeply on the, the overall me mechanics of it. Leonard Gates up one nothing in the final. He's just happy that I registered the double 16 nice. for him. Nice hold of throw for Gates. 12 dart hold of throw will do. Let's head to leg number two. It'll be cricket. Alex Bowman starting. Gates back in the lead of the Booyah Cup. And it's the first time he's had the lead in, in quite a long time. Five to start for Alex, five to back from Leonard. And you can see, for these players, a 5.0 is very nervy. Great darts there from Alex Bellman. But we have seen nothing but just pure um, professionalism and the ability to play at the best of their ability in these big moments, time and time Man, again. And they have produced some massive, massive, massive averages, massive, massive rounds over and over and over again all day. Bellman looking out of the 17s, gets the point lead. Raises it up, 18s. Nice shot. 
Nice shot, Alex. There's a big nine mark. I mean, impressive. That was a good timely shot, too. Gates fires back with a seven. That's how you typically answer the nine. If you're not going to get a nine, seven, seven will do on an answer most of the time. Both players averaging a 39. Alex Bowman a 39.86. Leonard Gates a 39.20 with these updated stats. Their NPRs, if you want to know how much is between them, it's virtually nothing. A 5.88 to a 5.87. This screams. 0.66 is different in 01. 0.01 is the difference in NPR. This screams last league decider in the Booyah Cup final overall. And I'm here for it. You here for it? I'm here for it. Just to kind of give you a craziness of how close they are, each have thrown 14 ton 80s. 27 nine marks for Alex Bowman, 24 for Leonard Gates. Not including their horses. Yep. Two apiece on that front as well. One to one. The best today overall in most of those stats, though, has been was Dustin Holt. 16 ton 80s, 11 hat tricks. He had uh, 38 nine marks, including two white horses. Um, so by far dominated the field in, in those big, oh. big. Rounds. Played a lot more. Um, yeah. He had a long ways to go. Lost that second round match to Alex Bellman and then worked his way all the way back to the third place match in the um, loser's bracket. One to one score line. Leg number three. Soldier will get the start. And one more time. It's cricket time. Good seven start from Gates. Yep. Just talking over to make sure they, they know where they're at. They're ra playing a race to six instead of a race to five. Seven starts from both of them. Seven matches seven. I was going to say, I was sitting there thinking Gates' eyes looked down, but he was looking at the score. Yep. Wasn't going to take a look, look at that set, that 19 just yet. He's got the high ground. Doesn't want to throw just a fat 19 to open that door up too quick. Looking up. And a wire width away from a devastating nine mark early in the leg. Okay, firing it back. Going to the 18s instead of the 19s. I yeah. like the move. He did yeah, that I did earlier. Too. Like him get another house. I think someone found your microphone. Seven mark there from Alex Bellman. <laughs> and based on the accent alone, I think I know who that was. <laughs> Lender Gates, up to the 20s. See if he finishes the 18 move. He does. Yep, yep. And it's a nine mark from Leonard Gates. I've said it way too much tonight, so I think it's just been retired for the evening. Not happy with that. Spellman only manages five. Kind of left that door open for Mr. Gates. Crashes a 19 here. You tell me the gate is open. The gate is open for Gator. Another nine mark. Nice and impressive. Round on the 17th, Vantage still gates. He's got the two houses a little bit down in points, but one big triple right here can give him a look at that 17. Boom goes the dynamite. I couldn't help it. I, had to I would. I would. I'd say it every single yep. time. It's just well, it's so impressive to watch. 6-8 playing a 6-6-7. It's 
Spellman, work to do as the 6.8. Oh. And that's not the good work to do. He missed it. Yep, see, he just missed it. He caught it. Oh, he, he knew immediately when he shot it what, what just happened there. It's a beautiful dart in the trip it 17. Was, you know what? Pretty close to the other wire. And uh, Gator just continues to roll. Scoreline one, Leonard Gates. Scoreline one, Alex Spellman. You know, you wor use words good sometimes. No, I'm not. You're the English teacher. But the way you say it is just, again, oh. you're not trying to be funny, but I have no idea what you were trying to do with that scoreline that you just said. 1-1 one, one scoreline. Heading to the bowls. It's about to be 2-1 gate. Sometimes you just got to give a little shout out to the players. Let them, let them realize that they, it's one to one. Thousand percent. Into the bull. All right, Leonard Gates for a two to one lead in the final, the final of the final of this 2024 Booyah Cup. Six point three six. Good enough to get it done there. He now is up two to one. Another hole to throw. Alex will need to change that with at least one break to win the match. We're still looking for our first streamed nine darter. And I don't know how much un more unlucky you can get than that. Oh. Oh. 140 from Gates. And again, 135 from Alex Bellman. Chip 5. Keeps coming into play. And that's a 180 from Leonard Gates. Still advantage Alex Bellman. But it depends on what he does here. Needs two trebles to really feel good. Wants to stay down there. Does exactly that. 134 leaves 97. Gates can put a lot of pressure on the 97, but Alex Bowman with a very doable finish. 86, very doable for Leonard. First start is very important here from Spellman. Triple 19. This one goes up to 11. Just like they all have for Ox Bowman so far. Another 11 darter. Which is way above average for anyone else, but it has been average for him. That's got to be the mean. Just average for him, 11 darter. Well, I mean, it's not, but it has been in this one. Leonard getting the start here. 2-2 two -two score line. So far, it's been holds of throw. The whole way. <coughs> Sean Green, Ryan Mooneyham, Will Stewart, USA Darts, proud to bring you this final of the Booyah Cup. First place, $7,500. Second place, $2,500. For a difference of $5,000. That's huge. And that's a 180. Spellman, a 180 will not even leave a finish. So Gates has six from 196.
If anyone wants to argue with me that, like, it's okay for the pros to be playing, like, full bowl setup, uh, look how much fun this is. It's so much more fun than watching them just hit bullseyes left and right. Oh, I'd rather play this all day long. And twice on Sunday. Exactly. Needs a trouble to leave a finish. Unless he hits the single 19, which he does so. But that's a big ask. And really the biggest ask is that Leonard misses 56. Yeah, he wasn't going to do that. Gonna Dead say, center of the double. He's not going to do that one. 11 darter followed by 11 darter from Leonard Gates. 3-2 to two lead for Gates. He is halfway there. Alex Spellman will start on cricket. It continues to be a hold of throw fest that Alex will have to, uh, at some point, break the habit of. That's a big last start early in a leg. Forces the 19 out of Gates. You're looking up. And he gets rid of the 20 right away. Chest move. You're the 20. Force Alex into the 18s. Possibly the 17s. And Alex Bellman going to throw in a nine just to uh, add a little distance, and he does just that. So if you watch his eyes, he's moving down to get rid of that 19. Gates pushed over into the 17s now. And only a four mark from Leonard Gates. Spellman back in control. There goes the 17s. Say goodbye to the 15s or the back to the 18s, I guess. Whatever you want to do, Alex. Nah, he wants a cushion. And I like that move. Yeah, I do too. I mean, give yourself plenty of room. Play 54 to, against 48 and 45 all day long as long as you've got enough room to work with. Because right there, Gates just filled up that 16. Well, they had He's just done that so many 16. times tonight. Yep. Eighteens or fifteens? So he moved back up. Staying. He did. He did the right. The one thing he wanted to do was just close the sixteens. Mm -hmm. But he would like. He would have liked more bonus there. Another one of those. He can take a look. Oh. Man, what a difference that would have made. Spellman. Staying up there. I don't see a movement at all. He is. And he hits it. An important dart. It's only 23 points, though. Which is probably why you didn't see him do it. No, because of the bullseye. But the one great thing is he did close the 15 and Gates missed on the bull. All right. We have a race here. It's 4-3. to three. Spellman going first and needing only three. And that'll help tremendously. There you go. 3-3. Three, three. They're both halfway there. Who is going to blink? Five legs remaining. Are we going to go to the 11th and the cider? So far, it is really looking that way. Essentially, we are no longer playing a best of 11. It has now become a best of five. Best of six, sorry. Seven. Best of seven. Eventually, I'll get there. Right now, these two have have competed now. This is their third typical uh, straight match, and they've already shot 26 legs against each other. Boom goes the dynamite, Alex Bellman. And this battle has been one of epic proportions. Epic was the term I was thinking when you said it. Which was no pun intended for Alex's previous job. I want to make that perfectly clear. Staying right there. Good last start. I think he thought when he shot it, he missed it. And I think he saved it the kind of last second there. 
Gates. They just keep going back and forth on their haymakers, don't they? And speaking of haymakers, there's another one. I mean, it, this it, is just insane. I mean, it, you just it, it it you sit back now and just like you'd expect nothing less. And this is a a huge attack from Alex Bowman. This is to break the throw of Leonard Gates for the first time in the match, and to do so at the halfway point is not terrible timing at all. He's got to finish the job though. To the 19s. A uh, one mark. Doesn't need to be said, but not what he was looking for. That could hurt. That could hurt. Typically will, but Leonard is going to let him off the hook a little bit. 247 plays 246. 19s versus the house of 16s. So not punished for that mistake was Alex Bowman. And he makes up for it with a seven. Beautiful of his seven own. mark. Takes the point lead, gets rid of the 16s. Throwing a 6.4 currently. And the amount of time, the, the numbness I now have to, the amount of times I've seen a six plus average is gross, honestly. You've got that correct. He is very happy he hit that second dart because that adds an extra bullseye to the to the score total on top of being able to close Leonard's number. But Leonard had the ability to put a lot of pressure on that one, unable to really do so. Does Spellman attack, or does he uh, point first? I say he take a look at the first dart and see what goes from there. What a huge dart this is. And uh, that's a saver. That is a saver. Does not give Leonard Gates winning darts. Same spot again for Spellman. Yep. And do you see the same move? I do see the same move. Different result so far. Big dart. And Alex Bowman breaks the throw. He now takes the lead for the first time in this final. Four to three over Leonard Gates. It is a race to six, so he is two legs away from the victory, and he goes first now. And this is where you solidify the break of throw. You got to hold it right away. It's only a break of throw if you don't give it back the next one. Ninety five start from Spellman, less than uh ideal for him. You think we're starting to see some slowdown just a little bit just because of fatigue? No, not at all. I I don't think that has anything to do with it. I think it's literally just dart by dart, round by round. We're gonna see some absolute brilliance still yet to come out of both of these players. But I do think that the one thing that they are fighting right now is that they have been playing a lot of darts. You're absolutely correct. And uh, maybe they're having to throw it just a touch firmer than they did at the start of the day. Yeah, this is the 28th leg between them. Again, these terrible rounds from both these players are well, well better than anything I would ever do uh, at any point in time. But that's not even my average with a full bowl. At all. Cl not even close. 125. He's starting to get frustrated with the, the fall into the five. But 
Alex will know how to fix that. But it is the first time he's really kind of had to fight his throw overall. And Gates does not leave a finish with that ton. So Spellman in the driver's seat to take it to make it five to three. He gets six starts from two oh one. And if you're a betting man, uh, you'd bet on Alex taking that most of the time. Fifty seven. I don't think he'll be disappointed with leaving 62 because he's going to have three darts at it. He might only get one dart of the double, and he'll have some pressure on him. The pressure there is. Yep. 38 left for Soldier. Spellman broke it a tip. He will replace that real quick. Not one to be unprepared for any type of scenario, including one where the timer is only 30 seconds and you have to change a tip. Did that in uh, 20 seconds. Ooh, drags into the seven, drags into the 45, at least 17. There will only be one dart. I mean, that was, ooh, shaky dart. And you were correct. You were correct. Yeah. May it, only get one. Well, when you saw that dart almost fall into the 18, that's when I was actually most worried. And Leonard Gates steals it right back. It is now 4-4. Four to four. That break and throw is meaningless now for Spellman. He will have to do it again one more time at some point. First one to win, six. We're down to the classic two out of three. Leonard Gates back in control, 4-4. Four to four. He's going first in this 0-1 leg. He's looking to take it out in 12 or less. If he does so, most likely he will win that leg. But is there still one moment of brilliance left for Alex Bowman? We'll see. Time will tell. If you're not on the edges of your seat, well, I am on the edge of my seat for you. This has been great stuff all day long. He will not throw a nine, so Gates will get 12 darts from nine more darts from 361. Good cover shot there on the last dart. Really Important good last cover dart. shot. Very good cover shot. I do love that overhead shot just to see just how smooth Spellman's throw is, how much the darts just kind of float. And honestly, to watch it from just right behind him throwing, it just looks like the darts just are only hitting each other. He's just throwing it right back into the, the other back of the dart. Which is why I say at times it almost feels like it's bad luck if he misses. But Leonard Gates, 180, leaves 84 after 9. Right on pace for where he wanted to be to ensure a victory in this leg. Looks to add a triple 20. Does that. Small fish if he can come back. 84, though. It might only be one dart at a double, and that double might only be the bullseye. But it'll be two at double 12. And you do that for Leonard Gates. And he's going to take it out five to four. He is one leg away from the victory. Will Spellman send it to a last leg decider? And will it be a repeat of what we saw in uh, the King Seat match? This to send it to the distance. And just a reminder. The last time we were in this scenario, I saw the best out of both players when it mattered most, and I fully expect that to continue here. I agree with you 100%. Tired or not, adrenaline is pumping for both players. Oh, Spellman. Only two just gives it right to Leonard right away. Big turn opportunity right here for Leonard Gates. Gets the point lead. Big dart. Does close the 20. Door's still a little bit open. Spellman can trip the 18 twice and crash that 19. Great first start from Spellman. 
you go. I have to stay there. Stand. Yep. Seven follows from Winter Gates, and at this point, Spellman needs seven pluses. Anything less than that will be uh, punished by Leonard. And it will be less than that right here. Man, an unfortunate. It's going to be really hard for him to come back from two rounds of uh, two marks. Especially and now. That Boom was a that dynamite was, from Gator. Let's say he deserves that one. That was a chess move. Point up the 19s. Get me another house. Force Alex to stay in the 18s. He already struggled the previous round. He's going to have to show me what he can do. You knew he was going to match the 9 with the 9. Never a doubt. 7.0 playing 5.2, but Gates in control against the throw. And if he wins this leg, it's over. And, uh... Well, this would be for four in a row if Spellman hits this nine. He's not going to do so. Leonard Gates finding the perfect time to attack with a 7.40 MPR. And now sevens aren't even good enough for Spellman. They have not taken down the nine. Here comes another one. Gates can taste it. Another nine from Leonard Gates. Three in a row. He hasn't missed a dart in nine darts. Soldier to be the three-peat champion of the Booyah Cup. Needs double bowl. And there it is. Leonard Gates is your champion of 7.43 in... He defeats Alex Spellman. What a comeback for Leonard Gates. Three-time champion, Leonard Soldier Gates. What can this man not do? So far, he just continues to consistently this impress. That, this is the thing that's crazy. We, Those two competed in front of you for 30 legs. Yep. Soldier and those 30 legs... He actually won nine, um, 15 of them, and Spellman won the 13. 13. Yep. Uh, and Spellman won 17. 17. Or um, the other way around. 6, 11. Spellman won 15. Oh, Soldier the, won. it flipped on the other side. Yeah. Gotcha. It's just incredible. Well, we're going to do an interview with our champion, the three-time champion, Mr. Leonard Gates. Uh so don't go anywhere. We'll be back with that right after this. All righty. Well, we were gonna we were gonna try to run out there and get an interview with Leonard, but uh, the blind draw with the fifteen hundred added is running well pretty far behind now because of the wait to uh, make this happen. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we'll pull Leonard at another time. Uh, 
We'll try to try to make it tomorrow with Lisa Yee as well, um, and then we'll make that interview happen. We'll put it into production as well as put it out there for you all to enjoy on our Facebook and YouTube alone. So we do apologize for that one. Jeremy said, hey, do you guys mind doing this tomorrow? We don't mind that because – I, I understand they need to push this blind draw a little bit as it's now 11.40 p.m., so uh, it's going to be tough for them to catch up, but they're going to do it no matter what. So we'll be right back uh, tomorrow, folks, with uh, more action. 10 a.m. is when uh, – yeah, let me double check. 10 a.m. is doubles cricket. 3 p.m. is mixed doubles. So look out for the stream. Probably we'll let the first round get underway. 10.30 is when we'll probably start the stream tomorrow uh, morning. So we do appreciate you folks joining us. Like like I said, I do apologize once again that uh, we couldn't get Leonard for an interview or Lisa um, right at the bat, but they're just trying to push those matches, get them, get them, get them to where they need to be. We'll uh, get those out for you, like I said, and uh, try to do it tomorrow, get them out for you to all, all to enjoy. Thanks for watching, folks. What a killer job from Sean and, and Ryan to uh, today. Uh, I don't think a lot of people understand we're not the PDC where we get a, a match or two and then we get the evening off. We have to do uh, match after match after match. So it can be a little bit tiring. can be a little bit uh, uh, repetitive at times, I guess I could say. Um, but at the same time, they, they, they absolutely killed it. So spot on job for Sean and Ryan. Give them a shout out in the chat if you can. We definitely would appreciate that. Uh, I got the easy job with the camera angles and stuff, as I like to call it. They don't think so, but uh, I do. So appreciate you folks joining us. We'll see you tomorrow for some more action from the Dark Horse Classic and Booyah Cup here in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. Thanks for joining us.